Okay. Good morning, everybody. Let me just get myself checked in here. I wasn't sure what time today was starting and uh, went for a little run. Didn't really get to finish, but here we are. Still got the caffeine surging through me. Let me get set up here so I can see the chat. Good morning, rise and shine. Uh, for people that don't know about the story, there's a playlist in the description, and there's also a recap video link that I posted. I reposted it last night. So um, recommend the recap video if you're unfamiliar with the story. It's about 17 minutes. It's short and to the point, and... Uh, there's two really good videos on there that I recommend, which is the the deep dive of Mar not Maricela, um, Nina Morano, which is going to be the next person that's has a trial, and then there's a deep dive for somewhat of a deep dive for Charles, where Nina and Lisa were trying to get custody of Charles's child, and Charles's baby mother was not happy about that, and I saw court documentation because um let me see if i can show a preview i was trying to catch my breath ricky he's here i think today's gonna be his last day he's here he's chilling right next to me on the floor um here let me pull this up Beltran. Hey, what's up with Tick and Mel? Holy crap, that was loud. Whoa! Oh, that blew my ears up. What the heck? What the? Welcome to the channel. That's so loud. Thank you for stopping by. And last night we spoke about Charles Beltran and Lisa and Maris. As far as I'm aware, she was able to practice in New York and Florida and to be reputable attorney to be a reputable attorney and recommends that applicant be granted permission to participate in the instant proceeding before the court. The movement will be associated with applicant in the proceeding non-custodial parent of the instant case Esquire and moves this agency to grant non-resident attorney Nina admission to the state bar of texas pro hack vice to represent charles anthony beltran in this case and would respectfully show the agency as what's up, everybody rizza mandy me you katrina what's up everybody early Luffy, kitty rizza Mur uh, murky piglet gaza gaza Reverend a, what's up what's up everybody good morning Ka, gina kendra ronnie tiffany natalie Luffy. as follows Movent is practicing attorney admitted to the bar of this practice in Texas and to represent Charles. And you're going to see some more documents where they start to go for full custody. And yes, Nina did work at Montgomery, not only because of her Facebook, but I spoke to several people about that whole situation. There's so much information about this that I have a drift. I, I knew Montgomery and Lisa, that was a thing. And to me, that's just something that kind of sticks out it's interesting I guess to, to me for for them it was like it was nothing it seems like and so it says here uh christmas visitation with charles beltran our offices represent mr charles beltran in the above matter this letter is sent to notify you that mr beltran will be exercising his visitation rights under the existing custody order for the up so nina and lisa working their magic to get custody they're trying to work their way on getting custody of Charles's kid, but I'm not, I don't know how aware Charles was of this and the mother of the child did not like this at all. I don't know what they have, what plans they have for that baby. This is the child support that here. Okay. These are the child support documents. So Charles was behind on child support. And so you can kind of understand, uh, Attorney General of Texas, Child Support Division, 
This was uh, the report, financial report as of, as of 11 4 2020. Charles Beltran here at the top. And the this is the balance right here. And the amount due, and it just keeps adding up. And the amount applied is where you have to pay attention to see where payments are made. And so this starts from September 2019, October, and then into 2020. So we're just going to keep scrolling down. Uh, this is page five. So we just, yeah, page five. And so here's what we need to focus on. All of a so sudden. Up until October 1st, $14,000 was owed. And then I'm not sure what the $300 transaction is. 1022. But 1026. Seven thousand dollars in increments of a thousand dollars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this was Nina and Lisa. I don't know which one of them paying off his child support because they wanted to like try to get custody. You know, I was told that somebody thought that maybe they were going to run off with this child the moment they got to see the child. They were going to disappear because remember these ladies disappeared to Cambodia, right? Um, the other thing too these women could not have kids, right? Like Lisa's older and maybe Nina possibly, but, um, and you know, they're like a, some type of lesbian or throuple couple. So maybe they wanted his kid. Now sandwich in the chat said the baby would have been a sacrifice. There's a whole e essence and conversation with this whole story about Santeria. I even know that when, Nina went to sell the house in Pennsylvania, PA, that she was staying at. The person, the real, the realtor that went to go to that place, I have the picture somewhere. I have to find it. She found Santa, Santa Muerte stuff in that house. One in a bedroom, which you could actually see in the realtor website. And then I also heard that she had like a whole shrine in her closet. Nina did. So let me get some water right back. Santa Muerte. I see Santeria and Santa Muerte as the same thing, even though it's two different things. I think I saw Mod. Hey, Mod. Good morning. There's also a, a friend of Charles Beltran that uh, he called into one of my live shows, but he's also spoken to me personally, and he told me that uh, he believes they practice Santa Muerte, and like they made him eat something one night, and he got really sick, and I don't know. Doesn't Lisa's attorney look like Nina? Yeah, actually a little bit. Yeah, it's true. Oh, and by the way, um, I saw one of Bill's sons commenting on my last live stream. Bill is Nina's ex-husband that died in a car crash. His name is Joe. Um, and the other thing, too, I thought was kind of interesting. Let's see if I can find it. Some of, some of the comments that I saw on yesterday's live stream on the Fox website. Um... After hearing the opening statement, I was not expecting this type of behavior from Raul. I couldn't imagine a friend, quote unquote, traveling miles to visit me, staying at my place, being the last to see them alive, find out she's killed while visiting me, and then testifying so nonchalantly while simultaneously not remembering anything of importance. That's bizarre. 
He can't even remember the airline he picked her up from. None of this makes sense, to be honest. There's a huge gap between Maricela leaving Raul's place when he was so drunk to her sitting outside and meeting Charles to ending up in Charles' bed. Like, I can't imagine a young girl alone voluntarily leaving with a stranger and they can't use the fact that she was drinking because she clearly was still coherent to get in, enough coherent to get into an Uber. <clears throat> There's quite a bit of interesting comments left. Good morning, Herb Bear. What's up? What's up? Kimmy, Lotus. Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The heart attack behind the wheel. I feel like they kind of wanted Bill out of the way. Just opinion. You know, I'm not saying I don't know they did anything, but, you know, they launched their own little law firm thing. Um, Let's see. Another comment. Oh, my God. The witness role is so arrogant, disrespectful, ignorant, and rude. The judge should demand him to answer the questions. He was spending, he was, he has pending cases that are set for trial. I really hope that he has to serve them in real prison. He thinks he's so tough and smart, but he's going to learn a few lessons. Somebody else commented on that. He was unbelievable. Unbelievable. This guy was extremely lucky that the defense lawyer and the judge almost seemed uh, intimidated by him. If I were on the jury, I'd find his performance on the witness stand very shady and bizarre. Multiple people just saying like, Raul was weird. <laughs> Joe! My Joe's real. Oh, Lana. Okay, I don't know why I thought, I thought you were uh, like my brother's. Yeah, I know your brother. So the, in the chat right now, Joe P. Okay, that's Lena. I've had quite a bit of conversation with Lena. Really nice, great person. That's Bill's daughter. She's in the chat. And um, the brother is the one that when I did the deep dive on Nina towards the end, gave some information and sent that picture of Nina naked <laughs> and that he had some type of relation with her. And he's very, yeah, the guy was very upset, angry. I spoke to him, I think a couple months ago or something. I don't know. He was really upset. I don't even remember about what, but he was very angry. Hope he finds peace. Mel, who, who is the witness that you're looking forward to seeing? Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Charles if he takes the stand. He's supposed. It sounds like he is going to take the stand because that's what they said in the opening statements. I'm looking forward to seeing my two friends that I know take the stand. Uh, I'm looking forward to... I wonder if Nina will take the stand. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not even sure if she can or not because I heard they're allegedly married. So I don't know if she can take the stand or not. Um, I, it would be amazing to see Lisa take the stand, but I don't think that's going to happen. Santa, I have to replace him. I took him off the ladder. I actually need to turn on the lights, the Christmas tree. Uh, I'm going to have to take him back. Uh, Drift, I haven't heard of that shooty. Well, I, I saw I was scrolling Twitter and I saw something, but I, I didn't click it. Yeah, I think Charles is going to testify. Uh, Grumpy, I was wondering about that too. Is Kyle going to testify? That's uh, Lisa's son. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about the trial to, like, I don't know, finally see some justice. I didn't think we were going to be able to see this trial. They told, I was told that they weren't going to stream it. Um, it's unfortunate that, I guess, people, a lot of people don't know about the story. And it's not really, I don't know, a lot of people are not really interested in the story, unfortunately. And it's a crazy, wild story. And all three people are relevant to the story and important. Ricky is here. Yeah, he's walking around. He turned on the Christmas lights.
<laughs> yeah, Nicole says it's crazy to me that it's not talked about more. In this case, yeah, it's really, really crazy. Like loopholes, they they really could make like a show or or a lifetime thing out of it. You know, and I said yesterday that some company had reached out to me a couple of years, like two years ago, to get in contact with the family, and I contacted somebody that knows the family, and the family wasn't interested. They just like they want justice right now, like it's too soon for them, like there hasn't even been a trial, so they turned it down. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. People aren't really interested in the story. Let me check on Facebook if there's anybody there. I had a feeling they might start close to eleven. Facebook. I had a feeling they might start close to oh. Facebook. What's up, Monica, Tara, Glenda? Good morning. Good morning. Rise and shine. DM on Discord yesterday. Oh, okay, I gotta get back to some people too. Actually, a few things. My deep dives, it's on uh, the playlist. So if you go to the description of this video, you can find I have a recap video and then under that there's a link for a playlist. Also, if you go to the front page of my YouTube whenever you want to check it out. Um, if you go to my front page. I did. If you scroll down, when you go to Ick and Mel and you click on my name. You scroll down past the past streams and the videos. There's an area that timeline and deep dives. You can check these out right here. And then I have a playlist for the trials, trial days. And um, the timeline is important if you haven't watched that yet. Uh, what is this? Incredible. I mean, I, I mean, I've seen pictures. It's not like just thin air, but also the person that I spoke today, which is also very credible people know who and how and where we got to and where we came to today. And of course, Maricela is just this innocent person that happened to clash with his people. Yeah, I, I get that this question a lot too. People that are just coming on to the story and don't, they're trying to understand, right? You know, we got. Lisa, who is a paralegal. We got Nina, who's an attorney, which they met each other first. And then we got Charles that met Lisa in Texas. And he met Lisa because Lisa's son worked at this bar. And Charles worked at that bar. And then he met that Lisa's son, Kyle, worked at the bar. And Charles worked there, too. And that's how he met Lisa. Charles started hooking up with Lisa. Lisa's a sugar mama, you know. Um, 
but whatever. And then so people are like, well, how does Maricela come into play? Like, how did this happen? Like, why she evolved? Maricela lived in Seattle. And she just took a trip to visit her friend, Raul, really close friends. He admitted yesterday they had sexual relations, but they weren't like really dating. He, she just went there for a trip to have fun. She had nothing to do with these people. Raul got sick that night, threw up on himself. Marcella takes him back, and he, he admitted he was upset that she was like leaving him or taking him back. And then she goes out on her own, and she goes to one of the bars and meets Charles. Charles takes Marcella back to his house, which is really Lisa's house because she's the sugar mama paying for everything. And Nina was visiting from PA, so she was there. All three people that were there. And so while he was sleeping in bed with Maricela, I'm assuming they hooked up, he claims at one point he woke up and Lisa had a knife to Maricela's neck. So, you know, I, I could only imagine jealousy of some sort. I don't know. I don't know. Or did it have to do with Santa Muerte, some type of sacrifice? And if you see here, his phone has a Santa Muerte thing. There's, there's multiple Santa Muerte references. They were into Santa Muerte. Because of meeting uh, Charles. So, now, she, so she, she's just somebody that got caught up in these people's freaking mess. You know, just by chance. It's one of those crazy things in life. Just these people have messed up crazy lives, whatever, jacked up. And she just happened to meet this guy and get pulled into this, this, this situation. There's the Marisol Botello timeline, everything you need to know. If you just go to YouTube and you type in uh, Marisol Botello, Ikid Mel, or Ikid Mel Marisol Botello, you're going to see the list that pops up. I also have a playlist. But check this out here. The, this took a lot of time and talking with very credible people and a lot of... So this is one of the stories I recommend on the deep dive. Marisol Botello, the Bill story, Nina Morano. This is one of the things that were mentioned in the cease and desist that they sent me, but I really think it was Nina and Lisa that sent me the cease and desist reiterating into a video um 30 minute long video of interesting too with charles beltran and court document speaking to the person that i spoke to for two hours i learned a lot i learned lisa's past the past marriages why those things were there at the time it took place how she came to know nina how they met like confirmation i've also also, more confirmation with the Santa Muerte and witchcraft stuff. I've heard this from other several. Let's see if I can find a picture of that. Two very, I would say, very credible sources. I mean, I, I mean, I've seen pictures. It's not like just thin air. But also the person that I spoke today, which is also very credible, checked, confirmed, like a thousand percent confirmed. Um. I don't want to get into everything now because I, I need to go over the details. Just saying, please look forward to that. Um, and the relationship between Nina and Lisa was a little different than what I somewhat thought. I mean, from what I hear, allegedly opinion, Lisa was subservient to Nina. That's what I hear. But anyway, there's a lot of important details. I mean, like I'll, I'll even mention this real quick i mean there's there's somebody that you're going to see take the stand i don't know at what point her name is jennifer jennifer is a really close friend was a really close friend of lisa and jennifer has a lot of information about lisa it's going to be that's another witness that i look forward to um she has the whole information about how lisa and nina came to be and Actually, let me see if I can find the information here. What had happened was, let me see here. So Lisa's from Kentucky and she came to Florida. She had issues with the father of the kids, of her kids. Wanted to start new, came to Daytona Beach, was looking for friendship. There's a guy named Tamir. I don't know if he's going to testify or not. Tamir is from Egypt and Tamir was working in Daytona. He had an accident, fell on the roof, had to get a lawyer in Daytona Beach and walked into a law firm. That law firm was where Lisa worked. 
Lisa was a paralegal. They met every week. They became friends. Tamir was here on a student visa and he was working. He was scared on losing out on the student visa because of the accident. Lisa offered a solution. Hey, this, this is, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to say too much to put people in any kind of situation, but you know, it was kind of alluded to that, hey, we can have this mutual thing. Maybe we can get married. You can get citizenship, blah, blah, blah. Um, so they married and lived together. It was mutually beneficial. He was helping to pay the bills. He was getting citizenship. Lisa has always been jealous, extremely jealous. Okay, is what I'm, I was told. And Tamir's Muslim. Lisa adapted to the culture, so she would wear headscarves and abaya. I don't know what the hell that is. Listening to the Quran. It was preferred she didn't do that because it needed to be done for the right reasons. Lisa would tell everyone that's her husband. The marriage was an open marriage. Tamir graduated from Emory Middle. Lisa was putting out resumes for Tamir out of state. In 2001, got a job in uh, Daytona Beach, or no, Dayton, Ohio. Tamir moved to Ohio. Lisa moved to Ohio. The three kids moved to Ohio as well. Tamir was still in a relationship with somebody else. Third person in relationship goes to Ohio. Now, that third person, I believe, is Jennifer, the person that's going to take the stand. <clears throat> So the next day, she spends the night, I think the third person, Jen, the next morning, the person meets and talks to Lisa. They have a talk in the kitchen. Lisa says her and Tamir are just friends and welcomes a third person. After a week, Lisa asks the person to live with them all. Lisa is subservient. Uh, third person fully moves in, lived there two years. Lisa was a paralegal. Lisa got this third person a job. At the law firm. Wait, is is the third person? I'm not sure if the third person is Jen or it's Nina. I think it's Jen. Um, nothing was sexual between the three of them, but Lisa mentioned having a three way several times. So this whole three way throuple thing is not an, anything new. Things that are really strange in the house. The witchcraft is a thousand percent accurate. She practiced witchcraft all her life. Lisa's taken hair from Tamir and her own hair to perform a binding ritual buried hair in the backyard her hair his hair she's overly possessive she wanted the third wheel gone after a while i guess and she threatened to call uh I'll leave that out uh, lisa didn't want to live in ohio anymore she went to Orlando, florida that's how she got the job at bogan muns and muns lisa calls tamir and says she has a job for tamir the third person can't come, though. Tamir and the third person move back to Orlando, Florida. Tamir gets a job there. He moves in with Lisa. The third person moves and lives elsewhere with a roommate. Tamir and the third person were still in a relationship. Tamir and the third person get married in a mosque. So Lisa and Tamir are legally married. And Tamir is also married via the mosque to a third person. The one of the stories that I was told, too, I, I'm, I, I didn't take notes on this. I can vaguely remember. I thought that somebody walked in on somebody and was giving oral. And that's how they found out about this whole thing with Lisa and Tamir. It was really a mess. I'm going to have to find out. Oh, Luffy says, Abaya is the covering over the entire body. Okay, I like hijab, but for the entire body, head to toe. Okay, thank you. We'll see what today brings. Yesterday, I have to say, for a first day of a trial, was a really good, interesting day. Fully packed. They didn't waste a whole bunch of time. It was very like back to back witnesses, even on witnesses that typically take a long time sometimes, like the police or like the medical doctors, examiners, the autopsy. 
those were all relatively quick and didn't really drag. So that's good in that sense for viewing purposes. They're moving really quickly. We also got to see some video and pictures. You know, there's many times we don't get to see video or pictures, you know, so. Copulation. Yeah. <laughs> They muted it, by the way, so if you're wondering. It, it shouldn't be allowed, XL Socks. I mean, she wasn't really Muslim. She was trying to appease Tamir. And he was in a bad situation where he kind of needed help, you know. So, I don't know. I guess they just did what they did. I don't think he really liked her. It was supposed to just be a situation, financial situ situation. Yesterday was really good. Yesterday, the mother testified. Um, Maricela's really close friend that was there the night that she went missing, the last person to see her a lot, well, besides Charles, um, he testified, which was a really, I almost thought it was like a hostile witness. It was a weird <laughs> testimony. Uh, Maricela's aunt, you had the cop, you had two doctors, and we saw a video. We even saw the skull and where the body was found, or I guess the skeletal remains were found. Oh, yeah, that's true. The, the co-worker to the ex-friend was a good witness. There should be a witness testifying to a hairstylist that Lisa went to um, not too long after, I believe, uh, Maricela was murdered. That's a that's gonna be somebody that's used to see Lisa all the time. That should be interesting. Yo, thank you guys for joining this morning. I appreciate it. If you could hit the like button too, help me out in the algorithm. We've been suppressed the high hell, or I don't know what's going on. Tattoo Bird, thank you for the membership. Leah, Jen, Doodlebug, Mermaid, Cindy, XL Socks. Thank you guys. Cindy says thanks for all you do, genuine through and through. Uh, this is Lisa, by the way, right here. Good Grew her hair out. On the phone a lot this morning trying to get this whole AC thing straight down. It's a lot cooler in the courtroom. They had that huge AC unit that you saw. Of course, that doesn't work uh, because we can't have that door open because probation's right across the hall and they're seeing people all day, all day. Um, so uh, that's their smallest unit. Um, for other reasons, the AC is down, which I will do. So what we're going to do is bring that thing back in the courtroom during lunch and have it run on during lunch. And hopefully that will cool off the courtroom a lot. And then um, take a longer break in the afternoon if it gets really hot. Now, Friday is supposed to be 80 degrees in Dallas, so it's going to be really hot in the courtroom. So I suggest layers uh, and... Uh, I'm coming, my allergies are killing me. I'm coming down with a cold, so I'm all sorts of frustrated. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Ms. Pittman, please call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. The state calls Kathleen at De Leon. <clears throat> Kathleen De Leon. All right, Ms. De Leon, if you could please walk up to the witness stand and raise your right hand. Ma'am, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, I you do. may be seated. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, can you state your name and uh, spell your name for the court report, please? Uh, my name is Kathy DeLeon, um, K A T H Y D E capital L E O N. And uh, Ms. Daly Young, uh, can you just tell the jury a little bit uh, about what you do for a living, uh, and, you know, a little bit about yourself? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm a hairdresser. I told you. Uh, I've been doing hair you. for probably over 35 years. Um, color specialist. Um, I actually do people from all walks of life. Uh, I have no witness I've list. I've done attorneys. I've done doctors, dentists. Um, anywhere from A to Z. You know, I may have a, 
a preacher's wife in my chair, and then I may turn around and have a stripper in my chair. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, the facets that I go through in my business is, um, you know, it's it's quite amazing. So. Uh, you said you've been doing this for about 30 years? Yes, ma'am. Is it fair to say that uh, when you have a, a client uh, that you have seen over the course of, you know, several years, that that, that client generally becomes pretty comfortable talking to you? Absolutely. Okay. And, and you know, I would, I would hate for my hairdresser to ever be called uh, to talk about me or <laughs> anything else like that. You kind of get all the secrets and all the things. I do. Okay. Uh, people are very... Uh, kind of interesting. They're they're very open when they uh, come to see you. It's kind of like we're their psychiatrist, you know. Um, they really lean on us for a lot. You know, they do tell us a lot of things that um, that they may not even tell their family. So, um, you know, most of the things that that my clients tell me, um, I do. You know, kind of take it. Um, you know, it's a very personal thing to me. I mean, I'm very close to my clients. Um, I've been doing a lot of clients for as long as I've been doing hair. So, you know, I do have clients who are like family to me. Um, I don't really take my stories home. You know, I mean, I'm sure it get very boring to my husband to hear, <laughs> you know, um, like all the different stories that, that, uh, that a client may tell me. Now, one of those clients that you saw through years was uh, Miss Lisa Dykes. Is that is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall when you started um, seeing Miss Dykes? Um, early 2016. And she was referred to you by another client. Is that correct? Yes, uh, she was referred to me by uh, a longtime client of mine um, who worked in the same building she did. I believe they worked on the same floor. And um, they became, I, I guess they were acquaintances. They'd see each other like, uh, you know, like on the floor and say hi and whatnot. And uh, uh, Lisa inquired to her, she said, you know, she said, your, your hair always looks amazing. Who do you go to? Um, so um, she gave her my information. She says, well, you know, she may be far for you to go. And so she asked where I worked. And uh, she was like, oh my gosh, she, you know, I live right by there. If you can give me her number, I'd love to get in contact with her. So, okay. and you started seeing her. You said in 2016. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Um, and this morning, you provided me with a couple of uh, just printouts of schedules because you all had kind of a, a scheduling system on the computer. Is that right? Yes. Um, here are my approach to witness. You did. Ms. Daly, I'm just going to hand you what's been marked States Exhibits 81 and 82. Yeah, what she has to say, I think, is pretty important from what I remember. Does this look like, a fair, look like a fair and accurate representation of those uh, two printouts that you sent me this morning? It yes. is. Your Honor, uh, state moves to offer 81 and 82 for all purposes. If you could tender two votes and count. Thank you. I think Lisa went in shortly after the murders, I believe. And um, from what I heard, none of this is even public. This is the first time this is coming out, but I was talking to people behind the scenes back then. I heard Lisa, I think she had herself fully covered. She normally never dressed like that, like fully, fully covered, like long sleeves. Your Honor, um, long I'm going to eject first on relevance, and then second, I'm ejecting, um, you can't tell on here who the client is. I, I don't see who the client is. I see a list of dates, but I don't see the client. Your objection is relevant? Mm -hmm. Sustained at this time as to relevance, if you could lay it right here. She has one of yes, your exhibits, I believe. Yes, uh, that's a copy. I'm sorry, sir. Are those her copies? No, no, she's got her copies. Okay. These are. Uh, and Miss Daly, on um, the Miss Dyke's name is not on here, but um, are you aware? You pulled this um, from your computer. Yes. Yeah, so the way um, we had the computer set up at work, um, it would go through like. 
we would punch in our client's name and then it'd go to a second page and it would have like a list of uh, like all the services that we would do to that particular client and that's what you see there. And one of the purposes of this, this is going to kind of help you refresh your recollection of the various conversations you've had with the Ms. Dykes over the years. Yes. Your Honor, I would uh, offer states 81 and 82 again. For all purposes, same objection your own problems. If she can, if she needs it to refresh her memory, then at that at that time the document can be presented to her. But until we see that there's uh, some faulty memory going on, then I don't necessarily need to have it. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you have to wait for someone to ask you a question. Thank you. Uh, Judge, we can just offer it for record purposes at this time. All right. Is there any objection to it being offered for record purposes? Or no, Your Honor. All right. States exhibits 81 and 82 are admitted for record purposes only at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. And Ms. DeLeon, you just mentioned that you probably don't need it. Um, if for any reason you needed to refresh your recollection, just let me know and I can uh, present that to you, okay? Yes, ma'am. Um, so we talked about you met in 2006, she was uh, referred to you by one of your clients and uh, when you first met her and, and did her hair the first time, um, was she pleased with her, her service? She was. Uh, in fact, she continued seeing you until uh, she moved from the Dallas area in, uh, I believe, October of 2020. Is that, is that correct? Yes. When do you recall was the last appointment that you had uh, where she actually came and saw you? Uh, October 10, 2020. 2022? Um, 2000, yes. Uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, did you say 2020 or uh, 2020 or 2022? I may have misheard you. Um, all I know, it was, the, it was right when this girl went missing was the last time that I saw her. Okay, so that was in, in 2020? Yes. Okay, sorry. Are you a little bit nervous? Just a little bit. Okay. Now, um, when you first saw Ms. Dykes as a client, um, how did she present herself? How was she dressed? Um, she was dressed very conservatively. Uh, she worked for an attorney in Dallas. Um, she had long hair. Um, at the time I started doing it, it was just like highlights in her hair. Um, very nice person. Uh, we got along really well. Um, and did you learn a little bit about her family makeup at that time? I did. Uh, she talked about her uh, her kids quite a bit. Uh, she had grown kids, um, a son. Uh, she had family that lived in Florida. Uh, she had her daughter, Chelsea, who uh, ended up also being a client of mine. I actually started doing Lisa first, and then uh, soon after, she would bring Chelsea with her, and I, then I started doing both of their hair. So they come in at the same time. And uh, you mentioned she had some family in Florida, and then she had Chelsea and her son here in Texas with her. Yes. Okay. And were you? Uh, did you learn that they lived in the Mesquite area? Um, I wasn't sure where Kyle lived, uh, but from what I understand, Chelsea lived with her. Okay. And you mentioned Kyle. Kyle's one of her sons. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, did she ever talk about her other son? Not often. Okay. Um, Kyle. Did you know whether or not her other son, Aaron, lived with her? Um, I know she She really didn't mention him as often as she, as she did Kyle. Okay. Um, and as far as Kyle's concerned, did you have any idea whether or not Kyle lived with her? Or... I did not. Okay, but Chelsea did live with her. She did, from what I understand. Okay. Did she ever talk about her brother, Jimmy? Um, if it's the brother that lived in Florida, mm -hmm. um, then she probably, like, maybe mentioned him in a conversation or two, but not very often. Not very often. Okay. Yeah. And uh, in the beginning, you said that she generally dressed uh, very conservatively. 
Um, yeah, when she'd come in to see me, it was usually on a Saturday. Um, so she always, uh, you know, dressed like casual, pretty much. Um, uh, did she have revealing clothes? Did it kind of, and you know, I hate to be like this, but almost age appropriate for her at that time? Um, or, or kind of just describe the type of conservative clothes that she wore. Well, she'd usually come like in jeans. Uh, she'd always wear, you know, like t-shirts when she'd come in. She kind of like concerty type t-shirts. So, um, yeah, you know, but I mean, most people dress like that on Saturday. So, um, it wasn't. Um, a, uh, I'm sorry. Um, you mentioned uh, her daughter Chelsea would come and and have her hair done as well. Yes, ma'am. And did they seem like they were very close? Um, they were. Chelsea was quiet. Uh, I would say introverted. Um, she she was a real sweet girl. Uh, didn't talk very much. I think the only time that I could really get her to engage was when she would talk about her dog. You know. Um, so, but other than that, she really was pretty quiet. I may approach the witness again you and uh, permission to continue, continue to approach throughout her testimony. Sure. Uh, Ms. DeLeon, I'm going to hand you what's been marked States Exhibit 83. Do you recognize that photo? That's Lisa and Chelsea. Okay. And is that a fair and accurate representation of them? Yes, ma'am. Our state offers States 83 for all purposes. No objection. All right, safe exhibit 83 is admitted for all purposes. Permission to publish your honor? You may. Uh, thank you guys. Wendy, thank you so much for the five memberships. And Natalie, thank you so much for the five memberships. Amazing. We got to do another members video and also make sure you check out the front page of my youtube page there's member there's a members area when you scroll down there's playlist also you can go watch the cease and desist early before i post it out well it takes a minute to warm up so if you can continue your questions yes sure thank you oh there we go um and just i mean this is just a picture of them um kind of around the time that you've been doing both of their hairs yes uh, was this, um, you learned at some point that Chelsea moved from Texas, is that correct? I did. Okay, is this closer to the time frame when she moved, or do you recall that? Um, well, I had already, uh, it, Thank you guys. probably because uh, Lisa's hair is really short there. Um, so. Okay. And um, well, let's kind of talk about that. Over the course, this started at your... Uh, client relationship with her started in 2016. Was there a time over the course of that relationship that she started talking about a man by the name of Charles Beltran? Yes. And do you recall about what year that was? Um, <clears throat> guessing maybe 2018-ish. 2018-ish? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just kind of a, a, a guess. Yes. Okay. Uh, did she tell you how uh, she and Charles met? Um, she came in one morning and basically said that she had met a guy named Chuck. Um, he, uh, the first couple of times that, that she talked about him, she kind of mentioned, kind of laughingly, like it was her boy toy. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And then after a couple of visits, she continued talking about him. And so I finally, I was like, hey, I was like, so what is the deal with this guy? Uh, tell me about him. I was like, you know, you don't, I mean, she's talked about other guys in the past, but, you know, just kind of like, I'm going out with this person or that person, but it was never like anything, you know, like, more than like a time or two that she talked about that person. Okay. But with Chuck, she uh, 
talked about him for you know several visits. So uh, so I finally asked her. I was like, "So tell me about this guy," and she was like, "Well, uh, he's a lot younger than I am. Um, he works with my son, um, and um, you know." And I was like, "Well, Lisa," I was like, "That doesn't seem." you know, like, kind of like what you're used to dating, you know, a much younger guy, um, someone who, not, not, not to say that, you know, someone who works at a bar is like less than anyone else, but, you know, uh, I just kind of expected her to date someone more on her, I guess, like level, I guess. Okay, so more like her. Yes. Uh, a professional. Yes. Um, maybe maybe more in her age range. Right. Um, and the description of, of Chuck was that he was a, a much younger man, and she had met him through her son where he worked uh, at this bar. Is that correct? About right. Okay. And she talked about him frequently. Is that correct? She did. Uh, it seems like, like she really liked him. Yes. Okay. Did it seem like she was pretty infatuated with him? Yes. And you kind of mentioned that, you know, you kind of thought that to be odd. Um, yes. I mean, when she met Chuck, she she kind of started changing. Uh, she came in one day and, you know, of course, she had like, like longer blonde hair. I always did highlights in her hair. And she comes in one day and she's like, hey, I'm ready to do something completely different. And I was like, okay, well, you know, to most people, to most hairdressers, doing something different is like we're going to put some love lights in their hair, you know. Uh, but she wanted me to completely shave the sides of her head and mm. do like a pompadour. So if if y'all don't know what a pompadour is, um, it's basically shaved all around the sides. You have the top that's that's longer, you know, quite a bit longer. And you can either pull it all back, you can like wear it to the side, which it kind of looks like the picture that you just saw. She had it kind of just down and it was just to the side. But uh, when she was at work, she always just kind of like wore it like up, you know, to where it just looked like different than that. Uh, there are other pictures of her where she has it more like in a pompadour. But I, I asked her, I was like, how are you going to get away with that at work? I mean, you know, that seems a little inappropriate uh, to do that. And she was like, oh, it's okay, you know, uh, it'll be fine. So I thought that that was like really interesting that she would go from like wearing this beautiful long blonde hair to, you know, to almost having no hair at all. Um, Did she also have it... Uh colored in a, a different way? Yes. Uh, so when I ended up doing the pompadour on her, uh, she ended up going complete platinum uh, at that time. So, uh, and then occasionally she would, you know, like get a wild hair, <laughs> no pun intended, but uh, she would like want me to do like maybe a little streak of like a, a light pink or like a, a baby blue, but never anything like just outrageously crazy you know um, and when you um, this all kind of aligned when she started hanging out and talking about Chuck is that correct yes during that time period did you know that Chelsea still lived with her yes okay and um, also her son Aaron is that correct uh, I don't. I'm not sure about Aaron. Okay, but she, she, she never really. She really didn't talk about him too often. Okay, you definitely knew that Chelsea was. I did. Now, did she start dressing differently? She did. How did she um, dress? So when she uh, when she ended up with Chuck, um, she started getting a lot of tattoos. Um, you know, and she. When she'd come in, she would start one sleeve, and then, you know, I'd see her like, you know, like several visits later, and she'd started another sleeve, and I would always ask her, why are you doing this? How are you going to get away with this at work? I mean, you've got a conservative job. Um, 
you know, and, and she was just like, oh, well, you know, I could just wear long sleeves, you know. But she did start dressing, uh, like she, she loved showing her tattoos off. So she would always come in like with like, uh, I guess like thinner t-shirty material uh, type shirts. Uh, they were always short sleeve because she loved showing her tattoos off. So even if it was like really cold outside, she'd wear a jacket in, but then she'd always take her jacket off. She loved her tattoos. And, you know, I mean, I'm not into tattoos, but, you know, teach his own. Uh, I know one one day she came in and, um, and she kind of grabbed me by the arm. She's like, hey, come to the bathroom with me. I want to show you something. And I was like... Okay, so she kind of lifts up the back of her shirt, and she's got a tattoo, you know, and I was like, oh my God, Lisa, what are you doing? Ooh. I mean, where, I think where it's something with it. On the back. Is it something with it? Okay, was it large? Uh, from what I recall. Okay. So we're not talking about just a little, you know, no. tattoo. We're talking about full sleeves. Yes. Um, large tattoos on her back, and this just... From your time and and being her yes. hairdresser, so yes, and out. then and then she so also uh, just make sure that you, we don't talk over each other. Oh, I'm sorry, that's okay. Uh, she just has to take everything down. She can't take it at the same time. Uh, but completely out of the out of what you expected based on your experience with her. Yes, um, she also uh, come to think about it, um, came in one day and she had these little gold. They're like little dots, like across the top of her, but they were like on her teeth. And I was like, what is that? Mm. And she was like, you know, she just kind of laughed. She goes, well, don't you like it? And I was like, well, no, not really. <laughs> you know, uh, but, you know, I mean, I, I just thought that it was all very odd that she, you know, and I, and I guess it was to impress him. I mean, he was a much younger guy. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, calling for speculation as, and um, asking the court to instruct the jury to disregard her last statement. Sustained. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are instructed to disregard the last answer by the witness and not consider it for any purpose whatsoever. Okay. And Ms. DeLeon, um, all of this started after she met Chuck. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now... Do you recall a time, um, kind of during this time period when she's changing her hair and she's changing, you know, kind of getting these tattoos, that she came in to an appointment with Chelsea? Yes, ma'am. And um, were the two of them both having their hair done? They were. And kind of tell me a little bit about, um, you know, that appointment that day. You know, you said that Chelsea was quiet. Uh, did she say much that day? Um, not really. I mean, I actually, this day, uh, I actually did Chelsea's hair first. I typically would always do Lisa's hair, uh, because it took a little bit longer for me to do her hair. Uh, but this particular day, I ended up doing Chelsea first, and, uh, the, the area that I worked in, it was like, my chair was here, my client sat here, my mirror was here, and then I had a dryer that was right behind me. Um, so it was like my clients had access, you know, because I, I did do like a lot of highlights. So uh, I had access to a dryer that sat right behind me. So um, I finished doing Chelsea's hair, uh, got her into the dryer, uh, started doing Lisa's hair. And, um, and, and let me just uh, stop you right there. So Chelsea is within earshot of this conversation. Yes. I mean, literally, she's like two steps back. Okay. And uh, what did Lisa say to you? So uh, as we started talking, um, she she kind of looks back at, at Chelsea. She goes, hey, Chelsea, she goes, do you want to tell Kat the news or do you want me to? And, you know, she just kind of looked at the drawer. She goes, well, I guess you can. And so um, Lisa... So what, is, what was the news? Uh, Lisa uh, proceeds to tell me that Chelsea's moving to Florida. And I was like... What? Um, so like, you, you and Chelsea are so close, and um, and I was like, why? And she says, well, she goes, 
I'm ready to live the life that I want, and I can't do it with her here. And she said that in front of Chelsea? Yes. And Chelsea heard her? She did. Okay. Um, did she tell you where um, where Chelsea was going to move? She was moving to Florida uh, where uh, Lisa's brother was. Hmm. I remember now you said that uh, she told Chelsea I'm or tell you that I'm ready to live the life that I want to live and I can't do it with her here. Um, did she say anything else? Um, yeah, she just went on to, to tell me that, you know, because I was like just so shocked about it. And uh, she went on to tell me, she said, well, you know, Chelsea worked at, I, I can't, I don't know if it's like Disney World, Disneyland, I don't, I don't know what it is, uh, in Florida. But she said she has friends there. She really doesn't have friends here. So to go back, you know, to be where her friends are, it would probably be better for her anyway. I just still thought that it was very strange because, uh, you know, she and Chelsea, always seemed to be like so close. I can't imagine that she would, you know, like literally like move her to, and, to start living this new life with this guy, Chuck. At that time, did she tell you, did you learn that Chuck was gonna move in with her? Yes, yeah, she did. She actually uh, told me, you know, several visits later that, that Chuck was gonna move in with her. And did you learn that she was, um, you know, buying Chuck things, uh, paying for um, Yeah, so um, she, after she moved him in, she came in one day and told me that she was buying him a lot of um, equipment uh, because he wanted to become a rapper. So, um, you know, so, and from what she told me, it was like high dollar equipment. Um, and I do recall seeing it there when I went to her house one day. It was like uh, like in her little sun room area. Okay. And when she initially talked about Chuck, um, did she talk at all about his rap career? Or was it later when you learned that she had bought him this equipment? That uh, I really didn't know until, until she told me about the equipment that, you know, he was going to become a rapper. Uh, so initially, it just seemed like this was a romantic situation for me. Yes. And, you know, what did you think about, uh, what did you think about this change in Lisa and this, this new young guy and, and buying the rap equipment? And what, what was going through your mind about that? I just thought it was so odd, um, you know, because, you know, I mean, we're talking, it was just like 2016. She was a completely different person. You know, she's just like morphing into to somebody that, you know, that I, it's, it's just, I don't know, it's just so bizarre. You know, the whole time though. Objection, Your Honor. Yes. Ma'am, you have to wait until you're asked a question. And, and sorry about the pause. Um, Matt, Ms. De Leon, I'm going to hand you a job. Mark States Exhibit 84. I'm going to read the member messages too when they have pause for a bit. Thank you guys for the memberships and the gift. Thank you for joining me this morning. You recognize everybody. all these uh, photographs? Yes. And uh, these are photographs you provided me? Yes, ma'am. Are uh, these fair and accurate representations of Ms. Dykes? Yes. Your Honor, move to, the state moves to admit states 84 for all purposes, tendering to defense counsel. No objection. All right, state's exhibit, excuse me, number 84 is admitted for all purposes. Permission to publish, Your Honor. Yeah. Ms. DeLeon, is this kind of the, um, I guess, transition that you were talking about or the big change in Ms. Dykes, uh, where this is more around 2016? Yes. And this is more around um, kind of the end time that you all uh, had this client relationship? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And obviously the, the makeup here is very muted, long hair, like you mentioned, conservative dress, and over the course of these several pictures, um, you see, you know, kind of bright makeup, um, more dramatic makeup, Jamie, thank you guys. tattoos, uh, 
different clothing styles. Yes, ma'am. Now, this particular picture here, do you recall when that was taken? Which one? Uh, this one right here, I'm sorry, with the cowboy hat. Hmm. Um, I don't quite recall, but that is uh, like during the time that she, that her hair was like obviously shaved. And this transition kind of started in 2016 and it continued throughout. Um, you mentioned that she had started talking about Chuck, buying him things. He had moved in after Chelsea left. Yes, ma'am. Brain monkey, thank you for the Was there a time that she started talking about uh, a woman by the name of Nina Morano? Mm. Yes. Okay, and who was, uh, who was Nina Morano to her? Um, she initially uh, had an appointment with me and asked if I could do her like a week earlier. She was going to be going out of town to visit an old friend of hers. Uh, Your Honor, I'm going to object non-responsive. Uh, counsel asked uh, what or who she was, and uh, Mrs. De Leon is going into a monologue. Sustain. Thank you. How did you learn about Nia Murata? Through um, Lisa just mentioning her. Okay. And um, you said you had an appointment with her. Um, and she changed that appointment. What was the reason she changed that appointment? She was going to go out of town to to see uh, Nina. And at that time, how did she, uh, I guess, categorize Nina? An old friend of hers. Do you recall about um, what time frame, maybe month and year, that she started mentioning Nina? Um, it was probably before October. Um, 2019 and I do recall that because I had uh, Lisa had asked me to do her makeup for a Halloween party okay. uh, that she was having at work okay let's talk a little bit about that um, did you usually do her makeup I never did her makeup and uh, you said in October 2019 she asked you to do a Halloween makeup for a party Is that she correct? did And did you do that in your, your regular studio, or did you go to her house at that time? Um, initially, when she called and asked me to do it, um, I told her then, I said, look, it's been a long time since I've done theatrical makeup. Um, and she says, look, I don't want anyone else touching me but you. She says, I trust you. Uh, and she, you know, was very adamant about me doing it. So I told her, I said, look, this is what we're going to do. Send me a picture of what you want. Um, you buy the makeup because I don't, you know, I don't have makeup <laughs> for stuff like that. And let's make an appointment. I'll do like a mock trial. And if you don't like it, then I'll help you find someone that will do it for you. So you went to her house to do this mock trial? No. Uh, initially, we did that at the salon. Okay. Um, and then I, when, when she saw <laughs> what the results were, she actually ended up loving it. And then uh, she wanted to make the appointment uh, for me to do the makeup the day of um, the party that her, I guess it was her uh, law firm that was hosting this party. And um, so she wanted to do it like around six o'clock and I told her, I was like, well, we close at five. She says, well, why don't you just come to my house? Okay. So we made arrangements to do that. And Ms. De Leon, I'm handing you uh, Ms. Mark State's Exhibit 85. Is that a picture of you um, applying her makeup? This was the, the mock trial that I did at work. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Mandy. Your Honor, State Opera State uh, State's 85 for all purposes, tendering to Defense Counsel. No objection. All right, so it's exhibit 85. Is it needed for all purposes? And you said this is the trial run. Um, <coughs> was this pretty much the same makeup that you did for her for the party? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
And uh, that appears to kind of be a, a skeleton face. Hmm. Is that correct? Um, when she initially showed me what she wanted me to do, um, I'm not really sure the name of it, it's, but it's like Day of the Day. Is it the Day of the Dead? Dead. But it's the woman who wears like the big roses. Uh, but I didn't know that it was going to be like, I thought it was going to be like a pretty day in the dead. I didn't think it was going to be like, you know, like a skeleton. But. Okay. So I do want to talk about uh, your visit to her house. Um, were you able to meet Mr. Beltran when you went to her house? That was the first time that I met Chuck. Uh, he was one that opened the door. And just based on physical appearances, uh, you know, kind of what did Chuck look like? Um, he was young. Um, he wore the gauges in his ears. Uh, he was tattooed up. Uh, nice guy, though. I mean, you know, when I when he answered or when he opened the door, uh, he introduced himself that he was Chuck, and um, I introduced myself. He says, "Oh, he says I know all about you." He said, "You're the end all be all with Lisa. There's no one better than you in her book." And so I was like, well, thanks. <laughs> Where's she at? <laughs> so <laughs> so that it was a brief uh, brief discussion or brief talk with Chuck. It was. He was nice, respectful. Yes. Uh, based on, I guess, his tattoos and everything, did you expect him to sound and talk differently? Um, kind of, but I mean, he, he was pleasant enough. Okay. Now... After doing um, the makeup for the party, you said this was a, a work party, is that correct? It was. And was this uh, going to take place at her son's bar? Or I believe so. Okay. Um, makeup turned out well. Was she happy with it? She was very happy with it. After that, um, you had another appointment with her, is that correct? Are you referring to the second time I went to her house? No, or? no, I'm talking about uh, when she started talking about Nina. Oh, yes. Okay. And so this appointment was October 2019, and then it was after that appointment that she started discussing Nina, is that correct? Yes. And the first time she discussed her, it was, uh, she's my friend and she was going to see her. Is that, yes. Is that fair? Um, in the coming appointments, did you uh, have discussions, more discussions with her about Nina? Um, yeah, it ended up being that uh, that after she mentioned Nina the first time, the next visits that I had with her, it, she only talked about Nina. Like I was going, she was going to fly here to see Nina, and Nina was coming in town. You know, it was just like everything was about Nina. So. Um, did you learn anything about Nina, um, you know, kind of her background, if she was married, what was going on with her through Lisa? Uh, yeah, she did tell me that Nina was married to uh, a man named Bill. Uh, Bill. She did tell me that he was much older than her. Uh, she told me that, that the religion that he was in was, like, Mormon. super strict. Um, she mentioned that that they always wore, like, like this long... I guess it's like a, a long, straight garment underneath their clothes. Um, so, and at some point during these discussions, did you just flat out ask her um, what was really going on there? I did. Um, after her not talking about Chuck, you know, uh, obviously it was all about her and Nina. So uh, one day she came in and she told me that Nina was coming in town, and um, and I was like, okay, so all you're talking about is Nina. Um, are y'all together? Mm. And she goes, well, yeah. And I was like, yeah, but girl, you're not into women. She goes, yeah, but Nina can give me everything that I've ever wanted. Oh, and. What does she mean by give me everything that I've ever won? How did you take that? Well, I knew that Nina was an attorney. Uh, from what I knew 
they had her and Bill had several homes, so I would kind of take it that that they were probably well to do. Did you know if Bill was still uh, alive at that time? I did. Okay. Did you ever learn of his passing? I did. When did you learn of his passing? In uh, December of uh, uh, 2000. Then are you still watching? So when she uh, first started talking about Nina, Bill was still alive. He was. And then you learned of his passing uh, a couple months after she first started talking about Nina. Yes. And give me just a minute, Ms. DeLeon. Thank you for your patience. Um, what did you learn about his passing? Um, so on her visit in December, um, she and I were having our regular conversations. Uh, and at this point, it was kind of, it, it was kind of like, her, Chuck, and Nina, you know, they kind of had this threesome kind of thing going on. And this is from Lisa. You're not just surmising this. No. It's Lisa telling you this. Yes. And how does she kind of describe it? <clears throat> describe? This relationship in, between the three of them. Um, well, you know, when, when we, uh, going back to what I just referred to, uh, the conversation that she and I had about um, uh, her and Nina being a couple. Um, and uh, so I asked her, when I asked her, I said, hey, I was like, well, so, but you're not into women. And, she, and when she replies, yeah, but she can give me everything I want. And I was like, well, so what about Chuck? I was like, you've not mentioned Chuck in quite some time. And she says, well, I tell Nina Chuck's not going anywhere. So I kind of took it that. <laughs> so you kind of took that as um, yeah, she still has a relationship with Chuck and she has a relationship with Nina and uh, it's that's, that's kind of the information you're getting. Yes. Now, you mentioned that Nina, this is from Lisa, you know, practiced this uh, fairly strict religion with her husband, Bill. Um, how did that change according to, and you talked about the dress, the long straight garments under her clothes and things like that. Um, I guess how, based on what Lisa told you, how did she kind of influence Nina? Um, so, objection, your honor, uh, relevance. What? Relevance. It's the same. Uh, Your Honor, may I respond to the relevance? You may. This, uh, we talked about an opening statement, and as did uh, defense, kind of opened the door to um, the nature of this relationship where uh, the state had described it as a uh, romantic between the three of them, and the defense had discussed that this was just Miss Dykes. Uh, investing in Chuck's rap career and to lay out um, the state's case of motive um, and particularly for Lisa, we need to lay out the uh, nature of the relationship between all the parties. I see the attorneys. Yes, Judge. Uh, it's pretty, I think it's pretty rele relevant. <clears throat> this lady has a lot to say. A lot to say, and I know she was afraid to even talk. A lot of these people out there in Texas are kind of, or some of the witnesses are afraid of Lisa, Nina, and what they could do to them. Even though they're locked up, they have connections, they have family. Some people are afraid of the Santa Muerte. I'm not afraid of it. I don't believe in it, but there's people that are afraid of it. <clears throat> you know, some people ask me to pray for them when they go to this trial. So I said a little prayer for them yesterday. Um, They all tie in together, the three of them. All three trials that they have, it's going to be involving all three of these people. This is Lisa's trial, but the other thing, too, I was talking to somebody right now in DMs. Let's see if I have a moment. Well, let, let me get, get these first, the, uh, the 
memberships and stuff. Um, Wendy and Natalie, thank you for gifting five memberships each. Appreciate that. XO Socks, thank you for the 20 months. Thank you for resubscribing. Appreciate that. I can't believe I've been a member this long. <laughs> My name doesn't even stay the same long enough to qualify. <laughs> Uh, Jenna Balby, thank you for the seven months. Says thank you for covering another trial. Here is full of secrets. Great witness. <laughs> Train Monkey, thank you for the ten. Says thanks, Mel. Appreciate the support. Um, Natalie with the uh, six month membership. Thank you for the six months. Says you're all welcome. Let's get Mel some more members. He deserves all the love and support for the endless hours he spends with us and videos. Thank you. And Maddie, thank you for the memberships. Appreciate that. And if you guys can hit the like button, I'd appreciate that. Helps out the algorithm. <clears throat> A little rough rough so help me out or share the video if you want tisha will the trials be back to back i don't know how close or far apart i think they're going to be close to each other because when they were supposed to previously have this with the previous judge they were set like back to back so i think i don't know give or take a couple of days or a week i think they're going to be pretty close like back to back um Santa Muerte, well, that's what uh, Lisa's been practicing for a long time. And I, I guess she got Nina into it and Charles into it. And they were practicing Santa Muerte. Um, I, somebody reached out to me, too, that I spoke to a couple of years ago about this whole case. And she told me that the co-worker that uh, testified, um, Lisa's co-worker, wasn't completely honest with her testimony. I worked with her at this law firm and another law firm. Her and Lisa were really close. She knew more than she said. And then she also commented, Ro, I feel he was upset and acting weird yesterday because the defense is trying to make Maricela out to be a junkie or something. I was pissed watching the defense trying to make that girl look bad. Also, so from the Montgomery, I think from the Montgomery law firm, some guy named Sadet, which I, th I thought he was like the top guy over there, and Jerome Collins are supposed to be testifying from that law firm. Also, supposedly... On the witness list, Kyle, Lisa's son, is supposed to be testifying. Uh, and uh, allegedly, Lisa asked Jerome to detail the car that had blood on it. Okay. Oh, Jerome Collins. Okay, okay. So, I don't know. There's quite a bit of people, witnesses coming. Miranda says, I've missed so much. Well, it's only day two. I don't know if you watched watch day one yesterday. I actually should go back and do some timestamps. I might try to do that if I can do it without audio. Um, I'll try to put some timestamps for yesterday. Yesterday was a really good day. A lot of important witnesses. And today so far has been pretty good. This is the first witness of today, the, the hairstylist. Did it launch? Okay. Lisa told you about and, and told you about taking Nina shopping. Yes. And did she tell you what they went shopping for? They would go to Victoria's Secret and buy things. Uh, things like lingerie. Yes. Sexy bras, underwear. Yes. And did Lisa tell you that Nina had never had those types of things? Uh, not while she was around Bill. <clears throat> oh, not around Bill. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Bill now, was upset. If you watch the Bill story, the he was upset. The beginning point, that's kind of when the pandemic hit, were you still able to uh, see Lisa as a client? Yes, ma'am. And were you still able to see her? How long was it before your actual salon was shut down? Um, so when COVID started, uh, I guess they started talking about it like late February. Um, and our industry was probably one of the last ones to, you know, to be shut down. Um, so I got a phone call from Lisa saying that she was really needed to get her hair done because she didn't know how long the pandemic was going to last and, you know, she didn't want 
messed up hair during that time. And were you so, able to get her in for that last that last appointment before you shut down? Yes, she came to the salon and I did her hair. And um, in that appointment, did she say much about what's going on with Chuck and Nina? Or was it discussion about other things? Um, no, I mean, at the time, uh, they, uh, can I back up to December? Uh, well, go ahead and finish answering okay. that question and we can back up. Okay. Um, she had told me that uh, that she and Nina were planning on getting married. Um, she didn't know if they were going to have it up in uh, the New York area where one of their homes were. Um, she said that if they had it up there, she was going to fly me up there to do her hair for the wedding. Um, but they weren't sure, you know, flights and whatnot, if that was going to happen. Uh, there was a chance that they were going to have the wedding at Lisa's house in Mesquite. And after that appointment, is that when kind of COVID shut your salon down? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you receive a call from uh, Lisa about doing her hair? I did. Um, she, she had called and uh, asked me if I would go to her home to, to do her hair because she and Nina were going to get married. Uh, the wedding was going to be at at her house in Mesquite, and uh, so I basically, you know, tried to follow protocol and asked her if uh, if she'd been only working from home, if she'd been going to the office. Uh, after she said she was solely working from home, um, I told her that I would go and do her hair. I mean, I actually had like other clients who. Uh, we're having wedding photos done during that time, and I obliged to, to do those people and those people only, so. And um, this appointment took place in her home, is that correct? It did. Uh, did you have the chance at that appointment to meet Mr. Beltran again? Yes, I did. And uh, tell me about uh, when you saw Mr. Beltran on that occasion. Um, so when I arrived to Lisa's house, she answered the door, and I literally could smell this amazing aroma coming, you know, from inside of her home and so she opens the door lets me in and uh, she's like hey she goes uh, come on to the kitchen um uh, i want to hurry up and get dinner finished for chuck you will be here in a little bit um she was like have you eaten and i was like well no not really i was like but give me whatever you're cooking it smells oh, amazing uh so she water. had uh, made a uh, fried catfish and I grabbed a plate, I sat down, was eating, she and I chatted, uh, and then the door opens and Chuck and another gentleman walk in. Uh, she proceeds to uh, hand them plates and you know, she's like getting their plates done. They sit down where I was and I immediately was like very uncomfortable. Okay, and um were you just uncomfortable because you didn't know them? What, why were you uncomfortable? I remember Chuck, um, you know, and of course Lisa reintroduced us to each other. And, you know, of course Chuck was like, he, he said something to the fact of uh, the queen of hair. Yes, I do remember you, basically. And uh, he was kind. He was kind, yeah. Mm -hmm. The other gentleman really didn't say anything. Uh, so it just was kind of awkward. It was very awkward. Okay. And uh, at that point, you went into her room and uh, you were going to do her hair there. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, we were going to go into her bedroom and uh, do her hair. And it's obviously where I had done her makeup, you know, the October before. Okay. And I want to stop you right there. <clears throat> You're on me. We've heard. Sound like they unplugged something because the. Uh, Attorney's microphones was, was nice and clear. Now the attorney's microphones is very low, so I'm gonna have to bump up the volume. But uh, hey, what's better? What's better? What happened? Just leave it. The better, better, much better. What's better? The audio? Okay, I'll, I'll leave it then. I was gonna bump it up more. Don't do more. Uh.
time stamping the yesterday's video for people that want to go catch up that missed yesterday. Uh, at some point, Ms. De Leon, did you have, uh, did Miss Dykes have you go into her closet to see her wedding dress? So, um, yeah, after I put uh, her bleach on her hair, uh, we were just kind of chatting. She was like, hey, she goes, um, you want to look at my wedding dress? And I was like, okay, okay yeah, sure. So um, we go out of her bathroom again to the right. There's a long narrow closet and um so she goes in the closet and i just kind of like leaned over like in the doorway you know just kind of watching her you know it's kind of like this you know leaning up against it and i see her walk to the to the back uh she pulls out two garments um that were on the right side and she turns around, she, she goes like this, she goes, well, which one do you like better? And I kind of laughed, I said, why would I think that you would have a black dress? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she had picked out a black dress for the wedding. Yeah, she actually had two dresses, and uh, she asked me which one I like best, and I, I said, well, I really like this one. I said, but it's like so low cut. And she goes, yeah, I know, I'll probably pin it. Um, and... When you were walking out of uh, that, I guess, that closet, uh, what did you see? So, as I turn around, um, like literally like straight across from me, when I turn around out of the closet, I see um, an altar. Mm. Um, and it had this big statue thing that, to me, resembled like a Grim Reaper. Yep. And I completely like freaked out. I didn't want to like show how scared I was, but I just like froze when I saw it. And so, you know, she, she bumps into me. She's like, Kat, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm like looking back at her and I'm looking at this thing and I don't know what to say. And so what did you say? And so I was like, she goes, what's wrong? And I was like, and I looked at, I pointed at her. I was like, are you into witchcraft? And she goes, well, well I dabbled in it. And I, you know, just trying to get myself out of like not sounding scared or not wanting to say anything dumb. I just said, well, okay, girl, to each his own, uh, just don't put a spell on me. And I was like, come on, we need to like get your hair, you know, shampooed out. And, and I just literally was like, so afraid. I just wanted to get out of there as soon as I could. She'd never ever mentioned anything about this witchcrafty kind of thing ever in all the times that she and I had spoken. It, it definitely had a, a profound effect on me. You were pretty scared. Yes. Um, and was that the last time you ever went to her house? It was. Uh, this was still kind of during the restrictions of, of COVID. When did your kind of salon open back up? Um, so we were out of work a couple of months. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as soon as we were able to open back up, uh, she obviously called for an appointment. I got her in and... Um, did she talk about Nina or Chuck during that appointment? Um, she did. Um, what did she tell you? She basically meant, uh, in part of our conversation, she um, told me that she and Nina had uh, <clears throat> were in a conversation and Nina had asked her what her favorite car was. And uh, she replies, she goes, well, I know what my favorite car is, but I've never been able to afford it. And um, so she, you know, she was like, so uh, Nina ended up getting me my dream car. And what was that dream car? Um, I always get them confused. Mas Maserati? A Maserati? Wow. Um, she told me it was black. Uh, she told me it had red seats, uh, and she told me, she goes, she goes, yeah, I really like the car, she says, but 
it had red seats, and I could not stand the red seats. So I told Nina that she needed to send the car back and have black seats put on it. And I was like, you did what? <laughs> it's like, if someone gave me a Maserati, I mean, if it was like striped yeah. polka dot, I wouldn't yeah, be driving it. I wouldn't. Um, and uh, so she tells you about Nina getting her a Maserati, and we're going to kind of, you know, move through some of uh, the other things that happened uh, here at the Maserati. A little more quickly. Um, in June of 2020, did you uh, have an appointment with Lisa again? Yes, I did. And was that the appointment where you met Nina? That was the first time I met Nina, yes. Okay, what was your impression of Nina? Um, was she outgoing, loud? No, Nina, uh, you know, for her being an attorney, I thought that she would be like very outgoing. Uh, she was, to me, very introverted, uh, didn't have much to say. That first visit that I had with her uh, <clears throat> when I met Nina uh, was very, very short. We were introduced to each other by Lisa, and um, she was kind of quiet. Um, she basically told Lisa, she goes, hey, she goes, uh, why don't you call me? She says, I'm just going to walk around the shops, you know, and check things out, just let me know when you're done and I'll come by and get you. Okay, so she just seemed very quiet. Yes. Um, did, ne did Lisa tell you uh, in June 2020 about uh, the plastic surgery that she was planning? She did. She told me that Nina was uh, <coughs> paying for her to have plastic surgery. And um, oh, Nina, babe. I was very surprised because she had never ever talked about ever want anything like that and you know we have a lot of intimate conversations so and then in july of 2020 uh you had an appointment again and then nina showed up this time as well yes this time uh nina actually stayed um so uh you know the way i described where my my working area is um there's a chair that faces us where you know i like if, if there's someone that's with a client of mine, they always have the option to like sit right there where they can visit. So yes, Nina did stay this time. Okay. <clears throat> and um, after that particular appointment, was there a time that you had an appointment with Lisa where she came in very upset? Yes. And did she tell you what she was upset about? Um, yes, that uh, she came in on a Saturday morning. Um, she told me that she had got home from work uh, Friday and that uh, she caught Chuck and Nina in bed together. Mm. And I said um, it. she, when she was telling me this, she, uh, she was like, I could just kill her. And I was like, wait, slow down a minute. I was like, you you sound a little aggressive here. Um, she said, she goes, yeah. She says, uh, I cannot believe that I caught them in bed together. Uh, and I told her, I said, Lisa, you invited this. You know, I was like, you have let this trio thing go on. Did you not think that it was going to happen? And, you know, after that, she... I mean, I had not really ever seen Nina, uh, I'm sorry, I never saw Lisa, like, upset. You know, she she was always like, you know, but this particular day, she was very, very upset. And did she mention it? You, you just told the jury that she was upset with Nina. Did she mention being upset with Chuck? No. Typical, right? Was it your understanding prior to that that the three of them were all in a, a physical relationship? Together? Pretty much. Oh, they got mad at me uh, when I said that. Mm -hmm. She did her hair uh, right before her. Uh, were you able to do her hair before her plastic surgery? I did. Okay. And then um, you understood that was kind of scheduled for early September, is that right? Yes. Okay, and you had an appointment with her on October 10th after the plastic surgery. Is that yes, right? ma'am, I did. And um, on that day, so her, she had had a facelift and, and a thigh uh, surgery. Yes. A thigh lift, I believe. Um, how was she moving around on October 10th? 
She was moving around very slow that uh, that day that I saw her. Um, um, she came in with baggy clothes, which is something that I'd never really seen her in. Yeah. I kind of took it that maybe, you know, because her body was like still in pain, maybe she had to wear, you know, like loose clothes. Um, but the whole time that, that I saw her on that day, she talked about the plastic surgery. Uh, she told me that she had had an infection on one of her legs and they had to put like a, I don't know, like a drainage bag there uh, because her, her leg had gotten infected from the surgery. Um, you said she was moving slowly, but she was still able to walk in? Yes. She was able to move around? Yes. <clears throat> and that particular day, she asked for, you know, something uh, a little different with her hair. Um, so you, ma'am, what's been marked states exhibit 86? Do you recognize that photo? I do. And is it a fair and accurate representation of uh, her hair that day? Very much so. Your Honor, State Offers 86 for all purposes, tendering to Defense Counsel. No objection. All right, State's Exhibit 86 is admitted for all purposes. And oh. this particular day, she still has this uh, side shave and the, mm. the kind of pop the door. Yes. Um, but she went with full on pink. She did, and I thought that that was very unusual. Um, I never, I didn't question her this time for some reason. Um, you know, but, but looking back at the picture now, it just, I'm like, why would she even wear pink if she, you know, she, like the type of job that she has on. Okay, that's just your thinking, right? Yes. Now, did she make an additional appointment after that? She did. And what does that mean? Um, so I typically go on vacation the week after Thanksgiving every year. Um, so I did do that. Um, the week after that, I was booked with clients, so I was not able to get her in until the, uh, like the following Saturday. So... Um, and I'm not sure what did she is. ever call in? I'm sorry, I'll, I'll get to uh, that in just a minute. Did she ever call in and cancel that appointment? She didn't. She uh, just no showed? She just no showed, which is something that she had never ever done. The one thing about Lisa uh, is she was definitely on top of her hair. I mean, I saw her faithfully. Uh, she never ever missed an appointment for anything. Um, so at the time, you know, we, we pretty much already knew that, Mar that Mary Sella was missing. Okay, you had seen the article. I did see the article. And you had seen the information about Mr. Beltran being a, a person of interest. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and you kind of seen in the news that maybe they were looking for Miss Dykes. Or had you seen that? Um, I have not. Well, kind of at the same time. Uh, so, uh, I have another client, her name is Jenny. Okay, Shinora. And I don't want you to talk about anything that Jenny uh, okay. talked about. But, okay. uh, thank you, I'm sorry. Um, I guess the bottom line is it didn't shock you necessarily that she no-showed in December. Well, I, you know, I was really hoping that that she was going to show up for that. Okay, Shinora, uh, to the narrative, it's a yes or no. Sustained. Were you surprised that she no showed in December? I was not surprised. Okay. And were you hoping that she would? I was very much hoping that she would. Now, uh, we talked about December 10th being Lisa's last last hair appointment with you. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 
possessive of when Charles. When she spoke about Nina and her marriage, did she tell you um, whether or not she was interested in, in Nina sexually? Um, no, um, she was not. Um, th there was a visit that she came in and Nina was coming in town. Um, and uh, she was telling me that. The objection, Your Honor, uh, asked and answered. Oh, I'll overrule that objection. What did she tell you? Uh, she basically told me that um, that Nina was coming in town and she just had like this disgusted look on her face. She goes, oh, that just means I'm going to have to sleep with her. And did she have those same conversations about Chuck? Did she talk about whether she had sexual relations with Chuck and whether or not she enjoyed that? Was that a conversation you had? Um, from what, I mean, the conversations that we did have that, you know, that took place about Chuck, yeah, she always enjoyed that. Okay. Now. They call that game for pay? Just taking the money. Also in uh, Nina. Leon, I'm showing you <coughs> what's been marked States Exhibit 87. Is that your driver's license picture? Yes, ma'am, it is. Okay. Um, Roger State moves to admit States 87 for all purposes, generating the defense. No objection. You and I sat down and talked in your home for quite some time. Um, this is not a situation you really wanted to be involved in, is it? Not at all. And something you never really thought you would ever have to be involved in. It's never happened to me in my career. You're on the task list. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, this is Eliana Valerie Baston and um, I'm one of the attorneys representing Lisa Dodd, so I'm going to ask you some questions and just follow up on what you were talking about with Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Pittman. So, um, Lisa started coming to see you around 2016? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, at that time, was, was Lisa very overweight? She was. Lisa lose a substantial amount of weight? She lost someone. About 60 pounds. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, enough weight where you could tell there was a real difference? Yes. Okay. And um, you mentioned earlier that Lisa would come in and talk about her kids, about Chelsea, her daughter who lived with her. Chelsea was an adult at this time, correct? Yes, ma'am. So it's really not something horrible or surprise that an adult parent would want their adult child <coughs> to live their life so the adult parent could do some things too as well. Can I answer that? I mean, uh, the way I saw it, Chelsea was very dependent on Lisa. But Chelsea was an adult. It wasn't like she was a teenager or a middle school student or an elementary student. She was well into her 20s or even early 30s, yes or no? Yes. And Don't see that problem. being a, a, a responsible parent, a good parent, you want your children to be able to function in this world without being completely dependent on you. I would hope so. So Chelsea moving back to Florida where she worked for the Disney company before where she had friends, that wasn't really a big shock or surprise. It was to me. But that's where all of Chelsea's friends were. But once again... Yes or no? That's where her... Oh, you're yes. understanding that's where Chelsea's friends were? Yes. That she worked for the Disney company? Back in the day, yes. Um, now, as far as Lisa wanted to change up her hairstyle from going to uh, a longer hairstyle to a shorter hairstyle. Lisa did a bunch of styles with you. 
She did a pixie cut. Do you remember doing pixie cuts for her? Uh, not really. Um, but as a woman gets older, it's no surprise that sometimes she may want to do something different with her hair. Most women would. Okay. So Lisa wanted to change up her hair. That was really a big shock. That was a very big shock. But Lisa had just lost a lot of weight. Maybe she wanted a, a new look. Is that possible? Yes. Um, and then you were talking about her her wanting to dye her hair pink in October. Isn't October Breast Cancer Awareness Month? Um, I have no idea. But I would not think that that would have anything to do with it. A lot of people dye their hair pink and like to wear pink. Yes or no? Yes. Uh, especially in October. And I know you said you're not aware that it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but it is. Well, I'm not saying that I'm not aware of it. I, I've just never heard Lisa talk about, you know, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Okay. Now, about Lisa showing you her tattoos, was she um, the one always showing them off to you, or, or did you ask to see her tattoos? Uh, they, they were always in plain sight. Okay. And when she, you said when she would come, to get her hair done, she would wear like a t-shirt and jeans. Yes. Okay. And that's pretty typical for getting your hair done because you don't want, if you're getting your hair colored and things like that, you don't want to mess up your clothes. You're not going to come to a hair salon wearing after five or cocktail attire or anything like that. You're going to wear something pretty basic. Yes. Correct. And most of my clients would always wear a smock over it so they wouldn't get anything on their clothes. And, um... But Lisa did talk to you about investing in Charles's rap career. She did. And so she, they had a relationship, but she also viewed it as an investment. Um, I think she did that to, to yes please no. him. Yes or no? It was an investment. I suppose, yes. Um... <clears throat> Now, you were talking about the Halloween party that her law firm was having. This would have been in October of 2019. And the, the image that she wanted, isn't that called La uh, Katharina? I'm not sure not what sure. it's called. Okay. And you weren't the one who designed the, the face makeup, the... She uh, sent me a picture uh, through text message and basically wanted me to, to mock that. And that's what I was going off of. But you're the one who ultimately did the design on her face. I was. So that creation was your creation. It was not my creation. I was going off of the picture that she showed me. Um, it, Now, you also talked about, um, Elisa talking to you about Nina, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you said that Lisa told you, oh, she can give me everything I want. Wasn't Lisa also talking about just companionship? She was talking financial. But wasn't she also talking about companionship? No. Okay. So, but she testified that you knew about Lisa's past relationships, yes? I knew of, I wouldn't even call them relationships. The only one that she really were talked about before that was her husband that she had in Florida. Well, on direct, she said that she would, that Chuck didn't seem like the type of person she would date based off of her past boyfriends, or her past relationships, and I'm paraphrasing. I'm not really sure what you mean by that? So, in your mind, it wasn't 
for companionship as well. Who, Chuck? No, I'm sorry, Nina and Lisa's relationship. There may have been a financial aspect to it, but it was also for a companionship because they were friends. Um, they were friends, but but Lisa was not into women from what she had ever, ever talked to me about. That was the first time that she... Well, let me ask you this, Mrs. Stelion, because how much did Lisa really tell you? Because it seems like you, you do a lot of talking, so oh, amazing that shit. Lisa could get a lot in with you. And oh, no! And there were a lot of stories that, a lot of intimate stories that Lisa told me. Now... This altar that you said you saw in her Bro. house, in, in her closet, are you sure this wasn't in Chuck's room? No, I knew where Chuck's room was. We were in Lisa's room. And you said it was an altar, but a lot of people have altars in their homes. Oh, please. So not no something with this shit. Come on. Guadalupe or Guadalupe. This wasn't a... Uh, this, well, this, that's, that's not what I'm asking you. A lot of people have altars in their homes. Say no. Just, just say no. Uh, say no. Never say really, no. Just say no. Just say no. Yeah, yeah no. Um, have you ever been in someone's home where, where they had shit. an altar and there was a picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe? No. 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 Go give her what she wants. No. Where those shit. <clears throat> Yo, don't give them what they want. Don't give them what they want. Uh uh. uh, -uh. Marcus. I'm handing to you what's marked as defendants exhibit number three. Do you recognize the person in that picture? Chuck. Okay. Chuck, uh, Charles Beltran? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How are you having it? Your Honor, I'm tendering to uh, state. No objection. Would like to have this admitted into evidence, Your Honor? All right. Defendants exhibit number three is admitted for all purposes. Chuck. That's already Chuck. Yo, it's been so long, so long. Wendy, you talk so much. You don't talk more? You over here talking a lot? Is my mic going too long? No, right? Okay. Now, this is how Chuck looked when you met him. Supposedly, it Lovia. is. And you met him, what, two or three times? Twice. And he looked, had this appearance both times you met him? Yes. And this made you a little uncomfortable, did it not, Mrs. De Leon? Mm, yes, mainly because she had never really told me what Chuck looked like, so yeah, it kind of caught me off guard. And it surprised you that she would be dealing with a younger man? Yes. Um, who was all tatted up and in the rap in the music business or trying to get into the music business. Correct. Yes. And Chuck came in while you were there with another man. Yes. Right? And why did it make you so uncomfortable with Chuck with this other man? <clears throat> Well, number one, I didn't think, I thought it was just going to be Lisa and I, uh, but mm. I, it was just the way they both looked. Um, you know, I'm not used to being around, like, <laughs> thugs. Did you think Chuck was flirting with you? Not at all. Did Chuck really say much to you? Uh, he basically just said that he remembered who I was. 
Did the other guy flirt with you or try to talk to you? No. Oh, no. That's Chuck's friend. Donna. Did you think it was unusual that this other man said nothing to you at all? Not even a small conversation? I don't know why he would. Did he even say hello or introduce himself to you? Um, not that I recall. And generally when you come in somewhere, you do say hello to people, you introduce yourself, even if you're not going to engage in conversations. So that's just a lot. Correct. Now, Mrs. Edwin, let me ask you, um, because you made a big deal about Lisa um, seeing a younger person. Do you have an issue with May-December relationships if, if it's the woman who is more seasoned? Yeah, I do. Can you just repeat that? Well, yeah, I do. Say I made it. a big deal in your direct testimony about <coughs> Lisa dating a younger man. Like it, it bothered you. That was the impression that you had. And do you have an issue with women dating younger men when older men date younger women all the time? I don't have an issue with it at all. It was just the fact that uh, that he was literally like half her age. And are you ageist? Huh? I just did not think that that she would ever end up with a guy that young. Is it fair to say, Mrs. Deleon, you're probably a more conservative person? Very much so. And you do remember that Lisa had a near-death experience, correct? Involving her, 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 her aortic? I don't recall. You don't remember that? I don't recall. Um... And now going to the plastic surgery that took place in September, you saw her in October. Yes, ma'am. And she came in, you said, wearing baggy clothes. Yes. And you said that she was moving, but she was moving very slowly. She was. So... So she wasn't the spry person that she normally encountered. No. Um, and she did tell you she had like a major infection with this. She did. Did she also mention to you that she had um, at least one open wound on her on her thighs? On her leg. I don't, she never uh, said that it was an open wound. She just said that she had an infection and that she had a, a drainage bag. Okay. okay. Yes. Attached. Yes, ma'am. I never saw it, though. Okay. <laughs> but she wasn't wearing jeans, though. She was wearing something pretty bad. Uh, they were baggy. Okay. I can't recall if, I, I, I can't recall if they were jeans or sweats. It was just baggy because uh, I just uh, I never really saw her like in baggy clothes. So. Oh. I passed the witness, Sean. Can you read the No, you're on. Good. May this will just be fine. Excuse me. All right. Yeah, the hairdresser know more than the forensic doctors and uh, 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 the guy that was with her that night, Maricela, when she disappeared. Damn. I take a little break. All right, so so far it's been a interesting day. The hairdresser spilling the tea, and I could tell. And I've heard, I think I'm pretty sure I've heard of the story. She had a way a lot more to say, but I guess they're limited in the courtroom. Um, there was another. Let me see. Somebody had sent me something a while, a long time ago. Oh, if you, a little more information about Lisa. Somebody else had reached out to me. This was in 2021, and this was somebody that was a really close childhood friend to Lisa growing up. Um, she said that, I'm very surprised she was involved in this mess. I'm glad her parents aren't around to see this. I'm very disappointed and sad. I'm sad for the young girl too, Marcella. 
I'm going to be praying for Lisa. I'm too upset to really say anything much. I hadn't talked to Lisa since high school, and I researched her name on Facebook in 2018. In 2019, I went to Dallas area with my uh, partner, and we met Lisa and spent around an hour talking to her. I'm very glad you did the videos. I was trying to understand some of this in your videos. Explain. Lisa has three children. Many years ago, either 80s or 90s, she had her parents say that Lisa was hiding from the father because she didn't want the father to take custody. That's what I mentioned earlier, the custody of her kids. Lisa's parents told my mom that they were going off grid to help her disappear. So this shows a pattern. Nina wanted a child and Lisa, and Lisa was just showing her how to make it happen. So, and the thing too, if you watch the bill story on my playlist, which is, it's all so relevant. If there's a, I have a playlist that's in the description and there's a recap video as well. There's a in-depth dive video that I did with bill which is Nina's ex that passed away in a car accident. Um, Nina wanted to have kids really, really bad. Bill was much older than her, I believe, and couldn't have kids. I don't think, I don't think he wanted kids. This is where I, it almost kind of comes into play where I almost wonder about where Lisa and Nina were trying to take Charles's child, trying to get custody. They literally sent the letter to uh, the mother of the child. Charles's baby mama, they sent the letter to her. I have that in the video I did on Charles Beltran too. That was sent to me. That's not public anywhere. Um, so I, I wonder about that whole thing where they were trying to get custody of this child. Um, I saw Lisa the first time since 1981 when we graduated from high school. She wasn't interested in growing old. She was kind of totally against being a grandmother. We text later and she's like, we text later and she likes younger men. My husband and I met her at a barbecue place in Texas. During our conversation with her, she said she liked traveling and was interested in going to Turkey. She said that she had been married to a uh, pilot and, go, and to go travel many different places. Lisa has been married three times as of 2019. I didn't know anything about Nina. I didn't know Lisa was a lesbian. Dykes is a real maiden name. She only talked about boys growing up. Lisa got messed up with some demonic things at a very, very young age. She was probably six, and that's actually what I did here, too. Anyway, she may be still messed up in those things from the information that you showed on YouTube. Nobody knew where Lisa was when I tried to find her. I knew her relatives, so I started Googling them and found her listed in, a, and found her listed in an obituary. I found the right Lisa Ahmed through Lisa Joe Dykes. So Lisa Ahmed, if you guys are watching the stream from the beginning, I mentioned that um, Lisa at some point got with this guy named Tamar. Uh, it's, if, if you watch the, I wonder if I talked about that in a video, but Tamar is somebody, like I said, that he had an accident. He was here on a work visa. He fell from like a roof or something while he was working. He needed some help. Lisa, he walked into a, a an attorney's office and Lisa was the paralegal there and she started helping out Tamar and they were like, you know what? Like we can maybe work something now. You want to stay here permanently in the U S and I could use some help with money and stuff around the house and the kids. So that's where Lisa got that last name Ahmed. So it says here, okay, I'm back to the DM that I'm reading. I found, I found the right Lisa Ahmed through the Lisa Joe Dykes. She hates her middle name, Joe. She told us that when we met her at the barbecue place, she said her kids didn't know what her middle name was. The disappearance act, the disappearance act, I believe they would have left with Charles Beltran's child. Think about it. To that, they were going to change their names to Beltran. That's true too. They had, they were going by the alias Beltran. Maybe that was one, maybe that was one more way to have a child. Who knows? I'm sure there's some reason. Lisa knew how to lay low. They would have left the country with the child. I'm surprised they didn't leave the country right away after the murder. Nina wanting the child was the holdup. Funny thing, Lisa's parents told my mom that Lisa was going into the medical profession. She never did go in that direction. They were even trying to get, give a fake profession for their daughter. It was strange when I was a senior in history class that we shared a class. She almost was never in class. And then she sent me some pictures of Lisa when she was, uh, 
from second to grade six. I'll show you guys this picture. That's Lisa. Lisa. Yeah, Lisa has three children. Yeah. They're they're older though. But yeah. Lisa has always had weight problems. Lisa's parents were interested in socializing socializing with affluent people. Lisa didn't no longer want to be friends with me around nineteen seventy six. Summer after sixth grade, her parents drank alcohol. Anyway, there isn't anything wrong with that, really, but to just try to live a lifestyle that was uppity. In Somerset, Kentucky, the status of a brick home in a nice neighborhood. My parents live in the same house that they did 58 years ago. So Lisa asked if my parents live in the same house when I met her in March or April 2019. The way she asked was snobby. I thought she was just has no idea that my parents hasn't had a house payment in 48 years. Most of my relatives pulled themselves out just uh, out of just making to have of just making to having more than enough. What I'm saying is Lisa is a social climber. Do you really think she would have been with Nina if Nina didn't have her husband leaving her money? Again, that's what I say. Like you guys got to watch that Bill video because Nina got me, Nina made a come up from Bill, which Bill's not dead. Nina would not have the shit that she had. She wouldn't have been an attorney. She wouldn't have the money she had. If it wasn't for Bill. Uh, Lisa's mom and her dad lived in her dad's mom's house. I live in one bedroom. I live in a one bedroom apartment in downtown Little Rock. I'm happy. Nevertheless, I own my own vending machine. I think I do well. Uh, let me see what else. Is anything. send her message we haven't talked since 2021 let's see <laughs> All right, so it looks like they're getting ready to come back. Um, today, when they do the lunch break, I'll pro I'm probably going to step away and take a little break or something. I was up late last night cleaning. I'm really glad that I got, like, Maddie's room pretty much done. The kitchen's good. and Laundry's good. Got a lot of stuff done last night, personal stuff. Um, have any other females who slept with Charles during the open relationship come forward? Uh, not that I can remember. I, I spoke to, to be honest with you, I spoke to Charles's baby mother like two years ago. I'd have to look her up on Instagram. Actually, two of them. I think he has two different baby mothers. One emailed me, but she didn't want to be involved. And then there was one that I spoke with. Show the ladies in the chat room your tats. Uh, I mean, I have one on my back. I'd have to take off my shirt. Uh, amazing. Midnight Lazarus, three months. Thanks for the gift memberships, y'all. Oh, Train Monkey, thank you for the seven months. Peeps, hit the like button. Yeah, yeah. Please, it really helps me out. There's Lisa. Lisa looking a little slimmer. She grew her hair back. She's looking modest. Stella got a groove back in jail. Lisa. 
Lisa. Yeah, by the way, guys, in the chat, Joe P, that is Bill's daughter in the chat. What happened? Oh. That's Bill's daughter in the chat. A lot of us have been, have been waiting for this for years, man. <laughs> if Chuck regularly brought some brought home woman, what made Lisa snapping? That's what I don't understand either, Tisha. If Chuck regularly brought home woman, which is what I was told, which I don't I don't know what made Lisa snap on Maricela. But going back to the whole Nina sleeping with Chuck, I wonder if Lisa had like that took her to her edge. Like that really brought her to her edge. And like, I don't know. And so the next time she saw something like that, she snapped. I don't know what the time frame of that is. I don't know if there's something that she saw in Maricela. Like a young, attractive woman. But Chuck was messing around with a bunch of women all the time. What's my tattoo of? Uh, there is like an angel type of thing on one side. And then there's like a demon, Santa Muerte. <laughs> a type of angel demon thing on the other side. Just for the good and bad that I've gone to, through. And a reminder not to go back. But at the time, I, I really liked the tattoo. Now I'm like, eh. I could I could have been without it, actually. But it's it's kind of big, so it would take to remove it. It's pretty expensive, I think, and painful. Flossy, yeah. It's all coming back, man. I, I just feel like this story is so crazy. I, I wonder why this story never got traction. Like back in the day when it was happening, there was some traction going on. A bit. Not a lot, but a bit. And now now it's like nothing. It's like just a little like a blip. Like a little poop poop. I think if one of these networks could like put the whole story together, those people that have all the time and resources, they could make a hell of a story if they made it all make sense. I know that they reached out to um one of Nina, not Nina, sorry, Lisa's best friend to go on a show, but she didn't want to go yet. She wanted to wait till like after this stuff is over and she might. I mean, it could happen after the trial. Lena, I hope you're doing well. I love you. Sending all my love and support. I don't even know if you have my number now. My, my, I might have changed it since I last spoke to you. Let me just shoot you a text. Uh, what was this? February 14. You probably might not have my number. Okay, I shot you a text. Oh, it's a, it's a insane story the, the love throuple thing or whatever but not, but also not also that not only that the life of lisa is insane there's a, I, i've gotten a lot of the story i only took notes off of a phone conversation that i had but she kind of didn't want me to put things out yet the one that's going to be testifying and so I, I respected that uh she might come out or maybe once the trials are over maybe once all the trials are over she i, I really think she would come on to tell the story because we, we've become pretty cool, like good friends, I think. And like she would be telling me stuff before I even came out. And this person, the, the big thing too, that might come out during a trial, I don't know if it's going to come out or not. When these chicks were hiding in Cambodia, I believe that uh, Lisa called her best friend, Jen. And I won't say more than that. I don't know if it's going to come out, so.
it was like a whole drama series about the unfortunate things that somebody got, got killed. Oh, Teddy Bear. Teddy Bear says, if anyone here watches the Squid Game, the challenge, the, fina the finale, the final is finally here, 9 p.m. Eastern tonight. Ooh. So I've watched all the episodes. I was very disappointed at first, but then I got interested. And they got, they got somewhat interesting. I'll just, I just have to say, Teddy Bear, Ashley is a bitch. <laughs> they should have tossed her off the bridge. Right hand to you, someone will swear or hurt that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Thank you. You may be seated. Who's this? You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, it's going to be the law firm. Good morning. Good morning. Can you speak into that microphone? Good morning. Um, could you state your name for the record? Daxton Stevens. Do you go by Dax? Yes. Um, and um, where are you from? Camden, Arkansas. Okay. Um, where do you live now? Irving, Texas. Okay. So in the Dallas area? Yes. How long have you lived in the Dallas area? Uh, since like 202. Okay. So 21 years now? Something like that, yes, sir. Okay. And uh, what do you do for work? Uh, I manage a bar in Deep Ellum. What party manager? Own premise. Okay. You said that's in Deep Ellum, oh. your house? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and it's a, a bar. Bar club, yes, sir. Um, so it's got a later opening. Not, it's not like a restaurant. It's just a bar club kind of place. Yes. Okay. Um, can you kind of describe on premise? Uh, each night is a different night. Uh, we try to give good service to all guests to come with everybody club, bar club, whatever. Just a good time. Pretty mixed crowd. It's yes, sir. We cater to everybody. Okay. Um, and um, how long have you been working at Home Premise? I think since like 2015, 2016. One of those. And. By the way, that's the bar that um, Chuck and Le Lisa's kid were at, I believe, on premise. She said since 2015, somewhere in there? Yes, sir. 15 to 16. Um, and where is your approach from? You may. I'm going to show you what I have marked here. States 88 through 91. Is that on premise there in 88? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then that's kind of the corner um, away from on premise. You can kind of still see on premise here. And then that's Punk Society, is that right? Yes. States 89. I was always confused if Chuck worked there. Any one of those, I thought he just went there uh, a lot. Matt aerial photos of uh, the Deep Ellum area. Yes. Kind of where on premise is at. Okay. This time I'll offer states 88 through 91. I'll turn to the defense for your questions. No objection, Jim. All right, six exhibits 88 through 91 are admitted for all purposes. Commissioner Bosha? You may. So we'll start here with States 90. Uh, the map here of on premise, kind of the tight view. Um, it's on Elm and uh, what's kind of cross street over here? You know? Crowdis, I think. Okay. Um, and you're right next to trees. Yes, sir. And then down here is that's the punk society. Yes, sir. Um, and so here states 88. That's kind of the front uh, storefront of of on premise there. Yes. Okay. So in your time there at on premise, uh, did you meet? Uh, the defendant, uh, Lisa Dykes. Yes. Okay. How'd you come to meet Lisa? Uh, at the time, her son was the general manager. I and mean, who was her son? Cal, Cal Williams. Okay. 
So Kyle's managing there on premise, uh, and his mom is, is Lisa Dykes, and she comes to the bar or what? Yes. Okay. Um, and so you guys know her then? Yes. Do you know about when that would have been? Uh, probably 2017, 18, something like that. Okay. And uh, how was she? Nice lady. Okay. Like a mom. And um, Kyle? Uh, a good friend, yeah. A friend. Good person, yes. Yeah. Friend and coworker. Yes. Okay. And no issues there whatsoever? None. Okay. And um, did you come to meet the Charles Beltran there? Oh, yes. Okay. So you go by Chuck? Yes. Okay. How'd you meet Chuck? Uh, he was part of security staff. Okay. He worked there as well as security? Yes. How was he as a security uh, personnel? Uh, cool guy. Okay. People person. Yeah. Um, and he was just kind of work the door? Not much the door, more than the inside. Okay. Um, how was he at his job? Was he good at his job or was he focused on other things? Both, everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good in some days and he focused on talking and yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking to who? Women. Mm, yeah. ladies, that's, that's Chuck. He, he is the type that would talk to any woman out there at the bar. I don't say any, but yeah, he talked to a lot of them, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, any issues with Chuck or is Chuck friend? Friend, yes. So he's another coworker and friend right there at on premise, and, and you guys all meet. Is it around the same time, 2018-ish? Yeah, yeah, somewhat, you, yes, sir. Do you meet Lisa first, or, and then she that one? Is, I, that one I can't recall. Okay. Um, and you've got another friend uh, who's here with you today, uh, Freddie Chapman. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, now he doesn't work at the bar, though. No. Never has. No ads. But does he frequent hang out up there with you guys? Yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, a time that you were with. Uh, you and Lisa Dykes would talk occasionally while she's up there. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, did you ever go to her house? I have a few times. Was that by yourself or with Chuck? Uh, it was always with Chuck. Okay. Yeah, of course. So you and Chuck, and that would be the house in Mesquite? Yes. Okay. And um, before I get into kind of more of that, uh, was there a time where Lisa was asking you about Freddie? She asked about Freddie once or twice, yes. Okay. What was the contents of or what, what was she asking you about? It was more like um, trying to hang out tonight, uh, like call Freddie before you can come hang out with me, something like that. Was she interested in kind of pursuing Fred? Possible, yeah. It could have, yeah. Is that what it seemed like to you? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Was she wanting you to kind of connect you and Freddie for them to talk further? For the night, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and then in hindsight, let's talk then about, I guess, obviously, uh, are you aware of her, her relationship with Charles Beltran, Chuck? To a degree, yes. Okay. Um, what were your observations of that relationship? Did he ever come out and talk about his relationship with Lisa? Not really, a little bit. Not really, though. Okay. What was that like? How would he describe it, or what were your observations of that relationship with Chuck and Lisa? Um, the way he described it with me, um, she, um, sugar mama type. Okay. Yeah. What's that? Um, would they hang out together in the bar? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Did they act like a couple, or did they just kind of be around and things were kind of normal? As if they were yeah, yeah, they, they really didn't act like a couple, no. Um, and to you, your observations and things Chuck would say made you think sugar mama? To a degree, yeah. Okay. Mm, um, sugar mama. And <laughs> during the time that he's got that sugar mama relationship with Lisa, is he still doing the Chuck thing with different women? Oh, yeah. That never stopped. Play a pimp. You have to answer out loud, sir, yes or no? No. Okay. Thank you. Oh. And Is that good um, enough? Was he the type that would try and hide his uh, yeah, nah. with other women, or was that I kind of pretty out, out and in the obvious? 
out in the objects, yeah. Yeah, out there. Um, and so then I want to talk a little bit about October of uh, 2020. All right. Okay. Um, it sounds like that uh, first weekend there in October, did you and Chuck take a trip? Yes. Okay. Who, tell me about that trip. Where were y'all going? Uh, Camden, Arkansas. Okay. Um, so you guys take off to, to Arkansas. Uh, who all is going with you? Um, in the van, it was me, Freddie, Chuck, Jordan, and Brian. Okay. And did Lisa Dykes go with you? Yes, her and Nita. Nina was in a vehicle behind us. Okay. What van were you in? A runner van. Okay. Who rented the van? Lisa. Okay. Um, so Lisa rents this van for you and Chuck and, and a few friends, Freddie included to drive to Camden, Arkansas, and then you guys are going for a rap concert? Yeah, a rap show for a club in you, yes. Okay. Uh, did you help set that up? Yes. Okay. Um, and was Chuck gonna perform? Yes. And was Freddie gonna perform? Yes. Okay. Were they the headliners? Shit, <laughs> no, no. No, they wasn't the headliners. Let me warn you before the judge does. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, you, can, you can use profanity if you're quoting someone. Yeah. Just don't use it in your own responses in court. All right, cool. So, but if you're quoting someone, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so they no headliner. They're not uh, headliners. So you, you, your response there, um, from from your your perspective, uh, it seemed like Chuck's rap career had a chance of really taking off. Uh, no, sir. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's you guys go, it's rough. Uh, you leave for Camden, Arkansas. Is it that Friday the second? Yes, yeah, like Friday. nighttime. I think yeah, night. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you said you're from Camden. Yes. So you still have family there when you went? Yeah, my dad. Okay. Um, where was everybody planning to stay when they got to Camden? Uh, it was a hotel room. Okay. It was like two or three rooms. I can't. Remember, I stayed with my dad the whole time. You stayed with your dad, but there were a couple of hotel rooms. For sure, too. Okay. Yeah. And you you went to the hotel, to be clear. Yeah, to play a video game here and there. Okay. And at the uh, the hotel, there's multiple rooms. Do you know who paid for those rooms? Lisa. Mm, they shook them out, taking and, everybody. And, wow. Um, You've got, uh, I, I assume, I guess what's the, the room makeup? Is or is Lisa and Nina in a room? And Yeah, yeah. They was on one level and then it was another room for sure on another level. And so tell me then about that, that trip. So the Saturday, um, everything's fine? Yeah, just hanging out, chilling. Who drove uh, the car behind you guys? Was it Lisa or Nina? I want to say it was Lisa. Yeah, Lisa. Um, and how long is that drive? At least four hours. Um, so four hours or so drive up to Camden. Um, you go hang out with family, I'm assuming when you get there, it sounds like it's... Yes, yes. Uh, and then Saturday, you guys are hanging out, getting mm -hmm. ready for the show? Yeah. Okay. Um, everything was fine? Yes. Okay, no issues or anything like that? Correct. Okay. How did the show go? Um, from one to ten, it was about six. How was Chuck's part of the show? About three. <laughs> yeah. I'm being honest. Yeah. Uh, and let me ask you this too, right? So Chuck's <laughs> not the headliner, obviously. That's not what people are there to see. Correct. There was a, a bigger local artist or regional artist. Region, yes, yes. That's performing there. Yeah. Um, is it something where that, that establishment is like reaching out to Chuck saying, hey, you come perform, or did you guys have to coordinate <clears throat> for the slot? The second guy was the opener and I guess they was looking for like a they had a slot for another artist or whatever. The second guy is one of my good friends too. And um it just got set up where Chuck him had the slot. I think it was like two to three hundred bucks for the slot. Chuck had to pay for the slot. Yes, yes. I mean sugar mama paid for the slot. Um so it's not it it wasn't a case of anyone was interested in recruiting Chuck to come perform, it was uh, you who made a connection to get him on the stage. Yeah. yeah. Get on one of the bus. Uh, and at this time, he had maybe a song or two out, I think. Yes. And then him and Freddie had a song as well. 
to get the yes. Okay. You don't perform with him or rap with him or anything like that? No, I ain't a rap. Okay. Um, but you had some of those connections and they were your friends and yeah, yeah, kind of work yeah. with us. Um, the audience, you said you know, Chuck's was about three, so it sounds like uh, the audience wasn't uh, too into Chuck's performance. Correct. Okay. Um, did you get some booze? Yeah, I heard a few of those. <laughs> okay, so some booze, some chuckling, probably. Yeah. And then uh, things turn around when Freddie gets on the stage? Yeah, that was song number two. Okay. Yes. So when, when Dax and Fre or when Freddie and Chuck do a song together. Yeah, I heard people like, okay, okay. What okay. is that time? Oh, my bad. Just make sure that you finish the time. Yeah. Um, uh. Y'all leave Arkansas. Or I guess that night. Uh, what do y'all do that night after the show? Went back to the hotel. Did you go back to the hotel and hang out for a little for bit? For a little bit. Okay. Um, but you don't stay? No, nah, I went back to my dad. Um, so you have no idea where Chuck stayed that night? From your own person? Yeah, life? yeah. No, no idea. Okay. And uh, Lisa was, was obviously there with you guys. She drove, you said, and she's at the hotel. Was she at the uh, concert? Yes. Okay. Was she hanging out, walking around? Yes. Okay. Um, was she drinking that night? Yes. Okay. Um, so she's there having a good time? Yes. Okay. And um, are you aware that she had a surgery, though, what, like a month before this? Yes. Okay. Um, do you know what kind of surgery? Uh, plastic surgery or something. Do you know where? I think it's neck, leg. Something like that. Okay. Uh, did you help? Were you actually there picking her up from the, the hospital with Chuck? I wanted to call, yes. I went there for sure. Okay. And um, that next day, that Sunday, did you guys, you guys drove back um, on Sunday the 4th? Yes. Okay. Um, no issues at this point? No. Uh, and you drive back to where do y'all go when, when you drive back? Mesquite. Was that the meetup point, that Mesquite house where Lisa lived? Yeah. Okay. And um, what'd y'all do from there? What was the plan? Me and Freddie Uber downtown because at the time that's where I was living at downtown. Around seven ish, eight ish. And then me and Chuck met back up like midnight. Was so you guys Ubered, was the plan to Uber when you got there? No, 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 no. Why did you have to Uber? Uh, Chuck couldn't find his keys. His keys to his car was the black Audi? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so he can't find his keys, so you guys say, we're just gonna catch an Uber and we'll figure something out later. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, you Uber, you said you live downtown, <coughs> um, not too far from Depot in New York. Correct. Okay. About how far? A mile. Um, so, walkable distance from where you work and that's where you're Yeah. Was Freddie staying there too? Yes. Okay. Freddie worked down there too? Yes, he was concierge. At the? Manor house. Okay, and that's the apartments you live in? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you and Freddie Uber back to Manor house and does Freddie stay with you? Stay with me? No, no. No, I mean, not that evening. Nah, he, go, he go to his place and I go to my place and then me and Chuck went back up. And Freddie's gone at that point. Though. Yeah, yeah. And so we're talking October 4th in the evening hours, you said 7, 8? Yeah, somewhat like that. Okay. Pretty quickly, did you and Chuck meet back up? Yes. Okay. Um, what do you think? What time are we meeting? We all meet up, I presume, me, Bellum? Yeah, uh, he picked me up. Okay. In the alley? Yes. So October 4th, uh, Sunday, he's picking you up in the Audi, and then are y'all going down to Deep Valley? Yes. Okay. Is that where y'all typically would hang out? For the most part, yes. Okay. So that Sunday, you uh, it's evening, you head down to Deep Valley in Chuck's, Chuck's vehicle. Uh, where do you go? Uh, we went to Deep Valley, and the first spot we went to was Punk Society. And that's? Right here in the corner in States 90, and then here in 89, 
Uh, yes. If you kind of zoom in, you can see the sign say Punk Society there. Yeah. Okay. And that's just a couple uh, kind of businesses down or bars down from on premise. Yes. Okay. What did I do at Punk's? We went in maybe for like 10, 15 minutes. And um, we had a drink or two. And then um, we seen this um, baby mama. Who's baby mama? Uh, Chuck. Oh, and baby mama's Jasmine. Okay, so Jasmine, Chuck's baby mama. Yeah, she Did come in. Together at the time? No, I don't think so. Okay. And you see her come in, what, what's y'all's reaction to seeing her walk in? Shit, we gotta go. We went through the back door. Okay. No, the problem. So there's a back door to, to, to punks. Yes, yes, through the kitchen and all that. Yeah. And we kind of see here uh, most of these premise, all of these, or at least on premise, you have a back door, patio area, and you can get out that way as well, right? Yeah, most of them like that. Okay. Um, and so. Jasmine walks in right here. Yeah. You and Chuck say, no, we don't want that, and we go out the back. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chuck's kind of avoiding Jasmine. Then. Jasmine walks in yes. right here. Okay. Sorry. Where do y'all go next? Uh, we went in front of Pump Society okay. and went across the street. So out here? Yes, sir. And then back over to this side? No, no, right there, that side. This side? Yep. Yeah. So over here by Rodeo Dallas? Dada. That's Dada right there. Yeah, that's where we was at. Dada right here? Yes. Okay. What do you guys do over there? Did we, you go into the establishment or hang out? No, no, no. They weren't open. We was just talking, and then a few minutes later, his baby mama came out. Chuck. Then they all walked on the side of Rodeo. At the time, it was with 10. So Jasmine and the people she's with go down this way? Yeah, and we saw them, yeah. And y'all are... Hanging out, just post up outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoking cigarette, talk. Okay. Um, any issues with Jasmine at that time? No, no, no. So, okay. And, um, but her people just walked on by. Yes. Okay, what happens next? Um, Chuck was like, man, look at that girl. It was a lady walking in front of Plump to like Brick and Bones. And then she came across the street and we both spoke to the lady and she went to Chuck. So she's on this other side of the street? Yeah, on this walking side across, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then she, so Chuck notices her, she's walking across that side. Yeah. And yeah. then you said she crosses back she over. She crossed the street and came down towards us. That girl was Maricela Batel. Correct. Oh, this is yes. the same night. Oh. So okay. Maricela's crossing the street. Chuck says, hey, that's a pretty girl. Yes. Some along those lines. Mm. Um, and then she comes over to you guys. Yes. Okay, what happens then? We both like, hey, how you doing? And she went to Chuck. Okay. Her and Chuck talked three to five minutes. Uh-huh. How was that conversation? I really wasn't paying attention, but they were giggling, you know, talking. Okay, so it seemed positive. Yes. You said you hear giggling. Yeah, yeah. Um, did it seem flirtatious between the two of them? Correct. Okay, and it was quick, you said. Three to five minutes. She walks over after you guys seen her pass, three to five minute talk. Yes. And body language wise, it seemed like they're both kind of flirting. Correct. Okay, what happens next? Chuck was like, I'm about to roll, huh? Cause that's what they call me because of my old head. Um, I'm finna go with her. I like cool. So they went between Brick and Bones and Punk Society, that uh, alley. That it's so, it's so yeah, far. right there. And Chuck was parked on Indiana Street. So we look here, ninety one. We got a little more real estate. So, so Indiana's back off. This back street over here? Uh, behind the trees area, like that part right there. So somewhere back there, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's in that parking lot that's just right there behind the trees and punk and on-premise? Yes, sir. Okay, and 
him and Maricela walk that way? Correct. Um, everything seemed fine? Seemed fine to me. That seemed something he'd seen Chuck do before? Yes. Okay. Um, and so he goes away. Do you think he's coming back at some point? Uh, nah, nah, nah. You, you assumed he was gone for the, the evening at this point? Yeah, it was out, it was like 1 o'clock, 1.15 or something. Any calls or texts from Chuck after that? That, that night? Uh, no, like I called him like, I was really trying to get a ride back home. Man. But he didn't answer, so I went back in punk society. Okay. Yeah. Did you hang out at punks for a little bit? Yeah, about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, and how'd you get back home? I walked on. You said it's a mile or so? Like a 12, 15 minute walk. Okay. And uh, you get stranded there. Your your friend that drove you here, <laughs> yeah. he take you back. He's off. Uh, he, he's now found a girl that he's going to take back to his car, and they're gone. Correct. You don't know where they go. Correct. Uh, and you didn't hear from Chuck again that evening. No, I didn't. When's the next time you saw Chuck? The next day. Okay. So. In here, it's five. Right, Sunday night you're out. Yeah. Chuck leaves with, and that's I guess going into the early hours of the the fifth uh, of October. You know, like you said, one a.m. or so, and him and Maricel are leaving. It's later hours later on the fifth, sometime in that morning. That yeah. You see Chuck. Where at? At your house? Yes. Okay. Like eleven or noon around that time. Okay. Um. So late morning or around noon. Correct. And. How was Chuck when you saw him? Normal, like regular Chuck. What did he say? Did you ask him about the yeah, girl? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, why was that girl last night? And he was like, he was nonchalant. I'm like, man, nothing really. Just got some head. Went to the store, got some mixers. Then got some head or whatever. Messed around. Just, just his words. And then um, he dropped her off because she wouldn't let him take her back to the hotel. And he just dropped off by like Baylor. Okay. So he says they had some kind of sexual in encounter yeah. with each other, that they bought mixers together, and yeah. that he couldn't go to her her hotel. Yeah, they missed around in the car. And they just dropped you off somewhere in that same day. Yeah, correct. Did anything seem, or did you press on that story, or did that seem like it would potentially be true based on what you were at the time? Yeah, it seemed like it'd be true. Okay. So you had no reason to question at that time? Correct. Okay. Uh, and then you guys hang out for a little while or? Yeah, a little bit that day. Okay. How long? I can't really recall, but I'm sure a few hours. Okay. Um, and I guess he eventually leaves. Do you know where he's going after that? Uh, no. Okay, did you hang out with him that evening? Maybe so. That, that evening, yeah, then the next day, the next day. The next day, the next day. So y'all hung out kind of this whole week here. You all, you all are hanging out? For the most part, yes. Either, where are you guys hanging out at? My crib, D-Bell, strip club, something. Okay. And when's the last time you see Chuck? I can't really recall, but um, I see him like every day until like... Um, Maricela pictures start coming up being a missing person. Do you remember when you started seeing her pictures come up? Not really. I can't recall. Okay. But I know at least a week, uh, eight days, nine, something like that. Somewhere up in there. Maybe. About a week you start seeing her pictures start really getting blasted. Yeah. Okay. And then I got phone calls about uh, detectives popping up their own premise and all that type of stuff. Asking about you. Um, did you talk to detectives? Yeah, I talked to several. Obviously, you were with Chuck whenever he sees Maricel and leaves with Maricel, so people wanted to talk to you and just see you in Yeah, correct. And you were cooperative, cooperative oh, with yeah. him? Yes. Okay. Um, much like you've been with, with Ms. Pittman and I, where we've, we've asked you um, multiple times about what's, you know, what you know about this. Yes. Okay. Um, and the FBI or detectives, that's kind of after you start hearing about the, uh, the news articles and her face getting kind of posted everywhere? Yes. Okay, so we're thinking maybe 
you know, this week of October or this week of October? Oops. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So maybe the week of the 12th, maybe the week of the 19th, somewhere in there you start getting... Yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, does the, the folks that work down in Deep Ellum or frequent, you know, your, your, your spots that you like to hang out, do they start to talk? Yeah, I start asking me questions, me and Freddie. Okay, so people are starting to wonder what's going on. Yeah, because who's with Chuck almost every day. Okay. And um, Chuck, he had that black album. Yes. Um, that week when you guys start hanging out again after the October 5th, does he change cars? Yes. Yes, for the most, yeah, yeah. What car did he start driving in? Um, the white SUV. Did you know whose white SUV that was? Lisa's. Okay. So he started to drive Lisa's at white SUV instead of the Audi. Had, had he always been driving the Audi before this? Once he'll switch up. Started. He'll switch up. He'll switch up cars. Okay. And um, so when's the last time you saw Chuck then after that? Uh, I don't know exactly the, the last time I've seen him, but when I seen the pictures and all that, I was like, man, that's that girl. And I called him. I was like, man, and then when they called me, the the chef at the time on premise called me and said they was looking for Chuck. Then I called Chuck to tell him, man, they coming through on premise looking for you about this girl. I was like, I ain't playing either, man. He was like, I know. I was like, man, I don't know what to do. What you going to do? I don't know what's going on. And I was like, I'll talk to you later. I never heard from him again. Did he give any explanation? No, 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 no. no. Um, so at that point, you're still thinking... He dropped her off somewhere and we don't know what happened. Correct. Um, and so you probably talked to Chuck sometime the week of the 12th, then it sounds like? Possibly, yeah. I know for sure we hung out that week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, yeah. So yeah. Chuck, was Chuck going harder than normal? Uh, Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Did y'all just spend a whole weekend? I know. Yeah, we had no time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then he leaves. Was was Chuck active on social media? Yeah. yeah. Before before all this, he was active on social media? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then when he leaves, what happens with his social media activity? Boom. Uh, he kept... I guess he died out for a minute on it. And then throughout the process of him missing, he was posting Old videos. Old oh, videos. Old videos. Videos. Yeah, have some videos he would post and would like from stuff he saved. Okay. Yeah. And he would he post it as though it was happening then. Though. Yeah, yeah, correct. Trying to throw off cops. And um, you would see that you saw those posts that he was posting. And, you knew and hear right. about it too. Like anything he did, I got phone calls every day. Um, and how would you know they were old videos? Were they stuff that you would have been there? Yeah, yeah, some of them I was there, and I remember the night and all that type of stuff. Okay. Yeah. Passwords. Cross contamination. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> sir, <coughs> okay, you said that uh, he was reposting stuff, and anything he would do. Uh, you kept getting phone calls because I'm gonna move on this side because I can't see you. Okay. Um, basically, that uh, people will contact you because you now you can't see. I got you. <laughs> switch with me. Switch with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Because uh, I mean, everybody knew that. I mean, Uncle Dak, right? That's what Chuck called you, right? Yeah. Well, I, I think Chuck, I mean, Charles Beltran, uh, Chuck 5050, right? That's what we talking about, right? Yes, sir. I mean, that's his rap name or that's what he had on his IG or uh, rap. You know what the 5050 was, right? To a degree, yes. Half amazing, half crazy, right? Oh, correct. All right. And um, we talk about Chuck, you know, the fact that he... Um, he liked women, right? Correct. Good to manipulate women, wasn't he? I don't know about that, but he was good with the ladies. Yes, sir. He was a womanizer, wasn't he? Hey, they loved him. Isn't that what he rapped about? I I, I never really listened to it. Come right on, now. Chuck, you heard... Dax, Dax. I mean, Dax, you yeah. heard uh, Picture Me This? 
Yeah. Yeah. That, just that part, because that's the only thing you can what, listen to. What was <laughs> SOS? What did SOS mean? SOS. Some on site or some. Straight on site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the song. Um, I think him and Freddie got together. Yeah. What about uh, Person of Interest? Do you ever hear Person of Interest? Person of Interest. I was trying to find yeah. that Person of Interest song. That's after this. Uh, he took it down, though. Valdez ended up missing, correct? Mm. Yes. Person of Interest. What was song called Person of Interest after all this popped off, right? That one I can't recall. Okay. Uh, but let's be clear. As far as your relationship with uh, Mr. Beltron or Chuck 5050, um, I think you indicated that you guys kind of worked together, right? Yes. And then that relationship kind of built to more of a friendship. Would you agree with that? Yes. Would you consider him a friend? Yes. Because right. he thought highly of you as well, right? Yes. All right. And as far as uh, Miss Lisa, um, all you guys are friendly with each other. Would you agree with that? Yes. All right. Uh, including her son Kyle. Yes. Right. Um, you've been over to the house. Yes. Right. Um, as far as what happened to this girl, you have no idea, do you? None. All you know is what what uh, Chuck told you, right? Correct. And do you remember talking to the police about what Chuck told you? Uh, I talked to several. Okay. Um, but you. <laughs> Hold on, what, give me one minute, Your Honor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, now, Coach, you have You may. You remember when uh, Marcella, I guess, uh, Initially walked by you guys, right? But she and at first she walked by y'all, didn't she? Across the street, yes. And at some point she actually came up to y'all, didn't she? Correct. Uh, and had a conversation with, with, with Chuck, right? Yes. And uh, was she talking to him about getting some weed? Uh, possible. Three years ago. Okay. Basically. Oh, she got. Two, one. Up there and delete it. Let me show you a photo. Uh, is this how Chuck was dressed that night when? Yes. Ms. Valdez came up and approached him. Yes. In fact, that's them, right? Yes. That's how they appeared back in October the, was it the 4th of 2020? Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Harris, if you could detail what picture that is. I'm, I'm, I just showed you uh, defense one. Thanks. And now I'm showing you defense three. And this is how uh, Chuck, you also called yourself Chuck Gorgeous, didn't you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but this is Chuck 5050, right? Chuck, yes. In fact, he got the 50 50 tattoo on his neck, don't he? I think so. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you about what you told the police you were called of um, Chuck and Marcel. So, at least what he told you. Yes. Uh, he specifically told you that he had sex with her in the car that night. You remember that? Something like that. It was either sex or something. Yeah. Okay. And uh, after that, he told you that he dropped her off at, at, at an unknown location, right? By Baylor or whatever. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's the last he saw her, right? Yes. All right. Now, let me ask you before this night, uh, Chuck with this girl. Uh, had he ever said anything about Miss Dykes being jealous of him with women? No, nah, no. Nah. Because everybody knows Chuck is a ladies' man, right? For the most part, yes. She knew Chuck was a ladies' man, didn't you? Yes. You saw his video. Did you ever see his video? Uh, 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 that the picture, picture of this? Yeah. It's actually at her house, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's right, bro. With some strippers, right? Yes. He's actually performing sex on the video, isn't yeah. he? 
Just if you remember. The stripper so, hoes. Yeah, they were yeah, the yeah, stripper yeah. hoes on the bitch. <laughs> yeah. But the shot, the fact that he was a womanizer who liked women, the stripper that hoes. was a shock to her, correct? Correct. And uh, again, I want to make sure I'm clear. You hung out with them almost every day, right? During yes, there was time period. Yeah, 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 yes, sir. Never said one thing about her being jealous of him taking women over to her house, right? Correct. Uh, mm. Because, well, well, let me ask you this. Uh, you know Carmen? Did you know Carmen? Yes. Yes. Now, that was another one of Chuck's girls, right? Yes. Now, Carmen didn't live with uh, Chuck and Lisa, did she? No. She was triple her? in another apartment, didn't you? Yes. Okay. But that was one of his girls. Yes. And of course, he had his baby mamas, right? Yes. And I say baby mamas because he had more than one baby mama, right? I think like two. Okay. Um, <coughs> I want to ask you specifically about this time period after, um, I guess, which would, I guess, be October the 5th. Uh, well, oh, oh, I want to make sure I ask you also. You said that y'all were out after the trip to Arkansas. That y'all were oh, y'all went back over to uh, Miss Dykes' home, and uh, you and Freddie had the Uber back downtown. Yes. About how much that that, that cost? Twenty some bucks, eighteen something like that. Okay, eighteen twenty dollars. Okay. Um, the trip to <coughs> Arkansas to. Perform at the rap show. Uh, are you sure that uh, Lisa was driving and not me? I'm pretty sure. Why? Lisa, because they were behind us. Okay. Then we stopped at a gas station. I met up too when we got gas and stuff. Okay. Um, but during that time period, you you knew that she had the surgery, right? Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, did you know that she was taking medication for the pain from the surgery? Just a few minutes. I'm sure, yeah. Uh, at some point, y'all get back and Chuck can't find his keys? Yes. All right. But eventually, he, he had to find the keys to the alley because he ended up back down in the belt, right? Correct. And I guess uh, earlier they were asking you about uh, Miss Dykes, I guess, uh, wanting to sue Freddie. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Y'all in club atmosphere, right? Yes. Women come down there trying to pick up men, don't they? Yes. Men come down there trying to pick up women, right? Yes. Older men pick up younger women? Yes. Right? Younger, older women pick up younger men, right? Yes. That's club life, right? Yes. You find, uh, I mean, Freddie didn't bite, right? Nah, nah. Okay. Uh, but Freddie is a nice looking guy, right? Decent dude. Decent looking dude. <laughs> I mean, he's not Uncle Dax, but. Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Pause. Okay, I'm Pause. sorry, Mr. Dax. I'm moving on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But again, as far as Chuck being a woman's man and, and, and trying to come on to women, uh, that was nothing unusual, right? Correct. All right. And that was no secret to, to Ms. Dykes, right? Correct. All right. Um, when you saw him on October the 5th, yeah. did he act as if anything unusual had happened? He acted normal, I mean. Did he ever say anything about uh, Miss Dykes or anything happening at uh, Miss Dykes' house? No. Did he give you any indication that anything had went crazy with uh, Miss Valdez? No.
y'all hung out for about a week, and then at some point he stopped answering his phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you call his sister, or did his sister call you concerned? Uh, I can't really remember, because I met his sister like a month or two before all this happened, but we did talk, yes. I met his sister. Okay. Um, and his phone going off happened after Mrs. Valdez's uh, picture started getting posted up down at Deep Elementary, right? Correct. But as far as you, someone he hung around with almost every day, he never said anything about um, any negative incident that would have happened with Ms. Valdez. Correct. In fact, he told you just the opposite, didn't he? He told me what he told me, yes. He told you he dropped her off. They had sex, he dropped her off. Yes. He never even told you he took her back to uh, Mesquite, did he? Correct. He was specific in where he had sex with her, wasn't he? Yes. In his car. Yes. That blackout. Yes. Not at the house of Mesquite, correct? Correct. You, somebody hanging around with every day, right? Yes. Any reason for him to lie to you? It shouldn't be, yeah, no. You don't know whether he was lying or not, do you? No. Hard to tell when he's lying, isn't it? Correct. And you say SOS is straight on site, right? That was a song, yes. Straight on site. That means straight on site. When I see you, it's, it's on, right? Hey, it could be SOS, to be everything, anything, man. I don't know. I'm not a rapper. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> but in the context, you heard the song straight on site? Yeah, right? I heard the song, yes. In the context that they're using straight on site, that means when I see you, it's on, correct? Correct. And from the rap song, I'm saying from the rap song, it's yes, correct. Yes. Song. Yeah. If you listen to the lyrics of their song, correct. Now, if this jury listens to the lyrics, they can form their own whatever opinion they want to, correct? Correct. But when you listen to it, straight on site means it's on when I see you, correct? Yes, correct. And do you remember any of the lyrics from the uh, Picture Me This? Man, was some... Women on my dickity dick. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm about to say it like smooth. Cartoons too. Smooth, yeah. Mm. Gangster rap stuff. Mm. I ain't gonna say that with gangster, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we have to listen to the song, man. Picture me rolling. Picture me this. Chuck. Chuck. Chucky. They're coming for you, Chuck. You're next. Did you know any of the lyrics from the uh, person of interest? Just if you do. Oh, uh, no. Okay. But you are certain that he told you somebody hanging around with almost every day that he had sex with her in the car. Yes. Never said nothing about having sex with her at the house. Correct. Now, you've been to their. Uh, uh, to that house on the street. Yes. Uh, did he have an altar out there? An uh, altar? Yeah. Just if you know, if you know what I mean. It's altar. Nah, I don't know nothing about that. Okay, so you don't know nothing about no type of altar or nothing like that? Correct. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I think the two women are more involved. Chuck messed up by not calling police woman? running. Yes. Okay. And again, even with uh, Nina, as far as murder, you never said anything about Nina being jealous of him, did you? With other women, did you? No. And as far as um, his want to be rapper career, <laughs> as you would, I guess, phrase it. Yeah. Uh, she was financing it, wasn't she? Yes. She bought him a studio, didn't she? Yes. And whether you believed in him, she did, didn't she? Yes. Or did that one, did Yes.
That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Good night, well, then we're going to go ahead and break for lunch. And it's lunch time. Uh, I expect you back in the uh, jury room no later than uh, one forty-five. We are at recess. All right. <laughs>saying uh lisa needs a refund get that woman her money back 
All right, I'm gonna head out, go pick up the baby. I will be back. I'll be back. I mean, I could leave a video playing for you guys from the playlist. I don't know. There's something playing in the background. So I'll be back before they get back. Um, killer couple. Hey, we got a mansion. Caught up in that mess. I don't think he saw it coming. I don't think that unfolded. Here, somebody said, wait, they got remarried? No. Um, no, we're not Lisa, remarried. Lisa was um, married. I'm okay with that. That's okay. crap. It's a, it wasn't a... a <clears throat> for my my privacy, my protection, um, you know, because I, I know so much and I was so close. To oh, this is my friend. That called in. Uh, I feel like I could repurpose some of these videos because I could drop this, her call, and then the other guy's call. I, I don't know. But I, I'll play it while I go. Let me see something. This would be a really interesting call. While I go. I apologize. I'm never that late. It still says going live. There we go. Um, I had some really major issues with Streamlabs. It's acting up i restart settings place um no and so i guess we'll just have to wing it so, so and her time is kind of limited too so and this is with regards to marcella botello the woman that went missing when she flew from seattle to texas the playlist is really good uh, i think like the last night there she meets this guy to go at a bar the guy take her so back, go to sleep in his bed knife and he wakes up and he gets up to run out evidence found at the house our, our track going towards where the body was found. And so that's why I was recommending if you guys haven't watched, watch the timeline video, or watch yesterday's live stream. And with this, we have to kind of straight get into it. So let me call, let me call her right here. Uh, and if you guys could hit like to it, I'd appreciate it. The trial starting soon for this case as well. Let me fix the volume too. Sorry about that. Hello. Hey, Jen. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? So this is a good call. This is going to give you some information about. Uh, this is going to give you some information about Lisa. This was like a really close friend. I think she's actually going to be a witness on the trial. I'll probably repurpose this. I'm almost like hesitant to repurpose stuff because it doesn't seem like there's much interest in this story, honestly. So it's like cover the trial, but maybe use the notifications for other stories when we have time. You know. I'll play this for you guys and I'll be back, okay? Thank you. Good. Thank you so much for uh waiting and being patient and thank you for coming on too. I appreciate that. Of course. So I wanted to talk to you about um Lisa Dykes and the history and um can you first start off with like how you know her, like the relationship? And I guess that's a long story too, but it it is it mm -hmm. is a it's a very long story <clears throat> and forgive me because I have I have headphones in one ear and my volume down on my computer and you in the other so forgive okay. me um, for that so also um, just I want to preface <clears throat> for my my privacy my protection um, you know because I I know so much and I was so close to this uh, knowing this person that I, I'm here in chat so I can read questions mel if mm -hmm. anyone has questions i'm more than happy to answer those i'm unfortunately not going to answer in chat um just because it has you know my name and stuff like that um so if anybody has any questions just feel free to jot them down or if you want to answer ask them yeah um, i am reading this and the, the way we're going to do it so so i don't want you to get lost because it's easy to get lost in the chat i, I do it too uh katrina is going to yeah. be capturing the the chats for us and so, like, okay. I, I want you to, like, take us through the story. And, like, I think towards the end, I'll start going through the questions with whatever time you have left. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so, I, um, I have known Lisa since um, 1998. And um, I, met, I met Lisa um, back in the day. And... Um, Lisa was actually married 
to my ex-husband. So we share the same ex-husband. Um, and <clears throat> at the time when I met her, um, I was I was a lot younger than I am now, obviously. Um, she was working as a paralegal um, in Florida, where I met her. Um, and my ex-husband had met Lisa by means of uh, he had a he had an accident. He needed an attorney. Um, went into a law firm, and she was the paralegal on his case for his attorney uh, that he that he was seeking help for. Right. Mm -hmm. So they immediately they became kind of friendly. Uh, they were friendly with each other and, and she had done a lot of work on his case. Um, so he spent a lot of time there. And, oh, and she's a, she was a paralegal at the time, right? She was a paralegal. Yeah. She's a paralegal. Um, and he goes there because he was injured. Of, yes. Cause he was injured. Um, and they, they spent a lot of time together just because of, you know, those type of personal injury cases. There's a lot of back and forth and communication, not so much with the attorney, but of course the paralegal. Um, so, so they became friends um, throughout that process of, of meeting and, and his case. Eventually, um, their friendship turned into kind of going out, going to the movies, having dinner, so on and so forth. Um, she does have three children. Um, they're obviously, all three of them are grown adults now. And they... Uh, they, they, they were, they were seeing each other for quite some time. Um, and they were married and they got married in 1999. Um, and I was friends with my ex-husband. Um, I was around for a lot of this marriage and before people start speculating or saying things, it wasn't a oh, you know, I stole him from her. Nothing like that. There was nothing weird. Um, we were just friends. There was nothing ever strange about it. Um, and throughout the process, my, you know, Lisa being born and raised in Kentucky, she was very conservative. Um, she was by birth Pentecostal, which was her religion. And that's kind of important. And I'll get into that a little later. Um, but she was, you know, a practicing Christian, so to speak, um, was raising her kids, uh, by herself, single mom. She was very conservative. Um, she was by birth Pentecostal, which was her religion. And that's kind of important. And I'll get into that a little later. Um, but she was, you know, a practicing Christian, so to speak. Um, was raising her kids uh, by herself, single mom. And she um, quickly kind of adapted to my ex-husband's religion. And when I say adapted is that my ex-husband is Middle Eastern um, and he's Muslim. And quickly after they were married, she kind of adapted to that religious lifestyle of wearing kind of the Middle Eastern garb, wearing a hijab on her head, which is a scarf on her head. Wow. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of like that. They kind of adapt it to, she kind of adapted to that lifestyle. And you were Very telling me too, that's what I was wondering, the subservient thing, because and we'll get into more later, but like whoever she was with, she would adapt to whatever they were into, right? Like, like Charles, for example, like she kind of, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if, if she was hanging around a particular crowd of people in this case, she was around a lot of his friends and Middle Eastern men and women. Um, she kind of adapted to that lifestyle, their culture, their food, their music, uh, the clothing that they wore. Right. So, so, so. So things of that nature. Um, so, and again, you know, that, that marriage, uh, in, that, in that marriage and seeing all of those things, she quickly went from being a very conservative Pentecostal woman to being now a fully 
covered Muslim woman. My ex-husband did not agree with that decision. Um, he actually didn't like it, and he was kind of frightened by it because, you know, why why would she do that? You know, I understand being married and being so, quote, you know, in love or whatever the case may have been. Um, she was also significantly older than him, um, when I, about 16 years older to be exact. Um, she never supported him. She was not the, you know, sugar mama type of thing. He was, you know, he had his own job, had his own thing. She had her own job. Um, they lived a normal lifestyle. Um, things were always a bit strange with her. And you would notice that, you know, if they would get into an argument or get into a fight, that headscarf would come off of her head, right? It was kind of, she adapted to all of these weird things. Um, when I met her, um, he had taken a job transfer and moved to another state. And um, I had gone out to said state to visit. And um, I, I, I had known her and we were hanging out and she had explained to me that she was asked me if I believed in witchcraft. Um, being in my twenties, I was like, you know what? No, you know, I was, I was raised a, a Catholic girl and grew up in the church and that's not really something I ever knew about, got into. I didn't have friends who had that. Um, but she was heavy, heavy, heavy into the witchcraft situation, mm. um, black magic, casting spells. Um, she had told me at one point that um, she would, she, she had one point in their marriage, you know, where things were getting kind of ugly. She had cooked food and actually put her, and forgive me if I can't say this, I don't know, say it, say it. Um, had put her menstrual blood in his food um, to kind of, you know, keep him forever. It was a little strange. Um, I talked to him about it. I told him and he was just like, you know, this is BS. She's full of it. She's, you know, that's just nothing. He never really saw it, um, but she always talked about it a lot. And it just got progressively weirder as time went on. Um, moving, do you, do you have questions so far? I'm trying, I don't want to make um, anything. No, that's okay. Um, so, okay. So, Lisa, she has kids, right? But this was not with yes. your ex, right? Um, no, 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 no. None of his children. Right. No, the only child that my ex has is my child that we have together. So, okay. And we're not talking about Bill because people are confused. We're not talking yeah. about Bill. We're just not putting his name out. No. Um, and so he had an injury. He went into this law office where she was working. That's how that came to be. They end up getting married. Um. This whole thing too, I don't know if you want to talk about, um, cause so they end up going to another state, right? Right. The whole moving right. thing. Yes. Um, so, and I can, I can kind of get into that too, if there's okay. questions about that. So he had transferred with his job and this is not Texas. Okay. Um, he had transferred with his job from Florida where we were currently living, um, to another state in the Northeast or Midwest, if you will. Um, and he was working there. Um, I wound up moving there and she was living there at the time they were separated. Right. And that's important to know because he and I, um, their marriage was just completely and utterly just trash. Um, a lot of arguing, a lot of money problems, a lot of things that she did. He just disagreed with, and we had moved, um, to the state. And again, just not disclosing for privacy and things. And this case is ongoing and active. So I have to be very specific and very careful with what I say. Um, so we were living in that state, um, he and I, and um, she wound up following him to that state even after they were separated. And we were just like, you know, what the hell? This lady's just uplifting, you know, uprooting her kids. And a lot of people are like, well, weren't her kids in school? No. And that's that's kind of important because she never sent her children to public schools. So she has three children. She has two boys and a girl and they were school age children and they were never permitted to go to public school. And she didn't even homeschool these children. She just kept them in the house. They were very secluded, very 
um, they were fostered at home. They were never allowed out. And that was when we were asking, you know, Lisa, why aren't you sending the kids to school? And that's because she said that she didn't want her ex-husbands because they were, she had two ex-husbands and she didn't want her ex-husbands to find these children because she took them from Kentucky when they were younger um, from their homes and moved them to Florida. And she didn't want anybody to know where she was basically. So what conspired back in Kentucky a long time ago before my time, who the hell knows, but I do know that her kids have never attended a public school in their life. Any, all three of them. Um, so we're living in the state and things are just going awry. Um, and they're, they're just crap. It's a crap shoot. Um, we wind up moving back to Florida for my ex-husband's job. At this time, I'm married to him. Um, and we moved back. And she already had moved back. Um, and at that time, she was working for the law firm Bogan Munz and Munz. Um, and I still, I still talked to her. It wasn't like an ugly, weird, tumultuous thing. Uh, we were still friendly with each other. And Bogan Munz and Munz, where she worked in Central Florida, is where she met Nina. And Nina was a, she was an attorney within the firm, and Lisa was a paralegal. And they became friends. Um, I've personally met Nina myself. Uh, I've been to lunch with Nina. I've been to lunch with Nina and Lisa. There was not ever, 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 ever a time that you could ever imagine either one of them were lesbians. Um, they were friends. That, that, that was basically it. Nina was married to Bill at the time. I do know that Nina and Bill's relationship was extremely tumultuous because Nina would just <clears throat> let Lisa know how bad the relationship was, how much she hated Bill. She wanted out of the marriage. Bill was protective, overprotective, was keeping her from her own money, his money, and it was there was a lot of issues. Um, so Nina and Lisa spent a lot of time together, and Nina traveled back and forth. Um, from her home in Pennsylvania to Florida. She was an attorney, like I said, so she traveled back and forth a lot. Um, so it was, and again, Lisa was still discussing the, the witchcraft situation. At this point, she's completely given up the Islamic religion. Now she's back to, you know, Lisa again, um, and conforming to, it's too hot in Florida. I can't wear this headscarf now. I'm taking it off. And then we went to uh, wearing like the, the pinnacle around her neck, you know, like the star, I think it's pinnacle, I think it's what it's called. Um, and that was kind of what she did for a long time. And that's who she was. And guys, just real quick, I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry, mm -hmm. real quick. People are thinking you, you were married to Bill or you got married to Bill. Bill okay. is Nina's, was, was Nina's husband that passed away. Now we're right. right now we're talking about Lisa's side. And so right. Lisa so was married this, to this, this guy. In regard to Lisa. Right. Yes. Right. So Lisa, Lisa Dyke was married to my ex-husband. So Lisa and I both have the same ex-husband and I have known Lisa for a very long time and have been around for a very long time to know what kind of person she is, her children. I know her children. I know her family. Um, so that's, I'm not talking about Bill. I know of right. Bill, which is Nina's husband, um, or which was Nina's husband, but I, I've never personally met Bill. Um, and, and just a, a quick question too, because I know, I mean, I, I had the notes from our other conversation. And so just the other thing too, um, I remember you had told me previously, like there was several times that Lisa had mentioned like wanting to have a three-way, even though you guys did it, but she had mentioned it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was something that um, I always used to tell my ex-husband, you know, like, I felt like her motto was, if you can't beat them, join them. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just something she was very strange with that. Um, again, very possessive, very subservient, very conformative to whatever, you know, situation she was in, surroundings of people. She was very conformative to that. Um, and that was something that 
you know, she had discussed for a long time. Obviously, that's never happened um, to clear that. That's never happened. Right. And she was kind of like, um, we'll, we'll leave out because we had our previous conversation, but she was in a way controlling him too with stuff. That's why I, I guess for a while she was able to kind of manipulate yeah. things. Um, yeah, she was. Yes, she was. Right. She very much was. So um, that, and I can't speak right. really right. on that too much. Mm-hmm. He was controlling in nature um, when it came to my ex-husband. And, and to preface that, like he and I, um, we're the very best of friends right now. Um, we, we have a daughter. We're parents. Um, we're local here in Texas. We live a mile don't from even, each other. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, don't give too much identifier. That's okay. Do. It's okay. I'm okay with that. That's okay. totally okay with that. That's something that people know, and that's, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess from here, Mel, it, it kind of goes a really weird situation. Um, I can bring it local and, and, you know, people know I live in Texas and that's fine. Um, but I will say that he eventually, my, my ex-husband um, was offered a specific job here in the area and he was offered to relocate here to Texas from Florida. And we did. Um, when we relocated here to Texas from Florida, my ex-husband's mom had become terminally ill. Um, and at that time, I was divorced from him. We divorced um, quite some time ago when my daughter was a baby. And we didn't divorce on the grounds of, you know, any other weird lease of things or anything, anybody involved. It was just, he traveled a lot. We were in two different places. And, you know, it was just, we were, it, I was tired. I was tired of being married. Um, so Lisa found her way eventually back here to Texas. And I had already lived here. Uh, my ex-husband and lived here. And she found her way back to Texas by means of contacting him after quite some time and was kind of like, you know, I know your mom is terminally ill and I can take a leave of absence from work and I can help you with her. And that was his weak spot. You know, his mom was his everything. And he was kind of, you know, me having a, a small child and, and being a stay-at-home mom. And then I went back to work eventually um, that was appealing to him because he traveled a lot with work. So, um, when that happened and it was kind of like, well, you know, just, you know, if she, if she's here, then she can help take care of mom. And I'm kind of like against better judgment. I mean, if it's going to help your mom, then I'm not against it per se. Um, but you know, you do what you got to do. So that's kind of how she whittled her way back here from Florida to Texas by means of that. Um, and what's really strange is that I know yesterday on your show, it's not strange, but you had someone here talking about where she lived out in Wilmer. Mm. Um, that mm. house is very relevant. She rented that home, just to clarify yesterday's conversation. Um, she was living in Wilmer. The, he we're, rented we're, that home. And we're talking about where Maricela's body was found, like right by there. Correct. Wilmer, right. Across the street. There right. is a, there is a like lot across the street, like a, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, it's like an open field type thing. Um, and it made me absolutely sick to my stomach when watching the news and hearing all of this unfold and hearing where they found that girl. I told my ex-husband, I'm like, oh my God, she lived right across the street from there. Obviously she knows that area. She lived there for a good four years. She rented that home. She is a rental home. She lived there with her three kids and her brother. Um, and coincidentally, that was where they found Maricela. Right. Um, so they, uh, my, my ex-husband's mom, had passed away, unfortunately. Um, and we kind of got into it, if you will. We, we kind of lost track of, of, I didn't want to be around her. It was, it got to the point where she was so different and so weird, Mel, and just not the same person I knew 20 years prior. You could tell that there was like a shift 
in who she was. Um, like she what? More manipulative. She was she was manipulating um, Dave's ultimatum. Her spirit was different, and you could tell her spirit was different. Um, and it was just it was awful. Um, so we kind of lost track and lost. We we, we hadn't spoken in, in quite some time. Um, I saw her. Uh, walking through the mall one day, um, and mind you, this very conservative Protestant woman who turned Muslim and then went back and switched, switched, switched. I saw her in the mall one day, and she was covered from like shoulder to wrist on both arms of, in tattoos. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, this I don't know where she crazy. gets tattoos, right? All over. Out of nowhere, right? That's what I'm thinking. Out of nowhere. And she was like, this is my boyfriend, Chuck. And that's when she was with uh, Charles Beltran. And, and this is what we're talking about, like the whole adapting thing. Like now she's done with the yeah, ex and the whole thing. Yeah. Now it's a new guy. Yeah. And she's getting tattoos and Chuck is younger and tattoos everywhere. Yeah. So it's, it's really, really ridiculous. It was really unreal because, I mean, this was a woman, you know, before and after photos. She, you know, had long or always her, had her hair cut and like a bob up to her shoulders, dressed conservatively. And she's half hanging out everywhere, tight everything. She's short and over, she was overweight at the time, um, covered in tattoos, has her nose pierced. And I'm like, what the hell? Her hair, her head is shaved and she's got hair longer on one side. It was just bizarre to me. And I'm thinking to myself, this is really, really weird. Um, so it, it, it was really strange. Um, and I had got surgery. Too, right? some, yeah, she did. She did have surgery, um, to which I found out later that Nina paid for. Um, but we can talk about that too, but I'm trying to follow as much as I can. There's just so much. Yeah. That, that photo you, you threw up there, that's like, that is even a little more on the conservative side of what she was when I saw her. I mean, she had piercings in her face. Mm. Um, her hair was much shorter than what it is here in this photo that you have. Um, so it was, it was a little strange. Um, and it just continued to get more bizarre. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of, she had given me a phone number to get my hair cut years ago when she, we, she had first moved here and we wound up having the same hairstylist and this hairstylist um, is a really good friend of mine. Is she um, okay with and, this too? Because I remember I, I spoke to her one yeah, time. She's, she was, okay. she's okay. Yeah. Okay. She's okay with that. Okay. Um, so the hairstylist is a friend of mine. Um, and I know for sure that when this, supposedly took place on this date with Maricela. Uh, the hairstylist was very freaked out because exactly a week later, Lisa showed up at the salon to have her hair cut. After, after the murder, after she went missing, after, she was murdered. Yes, yes. Um, so she had reached out, obviously, to uh, the hairstylist, had reached out to the authorities to let them know, like, you know, is this relevant? Because now this lady's on the run and she was in my chair seven days after this had happened. So it was, it was kind of strange. Um, but I had found out about all of this happening again. I had no contact with her. I wasn't friends with her. I didn't talk to her. Um, but I was sitting at home one day and saw the person of interest photo of Chuck flashed up on the news screen. And I'm like, that sound that looks like that looks like the guy that looks like Lisa's boyfriend. Mm. So I called the hairstylist friend of mine and I'm like, is this the same guy? She's like, no way, it can't be. So then we started investigating it, started investigating Chuck, and I'm like, this is the guy. Now at this time, Lisa had moved Chuck into her house. They had lived out in Mesquite where this um, murder had happened. Um, was living out there. Um, she had told Kat, the hairstylist that she was, you know, paying for everything for Chuck, the Audi that, you know, mm. was shipped up to New York state or whatever. She bought that car. Um, they were 
they were living together, they had a serious relationship, and it was nothing like that. There was never a serious relationship type vibe around this. It was always, she was paying all of his bills, she was giving him a place to stay, and she was facilitating all of that. And she always had a need to have somebody in her life. She longed to have a male figure living with her, being with her in her life all the time. Um, so it was kind of weird that, you know, Chuck was that person. And then watching the news and seeing the stuff, it started to unfold. And then I started to investigate and ask questions. And I was just sick, you know. Um, at that time, I had no means of communicating with her. I know she was working for another law firm um, here in town. And um, I had an email address for her and I emailed her like, where the hell are you? Do you know that people are looking for you? Right. Um, you know, I never got a response back, but it, it's just question away. Cause I'm, I'm, so, I'm nervous. I'm so no, you're good. So no, no, you're good. I'm and so it's, sorry. no, no, you're, com you're doing amazing. Don't worry. And, and this is like such a hard story to tell. I don't even know how to tell it myself because it's just all over the place. And it goes a it bunch is. of different directions. Um, and there's a couple of questions I have here from the chat. Um, but I, I wanted to sure. ask real quick too, because at, I remember one time too with the ex, your ex-husband, he had mentioned uh, to me on the phone a couple of times about this whole uh, the pact. What is it? The the ritual pact or the binding ritual that she was trying to do? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, that's good. That's yeah. good. Um, so she had once told me that um, my ex-husband, she kind of laughed it off like it was funny, right? Mm -hmm. um, but she had told me that she cut his hair, um, cut a lock of his hair in his sleep and cut a lock of her hair and like binded their hair together and lit it on fire and buried it in the backyard. Um, so, yeah, she was very... I cannot even tell you very, very, very heavy into this, very heavy into this, very heavy into this whole black magic, witchcraft, um, Santa Muerte always has been, um, you know, it was something that she, she's always done for as, as long as I've known other than in the very beginning when, you know, she was this Protestant proper conservative person. Okay. Let me get um, some of the questions here. So we already answered this. So her ex was still, is still friends or you guys are still like best friends, right? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are. Okay. Um, let's see here. Somebody said, wait, they got remarried. No. Um, no, we're not. Lisa, remarried. Um, Lisa was married to your ex first and then you yes. got married to him. Um, okay. There, Joe asking here, please tell us when did you meet Nina for the first time? That was earlier. Um, let me think back. I'm trying to remember the exact, let me think about, I don't have an exact date. Um, years, it probably was, let's see, 99, three, four. Um, I want to say it was in 2006, if I'm correct. Um, it's whenever Lisa was working for Bogan Munns and Munns um, in Central Florida. That's okay. when I met Nina for the first time. And so do you know, so these people, oh, the other thing too, um, and I don't know if you want to talk about it or not or we'll leave it alone. It's kind of like, I don't know, that, that whole thing with Lisa's brother, Jimmy. Oh, boy. Okay. I don't know if you want to touch on that or not. Um, yeah, um, I, I guess it's just more weirdness to the family. It's just weird. Um, it's just a, it's just, they're just a weird yeah. group. Um, I can, that's, that's okay. Um, so this is going to be hard to follow, but I'll, I'll, I'll if y'all can try and, and understand this. Mm -hmm. So Lisa has an older brother. And Lisa's older brother 
is the spouse or they can't legally get married, but Lisa's older brother is the boyfriend of Lisa's youngest daughter. So Lisa's youngest daughter has been dating her uncle since she was probably 14 years old. And I will tell you that the age gap between the two of those is like almost 30 years. So there's that. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I was researching and we were talking, it's at that same address. We're not going to say the address, but the same address that they use for the LLC, I think the empire thing. I thought that was one of the addresses. In uh, Davenport. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. In Davenport, mm -hmm. um, where they currently reside, mm -hmm. they, um, they do live together. So Lisa's oldest son yeah. and Lisa's brother and Lisa's youngest daughter all live in central Florida. Lisa also has a middle son named Kyle and Kyle lives here in Texas. He lives in Dallas. Yeah. And, and the way Lisa met Charles, AKA Chuck was through Kyle. Through I thought, Kyle. Right? right. Because yeah, because Kyle, Kyle was a bartender at um, on premise, which is a bar in deep Ellum. And they had met, because Kyle was actually friends with Chuck and Chuck was supposedly a bouncer at this bar at on premise. So Chuck and Kyle were friends first. And I will tell you that uh, Kyle and Kyle hated that. Um, he hated the fact that, I mean, imagine your mom is dating one of your friends and y'all are both the same age and your mom is how old? But your mom is running around saying that she's having a relationship, not only with a coworker, but one of your friends that, you know, 20 some years, 30 years younger, older, give or take. Okay. So that's that. And somebody was asking too, it says, I thought right after the murders that yesterday, it was said all three of them quit their jobs and moved away ASAP. Well, they actually were there for, because uh, she's talking about a, a week later, she was still there a week later. It wasn't immediately, right? Or, or how, how did that work? Right after the murder. I don't think it was. Um, the t as far as the timeline's concerned, um, I don't know. After it had happened, the from the timeline of the things and the documents that I had read, when was it? It was October, right, Mel? Right. So Maricel was last seen alive October 5th, 2020. Uh, and then they, they weren't arrested for a while. So like uh, that right. was in October 2020 and December 2020, right. they finally recovered the vehicle from New York in March 2021. That's when uh, Marcella's body was found. And then March 25th, Nina was arrested. March 27th, Lisa was arrested. And then April 2nd, Charles was arrested. Uh, they right. announced him as a person of interest. I forgot. It wasn't immediately. It was a little bit after. So they, they could have been there for a little bit, but I, I don't think it was for a lot that long, really. Right. So it, it, after she had, and we didn't obviously know um, this hairstylist, we didn't know anything was happening or, or that Lisa or Chuck or anybody had any involvement. We just knew that once the news had announced that this person of interest was Charles Beltran and that photo flashed up on the news, that's when my friend who's our hairstylist had said, oh my God, like, Lisa was just in my chair, like, you know, and then once after everything had come out, she was like, that was literally a week after this girl went missing. Lisa was in my chair and came to the salon, like nothing ever happened. And I was like, well, was she dressed different? I mean, was she wearing something because like, what was, what was her demeanor? And she said she was normal. She acted completely normal. And that's really what makes you know, my friend right now who is, you know, my hairstylist still, she's so traumatized by this because she's like, you know, I cut her hair after this happened. And she had a conversation with me. She was in my chair. I bleached her hair. Like nothing happened. Nothing happened. Right. That's, that's how she acted as if nothing was wrong. Um, it was until after all of the timeline of events is where we kind of put two and two together. And she's like, this lady was definitely in my chair after this happened. Um, so they weren't arrested immediately. It was kind of 
the person of interest thing came out first and then um, subsequently they were arrested thereafter. Okay. And there's a couple of things um, I want to ask, but people, for people in the, in the chat asking who are the people on the screen, this is Charles, this is Lisa, this is Nina. And I really recommend if this is your first time hearing about this story to check out, there's a timeline video that I made. There's also a video yesterday that we did three hours. I put timestamps. You should check that out. We, we, I might have to make a character map because some people are saying like maybe like a, a tree with all the pictures and names, maybe that would help out. Um, and this case is going to trial. They, they screwed up big time because the DA de or the detective did not give all the evidence. I don't know how many hundreds of pieces or whatever they found out this week. And so now they're having a discovery on the 30th. They pushed everything back again. Um, and then the other question in the chat here, uh, Flossie says if Lisa and Nina were married, where did Belchan fit into that relationship? What was his role in the okay. dynamic? Um, so from my understanding, here's kind of how that unfolded. So supposedly Chuck was living with Lisa by himself in the beginning of this whole mess, right? So mm -hmm. Lisa was running around telling everybody that she was in this relationship with Chuck even coworkers and people at her job, the law firm she worked for, she told people that, you know, this guy was her boyfriend. He was some rapper. You know, she was having parties at this house and drinking and doing drugs and all the stuff that they did. Um, Nina and Lisa were very close and they were best friends. Where Nina popped in and came in to all of this, I'm unsure. I don't know because, you know, as far I mean, as Charles, because because Nina and Lisa right. knew each other way before Charles. Charles came in after, Correct. right? Right. Correct. Charles came in after. Yes, Charles came in after. Um, but Lisa and Nina were friends for a very, very long time. And you know, Lisa started seeing Charles. Charles moved into the house. Then shortly thereafter, then comes Nina, and now the three of them are supposedly um, Nina. From what I heard, was intimate with Chuck. Uh, Chuck was intimate with Lisa. Lisa and Nina were intimate with Chuck together. And it was kind of like that. I mean, that's, right. that's how it is. And again, I'm reading some of the comments in the chat. Lisa never gave the impression. Lisa was never interested. Lisa would never um, have a lesbian relationship with another woman and solely another woman. So that's completely out of character for her to do that. She's always mm. been that subservient wife that always craved a man's attention. Um, and that's kind of how that unfolded. I did forget to mention that it was news to me that Lisa and Nina were married. I had no idea because I was not involved with Lisa. Um, I found out that Lisa and Nina were married because our hairstylist actually did Lisa's hair for their wedding ceremony that supposedly happened in the backyard where Maricela was supposedly killed. Um, so that house in Mesquite that all of that happened, supposedly they had a wedding ceremony in their backyard with Lisa and Nina and my hairstylist friend did Lisa's hair for that ceremony. And she called me and she's like, girl, do you know that I just, you know, I did Lisa's hair because she's getting married to, to Nina. I'm like, what? What the hell is that? Because as far as I heard, you know, Lisa and Chuck were in a relationship. Now all of a sudden, Lisa's marrying Nina. So it was kind of strange. Um, it was very strange. Um, there was a, um, also, I want to just put out Mel before any other questions. Um, yeah. There is a couple of groups that are online on Facebook um, about yeah. Maricela. And, you know, being this close as far as knowing this woman for so long, honest to God, I am sick over that. And just knowing that this woman has held my child, um, I'm a mom first and foremost, I can't imagine, I couldn't imagine what I would feel like losing my, my one and only daughter. Um, and I want to see that justice be served. I want our state to serve those, those people, those three, the justice that is coming to them. Um, and I've tried really hard to be a strong advocate for that. 
but it's at the same time. All right. Uh, so what's up, guys? I'm back. Give me one second here. I want to um, cut this video so I can post it later. And then, uh, so the plan for today is we're going to do this stream. I think it's probably going to run until 6 p.m. Eastern, I think, around then, unless they cut off early. Um, then I'm going to post this conversation because it's really relative to the trial, even though this trial doesn't have a large, large interest, apparently. Um, let me see. And then tonight I'm going to work on the cease and desist video. I think I'm going to just record a whole new video and give context and explain things my own way and then post that probably tomorrow. Cause I don't think I'll have, I'm not sure. I have to check how many notifications I have. Uh, let me just see where this starts here real quick. Call late. It still says going live. There we go. Um, I had some really major issues with Streamlabs. Let's get that. It took forever. To I can't even multi stream. Is YouTube unfortunately. So, um, I'm just going to share the link out on Facebook. I have somebody that I want to call. There we go. Boom, boom. I have somebody that I want to call that knows a lot of information with regards to relationship. Like I said, I'll, I'll start later real quick. All right. Okay. That this this video was actually a really good video because not only did I talk to Lisa's best friend, I spoke with Jonathan, which is one of Charles's friends. So, uh yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to chop it up. Somebody said, what time did they come back from lunch? They said 2.45. The feed already popped up in the back. Hasn't started yet, though. Well, 2.45 Eastern, I mean.
Damn, we talked for a long time. My audio was cutting out. You're cutting out with your audio. Should be, it's okay now. Okay. All right. Okay, so I chopped that up. Amazing. All right, we're about to get started. I was just doing some fine tune editing so I can post this later. Um, You might have been hearing the audio coming from my headphones as I was uh, editing this video, but I muted, I muted it so you guys don't have to hear me editing back and forth. What time do they return? They return in about 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to render this video. Let it render. And then I'll, oh, shoot. Yeah, render. Let it do its thing. <coughs> They'll be back shortly. Um, let me see here. Tamster, thank you for the five months. Appreciate that. Kaylee or Kayla, thank you for the five memberships. Appreciate that. Victor Cornell, thank you for the uh, membership. Midnight Lazarus, thank you for the three months. Thanks for the gift memberships, y'all. Amazing. Um, some of y'all noticed too, like uh, there's ads sometimes in the middle of the live stream. Uh, I have to do that and enable ads midstream because honestly, these videos earn like nothing. Like they literally earn. Twenty dollars, if if even that. Um, so turn on the ads, and I don't really know that it makes too much of a difference, but I guess every little bit counts. And then, especially if we're sitting here for eight hours, I have to do something at least to try to supplement it. You know. Uh, oh, and I and I reached out to somebody because I want to get that person of interest song. He used to have it up. He posted it while Maricela was like missing, and he was on the run. And uh, oh. 
I have that song somewhere in my files, but someone in the group told me you can find it on YouTube. I can. I think he took it down. I might have talked about it in one of my videos too. Person of interest. Don't you worry, child. Chuck clubbing. Chuck at the club. Stella Botello. They're coming back. No, I can't find it. He managed to scrub it. Hey, back machine. I wonder if I put in his channel name here, if I can find it.
Uh, they're coming back from lunch bake. They're just waiting. A couple more minutes. Uh, four more. Four more minutes, I think. Just doing some research. No luck finding that video. Hmm. Well, we'll see if this person has it. She says she had it saved in her file. Probable cause. What's a good beginner cam to start doing vlogs with? Well, the easiest thing to do is if you have a nice or a decent phone, you can start recording off of that. Uh, that's the probably the easiest because they record pretty good quality. Then, uh, I mean, my favorite camera is the Sony ZV-1. Uh, but they actually came out with the ZV-2. But if you want to get something a little bit cheaper, you could probably go with the ZV-1. That's actually what I'm doing this uh, stream on is I ha have it connected to the computer ZV1 it's 649 it's it's uh cheaper than when I bought it but they got the ZV2 that's out they also have something called ZF ZV1F it's like a little cheaper version $400 So I wonder what we're coming back to. Uh, did the are they done with the witness? What was his name? Uncle something? Oh, they're gonna do redirect. And I wonder who else are we getting today? Let me upload this other video. Oh,
Daz, yeah, Daz. Daz. Yeah, you guys can use the block function if you need to. Or, uh, if you don't want to see the Streamlabs bot, you can block the bot too. You don't have to see the game going on anymore. back we're back oh, let me unmute it oh yes it's ready all right so you are still under oath okay yes you get her There was some talk about uh, Chuck's rap lyrics side on side, so the things he rap about. Is that Chuck? You see that person? You see this person that's violent, aggressive? No, sir. <clears throat> um, clearly, he's rapping about it, but I'm just saying, in your interactions with him, I mean, how do you describe the kind of person Chuck is? It was a <clears throat> nice dude, respectful, and a ladies' man. That's it. And, uh, and and as far as talking about his relationship with Lisa Nina, would he? Have, it sounds like you said that you guys didn't want really to talk about that. Correct. Um, so you wouldn't have been being told anything about what's going on with Lisa jealousy or anything like that. Like that's just not something y'all would have ever talked about. Correct. I'll pass it on. If he felt Lisa was jealous, he would have told you. You were his boy, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Yes, sir. All right, and uh, all this uh, Chuck the nice guy, did you know that Chuck was a felon? I knew he went to prison. I don't know what for or nothing like that. So you didn't know he went to prison for aggravated robbery? No, sir. That sound like a nice guy to you? No, sir. And again, when you talk about 50-50, <laughs> this nice guy self-proclaims himself as half amazing, half crazy, doesn't he? <laughs> In lyrics, yes. In lyrics? In life! It's tattooed on his neck! 50 50, half amazing, half crazy. Get him! This nice guy. Right? I didn't see the tattoos on his neck, so I don't know. But you know what? Well, are you familiar with what you said earlier? You, you saw his uh, social media page. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On his social media page, it says <clears throat> Chuck 50 50, does it? Yes, it does. We're gonna play around no more. Dude, that's you trying hard. And did you know, as far as you know, he had a baby mama in, in Austin, right? Yes. And, but he couldn't see his kids because he assaulted her, correct? No idea. Ooh, ooh, that's dirty. Mm, mm. But you did know he went to prison, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think you told the members of the jury you didn't know nothing about uh, this Santa Morta, right? Correct. I am having an altar at uh, there at Miss Dykes' house. Correct. That's all I have, Judge. Nothing for the state, Your Honor. All right, may this witness be finally excused? No objection. No objection, Your Honor. All right, sir, you're free to leave and go about your business. Please watch yourself. Call your next witness. The state would call Frederick Chapman, Your Honor. That sounds familiar. I don't know why. Frederick Chapman. I tell you, that's enough. Just fit the fit. You don't fit the means. Fit the fit. Half base, half crazy. Said that line like the entire trial. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out? I do. 
Thank you. Please have a seat. Move this stand. Watch your step. That's my turn. All right. Can you get her seat? Now, first, grab some. Oh, yeah. Sorry. How dare you? Put on the table. Uh, if you could hand him a Kleenex, just around, thank you so much. That's all right, I'm a dumb chewer as well. So I'm not <laughs> So another pimp takes a stand. <laughs> completely finished with his question and then answer because Mrs. Garza is taking down the record and all the testimony. Okay, got it. Thank you, sir. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. So, uh, you said now you're doing some of the promoting and, and entrepreneur. Yes. Okay. Um, you also do music, make music? Yes. Okay. You rap? Yeah, I rap and write music as well. Okay. How long have you been doing that? Pretty much out of my life. I would say took it serious maybe around 19. Okay. Off and on. And you've reported songs and put Yes. Yes. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more too, but uh, let's talk about uh, Deep Elm. You're familiar with the area in your house? Yes. Okay. Do you go off in that area sometimes? Uh, a lot, yes. That's your typical hangout spot? Definitely. Okay. Um, uh, the establishment on premise here in States 88. Yes. Okay. Is that a place that you frequented quite a bit? Yes. Okay. Uh, tell me a little bit about on premise. Um, well, it was Dak Steven. He was the head of security at the time that all of this was going on. But on premise, it's good vibes, mixed crowd, nice music. Sometimes they have food. And um, you talked about Dax, he was working security. So when did you start going to uh, on premise? Is that how you met Dax? I met Dax at another club um, at Punk Society that's in Deep Bottom as well. Which is just a couple. Few blocks. Well, right. few businesses down there. Yeah. Right. And uh, so you met him at Punk's and, um, and then start hanging out with him. He's working at on premise. Yeah, that's what he told me. He told me to come by there. Came by on premise, and yeah, that's kind of where the friendship built up. We had a mutual friend as well. Were you already working at Manor House at the time? Yes, I was. That, that's where he was living, is that right? Not at that time. This was many years ago before he, before I started going on premise and he moved in. Okay. Eventually, you were working at uh, Manor House, living there, and so he was living there as well, right? Yeah, he was on the uh, 17th. Uh, but y'all had your own apartment. Yeah, we lived separately. Um, just and so uh, you met Dax. You start uh, going on premise. Did you ever get a chance to meet um, Kyle Williams? Yes. Okay. Who was he? That is, he was the GM at the time, which is Lisa's son. Okay. And then so did you meet uh, her mom or his mom, Lisa? Yeah, I met her. Just she was basically popping in and popping out over there. Um, and so would you see her there at on premise? Occasionally. Did you ever talk to her? Yeah, spoke with her. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, how'd you meet Charles Beltran or Chuck? So being that I would go to the clubs so often, he was doing security, kind of running to him, speak. Um, him and Dax had a real friendship at the time, so that's kind of how the friendship began. Okay. 
Um, and was Chuck was into, into music as well. He was into rapping. Yeah, he was into music, dressing, women, you know, same thing that I was into. Okay. And uh, you guys eventually recorded together, is that right? Yeah, we did a song together. And um, I want to back up a little bit to the times you've met Lisa. Was there a, there was a time that you saw her at a Halloween party? Yeah, so uh, Dex gave me a call and told me to, um, yo, man, come up to on premise. Lisa, she asking about you. She want to see you. And I was like, what? All right, cool. So I pulled up to on premise. Went in. He told me. On, your point on premise was on premise open to the public? No, it was a private party. Okay, and whose private party was it? Yeah, that she had rented out, I guess, for her business, her company rented it out or something. But yeah, it was a Halloween party. So I go in, go to the bar, talk to Lisa. She kind of flirted with me heavily. Huh? But she oh. always was kind of flirtatious a little bit. That's kind of her general. Yeah, her energy is pretty strong. Okay. Hmm. And, uh, hell no. How'd that, how'd that interaction go while, you, while she's kind of flirting with you? Well, her face was painted kind of like a skeleton a little bit, I guess, with the costume she had on. So I was kind of taken back a little bit. I oh, guess just the, the energy, I don't know, was kind of yeah. off for me. Just kind of off? Yeah, it was kind of off for me. Um, and was she trying to have you hang out some other time? Yeah, she kind of told me um, like a proposition, like, you know, anything you want, I can make happen. I see your vision, those type of things. Yeah. Oh, trying to sugar mom another guy. Um, and you played it cool or shut her down right then? I just played it cool. I didn't take her up on the offer. I'm kind of like, yeah, we'll talk, but... Never followed up on it. Nah, I didn't follow up on it. Okay. So then, uh, how do you find out uh, about Lisa and, and Chuck? Well, I guess like a few weeks later, that's when um, they was in the parking lot of the building. Of Manor House. Of Manor House, yeah. Okay. And um, I stepped out. He was talking with Dax. Dax was talking with Lisa as well. Nina was there. That was my first time meeting Nina. And... Um, Chuck had a black Audi, and that's when Dax was like, oh, that's supposed to be your Audi. I'm like, what do you mean? And he was like, that's Chuck new Audi, he was Lisa. And that's why I was like, oh, okay. That's kind of how I found it. I was like, I guess he took the offer. Yeah. And how was uh, Chuck with Lisa and Nina? Um, that day is, which normally is kind of casual. Like, they in public, they don't really act like they're together. But on that day, I seen them kiss Nina and Lisa, so I was like, oh, okay. Oh, they got to like kiss swing, baby. In front of yeah, you and in front of Dax, yeah. Um, but that was out of the norm in terms of public displays of affection. Correct. Um, and did you and uh, would you and Chuck talk? Would he talk to you about uh, his relationship with Lisa and Nina? Not really. Okay. Really wasn't a conversation. It really never was like a conversation. Like yeah, I'm doing this and doing that. It's kind of was unspoken. Like we all knew. Okay, and what, what did you all know? What was that relationship to you that you could see? That it was kind of like the uh, young boy or the woman, she had money, taking care of him. The sugar mama aspect. Yeah. Okay, so no, the sugar mama aspect of the relationship. Right. Um, and um, he had, uh, Chuck had rap equipment, like the studio in his, uh, the house that he shared with uh, Lisa. Yes, in one bedroom, it was like a painted, basically like oh. a whole studio set up. Oh, painted frozen. wall, laptop. Yeah, I recorded that. Okay. So what all was in there again? Uh, laptop, speakers, <coughs> microphone, basically like a studio set up, kind of like a lounge area, not a bedroom or nothing like that. Pretty much like made like a studio room. And in like the closet, did it have the actual soundproofing kind of fabric to go in there? Yeah, it did. Okay. Um, so, I mean, it was totally transition to allow you or Chuck and whoever was going to come record with him to record songs. Yes. Um, and in that house, uh, did Chuck have his own bedroom separate from Lisa? Yeah, I don't know. I know that he had multiple bedrooms, so. oh, yeah, but so I will say it did look kind of, the whole place kind of looked like a bachelor pad, pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, and then ultimately, uh, in October, if we you start talking about October of 2020. You, um, my understanding is you took a trip with uh, Chuck that first week in October, is that right? Correct. Um, you guys go to Arkansas. Was it on? The, it was on this Friday, October 2nd, 2020. 
<laughs> he's thinking he could have the audio. Yeah, it was Friday because the show was on Saturday and we came back Sunday. Yes, okay, so well, you guys take off on a Friday and you're going to Camden, Arkansas, is that right? Yes. What's the plan when you get there? You got a show. What's the, the plan for the show? Uh, we got a show with an artist, well, no artist, so we just going to, um, I guess when we first went there, we checked out the club, talked to the um, owner, and um, just checked out the space, seeing what we picked the section where we'll be at, and uh, yeah, it's kind of... Who all went on this trip? It was me, Dax, Chuck, of course, uh, Jordan, and Brian, and also Lisa and Nina. Okay. Uh, how'd you all get there? We was in a sprinter van and they followed behind us. They being who? Lisa and Nina. They drove together. They drove separately? Yes. And you recall who was driving their car? I want to say Lisa, but I can't really confirm who was really driving. How long was that drive? I think it's like four to five hours. And um, y'all get there on Friday night, show Saturday. Is Lisa coming around with you guys, kind of where you're going? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Uh, you guys go to the show that that it's in the evening, I would imagine. It was on um, Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night. And how the show go? Uh, the show went pretty well. I think um, Chuck' performance wasn't that good in the beginning. Maybe he was nervous, you know, um, didn't really practice, I guess, or something. And then our song came on. The crowd kind of reacted. He got into it a little more. And. He performed one song, kind of solo, and then the two of you performed a song together. Right. And that was it. So basically, two songs set for Chuck, one song set for you. Yeah. Uh, and then there's a headline act that was going to perform after you guys. Correct. Okay. Um, and while you guys are out that evening uh, for the Strap concert, Lisa Dykes was there with you? You mean out and about or? At the club. At the club, the yeah, she was there. Was she drinking that night? I can't recall. I can't recall. Um, were you drinking that night? Um, I had a few drinks. So. Nothing crazy though? Nothing crazy. Okay. Just a social drink every now and then. And after the show, where you guys go? Uh, we went back to the hotel. I kind of just chill, hung out. And uh, that was it. I think one of Dak's friends pulled up on us. We talked to him for a little bit. And yeah. And where were you guys staying? You had a hotel? Yeah, we was at a hotel. How many rooms? Uh, so it was two rooms, and then they had a suite that was downstairs for Lisa and Nina. So Lisa and Nina had their own suite, and then mm -hmm. you and the guys got yeah. two rooms to split. Two rooms, correct. Okay. Um, where was Chuck supposed to stay? Um, that, it really wasn't, I don't guess it wasn't really mentioned where he was staying. Where was Chuck hanging out that night? Um, he was hanging with us. Then he did go to the room with Lisa and Nina, and he did come how, back. How did that come about, him going to the room with Lisa and Nina? So we was outside talking, just casual conversation, and um, Nina, she walked up. She had the, <clears throat> excuse me, she had the door key with like a note on it, and she gave it to Chuck. And uh, of course, me and Dex, we kind of cracked jokes like, yeah, go pay for the trip, man. <laughs> Something <laughs> to that nature. <laughs> So that was the understanding it was Chuck needed to go. Yeah, go pay your debt, basically, kind of how we joked around. Because the, the trip was funded by Lisa. <laughs> Correct. Um, that next day, that Sunday, October 4th, y'all drove back? Yes, we drove back. Um, <clears throat> and where did you go? You went to the Mesquite house? Uh, where? Lisa yeah, we got to uh, Lisa them house and um, got our bags. Dax and Chuck was saying, hey, man, we want to be bubbling to celebrate. And I'm like, man, I need to go home, go to sleep. I'm finna go home and go to sleep. I'm not hanging with y'all tonight. Is that what you did? That's exactly what I did. Yeah. Okay, so you went home, you go to sleep. Mm -hmm. You're aware that Chuck and Dax go out, though? I didn't know, like, they didn't call me, like, hey, we going out, but that was their plans, yeah. So you knew that was going to be the plan, but you are like, I'm not. I'm not yeah, I'm going to sleep. sleep. Yeah, I went to sleep. Uh, when's the next time you see Chuck? It was the next day. I actually was working, and he, um, I guess him and Dax was probably already hanging out. And uh, I stepped outside, talked to him, and Dax was like, yo, guess where he met a girl from? And I was like, from where? And he said Seattle. And then I was like, oh, okay. And the reason why he brought that up is because he had an ex-girl from Seattle. Okay. Mm. And so you guys talked about the fact that he met a girl from Seattle the night before? Yes. 
Did you guys talk about what he did with that girl? Well, I asked him. I said, yes, what y'all do? You take her to the hotel? Because being that she was out of town, I was thinking that maybe he would take her to the hotel. And he just said, oh, no, nah, we just messed around in the car, got some mixes, and I dropped off in Deep Ellum. So he told you he dropped her off in Deep Ellum. Right. Okay. Um, and that's the end of that conversation? Yeah, that was it. That was, was that in the norm for, for what you knew, Chuck? Uh, the meet a girl, yeah. For him to find some girl out about in Deep Ellum and... To go have some kind of relationship and be, you know, move on. I wouldn't say that it's like the norm, like it happened every day, but, you know, you meet people. Just not out of character. It's, it's not out of character, yes. So there was nothing to press on about that. It was, uh, okay. No, it wasn't like a celebration moment, like, you go, or nothing like that. No. And um, did y'all hang out that day, or was that just kind of a quick passing while you're at work? Uh, we hung out, well, when I got off of work, we all kind of hung out. I think we hung out every single day, I think, that week, yeah, for how maybe was, four days. How was that going? Uh, that? Just a lot of partying, going out, stuff like that, yeah. And Chuck drove the Audi, is that right, the black Audi? Right, too. Prior to all this? Yeah, he would switch cars here and there. And he also switched cars with other people. Okay, and that week of October... Fifth, did he switch cars to the to another car? Yeah, the white SUV. Um, do you see Chuck again? So, sometime that week, when's the last time you see him? You remember? I can't recall, so but I know it was the end of the week. End of the week, because that Friday is when the um, I think it was like a a video or picture image had popped up of him saying that um, missing girl from Seattle with. A guy that was in a black Audi. Okay. So sometime around this Saturday, Sunday, that weekend after the fact, you're saying that you start to hear that girl from Seattle is missing. Well, actually, before that, I would say, um, so like Monday was be the day that he kind of came over. We kicked it Monday, okay. Tuesday. I would say Wednesday is the first time I actually hear about the girl. It's because, um, so... Being that I worked in a building, the FBI was on the same floor that Dax lived on. And so I called Dax like, yo, when I got to work, I found out. So I called him like, yo, did you hear the FBI on your floor? And Dax, he were real panicky. Like, so he like, what? Oh, wait, hold on. Let me send you something. I'm like, okay, cool. So he sent me the flyer that said a uh, missing girl from Seattle. And I was like, nah, which it instantly registered with me because he just said he was with a girl from Seattle. So I messaged Chuck on uh, Snapchat and was like, yo. And he was like, who is this? And I'm saying, missing girl from Seattle. And he like, what dates? And I'm like, bro, dates you was with a girl from Seattle. And he was like, nah, that's not her. And that but, was the end of that conversation? Yeah, because I'm not from there. If right. I'm on the phone so, with Dax and he's telling me that I, um, I wasn't going. I'm sorry, what? Sorry. Yes, that was the end of the conversation because I didn't want to keep questioning him when someone told me that was the girl. And... Um, was that your last conversation with Chuck? That yes, it was. Yeah. So if you hung out kind of that entire week, that conversation may have happened then after that Friday. I want to say yeah, something like that. Okay. Um, and uh, y'all never talk again. In fact, police eventually come and try and talk to you as well. They do talk to you. Yeah, after a few weeks, um, it was really mostly, I guess. Uh, yeah, after a few weeks, it was because I guess the pictures that Chuck had posted the day after, which would be the Monday from the show that we had, a lot of people on the internet were speculating that I was with him or I was hiding him or something like that. So you're clearly in, the, in Chuck's social media at some point, and so people were wondering about you. Yeah. So. Um, after that uh, exchange with Chuck, um, that you had where you're like, hey, that girl from Seattle is missing, and he's like, not her. Um, did his social media keep up, or did it go dead for a period of time? Uh, I think for a few days it did, or maybe a few weeks. He wasn't really posting, and it's kind of like out of nowhere he just started posting a lot. So he took kind of a break from social media, mm -hmm. silent, and then you say he starts posting a lot. What kind of things was he posting once he started posting? Uh, a lot of old videos. Most of them I was with him. And some of the videos, so I know for a fact they was all. One of them I actually was like standing, so everybody really thought I was with him. And everyone's calling me and Dax, like, oh, yeah, he's with him, y'all need to turn him in. And I'm like, these are old videos. <laughs> and uh, did you ever talk to him again? Did 
you even have his cell phone number, or how would you guys communicate? Uh, so we really it cool kind of when the pandemic hit. We never really conversated on the phone, anything like that. We had so mostly that's how we conversated through Snapchat. That was, that's all. Snapchat, right, because right. it's mostly I'll see you at the club, kind of, or he'll come over. Passwords. Cross examination. Okay, so what you're telling members of the jury is that uh, during this time period after uh, Marcella goes missing, uh, posting on social media, making people think he's with you, right? He looked at that one. On the videos, right? Yes. The videos that he's posting makes it look like he's in Dallas, doesn't it? Yes. And he's with you, right? Yes. And people are saying, somebody contact Freddie and tell him he need to turn uh, Chuck in, right? Yes. <coughs> Correct? Correct. All right. And as far as your relationship with um, Charles Beltran, at no time did he ever indicate to you that Lisa was jealous of this womanizing, did he? No. And in fact, um, when she approached you, trying to entice you, mm -hmm. uh, I think you, you said that, that she said you can have whatever you want. She saw your vision, right? Yes. So first she wanted to invest in you as a rapper, right? Not as a rapper, just invest in me. Well, what was your vision? I don't know. You have to ask her. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, would you be surprised when she said she wanted to invest in you because of your vision? She's talking about your ability to rap. You were a much better rapper than Chuck, wasn't you? That's debatable. Oh. Okay. Okay. So the, the rap song that you had with Chuck was the um, um, Straight On Sight? Not at all. What, what, what rap the song, song we had was called Spin the Block, but I didn't release Spin, the song. Spin the Block? What is Spin the Block? So it's basically just talking about lifestyle. You like know, what? Women, money, cars. Shopping. For example, reading tell books. Tell the jury what Spin the Block, this rap Hops song that you and Chuck had. What is it? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I can't really recall it. It was a couple years ago. I didn't release the song. Okay. You know, this I would have to actually like. It was so bad. You don't remember twelve bars? Um, nah. I don't really remember. It's a blank at the moment. Uh, you don't remember? Are, are, are you embarrassed to tell the members of the jury the type of nonsense that y'all are talking about women? Um, oh. definitely not about women. I'm a respectful man, so anybody I hang with is respectful as well. well, well spin, I'm a gentleman. Spin bars is, it, is, it, is it talking about threatening people? It's spin the block. Spin the block. It's more just women. lifestyle: cars, jewelry, mm -hmm. women, clothes, things that you get inside of a hip hop song. All right, let's move on. I'm, I'm, I'm just messing with you, Mister. No, that's fine. Uh, you good? Uh, <laughs> you're not on trial, right? So. Of course, of course. All right. um, but what I do want to talk to you about is your relationship with Chuck during this time period, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you weren't like uh, involved in some strange entanglement with Miss Dykes, right? Right. Uh, and as far as I think you said that uh, Miss Dykes paid for the trip to Arkansas, right? Right. Uh, she paid for uh, what would have been your Audi, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. What could have been your Audi. Could have been my Audi. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lost out. But you're not telling members of the jury that she wasn't investing in Chuck's uh, rap career, are you? That I don't know. Well, who paid for the studio that you would go to? It's the house that he lived in. But who paid for the studio? You know, she paid for that. Yeah. He didn't have it. He she paid for everything. Correct. He didn't have that studio before. Right. He didn't have the Audi before either. Right. So she paid. She paid for it. everything, but it wasn't a. Was he using it for his rap career? What the Audi or the studio? The studio. Yeah, he was recording music. And the truth of the matter is, he used the Audi too, didn't he? He did. Yeah. The music video, video, remember? I remember the video yeah. that's recorded at their house. Correct. With the strippers, right? Correct. At her house. I don't know if they strip us, but correct. Well, the young ladies. <laughs> hose. The hose. They dance like that these days. No, the hose. That one, one, you know. That was the hose. You know the hose. Jesus. Tell him. I'm real afraid. Tell him.
Oh, savage man, attorney, work for that money. We need a hero. We need a hero. This is like a lifetime movie, yeah. lifetime trial. Got some scissors. Oh, yeah. I close it. All the windows I have open. Uh, like a lifetime movie. Yeah. Life yeah. So tonight. I'm going to play the... Oh, tonight I'm going to work on the Cease and Desist video. Add some commentary and context if I can and drop it. I'll drop it tomorrow, though, because I'm going to drop the... The guys you... The thing you listen to... I, the interview that you guys listen to at lunch, I'm going to drop it by itself. If you want to come through again, I appreciate it. If not, I understand. I'm just going to drop it later and then... Uh, let it be out there in the world for, me, for people that haven't seen it, maybe. It gives a lot of information. So we got Nina's deep dive, and we have Lisa's deep dive. And we have some of Charles, a little bit of Charles, not, not so deep. Parts and craft of the exhibits today. Let me show you what's marked as defense exhibit number four. Does this appear to be uh Charles Beltran, Georges, Chuck 5050, the person we're talking about? Yes. And does that appear to be, uh, I guess, when he was making a video at uh, Ms. Dyke's house? Yes. Uh, will this assist you in testifying to, I guess, what these girls look like? What about? I mean, the girls that are on the video appear on, on, on defense exhibit number four, don't they? Excuse Do you remember the video? Yes, I remember the video. Okay, does that not appear to be the young ladies that were on that video? They don't look like circles. That's not my question. Does that so not appear? Question? Yes, that's them. Okay. Judge Alf, what's marked as defense for? They look like classy ladies. Just part of the community. I mean, it's a rap song. You know, it's a rap video, so. No objection, Your Honor. Be expected. All right, defense exhibit number four is admitted. Up, love. Commissioner Coach. Huh? How you guys holding up, man? What you guys uh, ate today? What's for lunch? This is Chuck. Uh, in a video, uh, this would actually be Miss Dykes' home, correct? Correct. And you know, because you've been there, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. And this Hello. is he's making a video, right? Yes. Was this the picture me this video? Yes. All right. And uh, when we talk about the uh, young ladies that were in that video, um, these are just a couple of the young ladies that were in the video. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Uh, don't do it. Um, also wanted to ask you about um, the, you, and, you and Chuck are friends, right? Yes. And you asked him about uh, when the when the FBI came up to you. Actually, they, they, they caught you off guard, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah. Scared, scared you, did Yeah, they popped out like ghosts. <laughs> yeah, they did. And, but again, you cooperated. You of didn't course. try to run nothing like that. You talked to them. Yes. Right. Um, even though at that time you felt like people were given an illusion that you knew where Chuck was. Right. But you didn't, did you? I didn't. You had no contact with him after, I guess, what you told the members of the jury earlier. Yes. All right. 
Um, as far as his interaction with the girl from Seattle, because you didn't know her name, right? I didn't know her name. No. But the girl from Seattle, uh, did you have you ever, even seen her? I seen the flyer. Okay, you saw the flyer, but you didn't see her that night like that, right? And I was at home. Okay. Um, but the girl from Seattle, he didn't say anything to you about anything unusual happening that night other than them having sex in his car, correct? Correct. And then he dropped her off in deep belt. Correct. Didn't say anything about Miss Dykes uh, being jealous and, and, and hurt, did he? No, he didn't. He didn't say anything about her being hurt, period. No, he didn't. Or him knowing about her being hurt. Correct. And in fact, when you ask him, when you say, hey man, they, they got this girl from Seattle on this poster, you text him a picture on the poster, didn't you? Correct. May I approach the judge? You may. The girl you text him a picture of, I mean, it was this girl, right? Yes. And he said he didn't know nobody, did he? Correct. But whether or not he was lying, you don't know, right? Uh, I don't know. I mean, and you don't know whether he was lying, right? I don't know if he was lying. No. Okay. Because and, and, you can't tell when he's lying to you? I think I'm a good judge of character. But you don't know whether he was lying to you? I don't know at that moment, no. And, and you know him pretty well, don't you? I do. But when, when he's lying, you have no idea, do you? Correct. And you know him. You've spent time with him. Yes. Okay. As far as who drove to Arkansas, uh, you say you think it was Miss Dykes, but you don't know because you weren't in the car with him, were you? Correct. I did want to also ask you about um, some of the things that you told the, whether it was the police or the FBI. Uh, you talked about Chuck's, Chuck using ecstasy. You remember that? Uh, yeah, I recall that. You don't remember? I don't recall, but I do know he do use ecstasy time to time. You don't remember telling the, the police that uh, one time you had to take him home because he had uh, used so much ecstasy? No, I never said that. You never said that? I never said that. Or that I recall. That you recall? I did drive him home one time, yeah. But I don't remember telling the FBI that. Okay, from him using too much ecstasy, right? Correct. I took him home because he used so much ecstasy. Okay. But I never sat with a police department officer or FBI and told them that. How'd you get that info? I was only approached one time and it was outside of my building. Hold on, hold on. All right. Oh, we're pulling it up. Mm -hmm. Try to clarify for you. Okay. Make us take it, take it to the back. Like we did the other guy, uh, was whatever, Raul. Make us pull up that, that, that phone what call. Is that? Uh, it's a drug, a stimulant, I would say. Like methamphetamine? Yeah. Okay. The chill drug. Relax. Damn, weapon is high. Reports of possible shooting at the University of Las Vegas with multiple victims. I haven't seen that. Take a look. So, when you talk, when you told the police about um, Chuck's ecstasy use, you don't recall, right? I don't recall. Okay, that's fair. Um, Vegas does have a lot of listeners on their scanner audio, so there's probably something going on. Active shooter. Oh, you were referring to... Um, Miss Dykes as um, uh, Chuck's uh, sugar mom, right? Correct. I mean, that's sugar mom, that's sugar daddies, right? Correct. I mean, you got some older women that uh, take care of younger men, right? Correct. You got some older men that take care of younger women, right? Correct. That's their prerogative to do that, right? Correct. Okay. Um, but as far as all these women that Chuck was around, uh, you, do you ever see Miss Dykes act jealous about him being around another one? Not at all. Okay. And in the studio, lounge room, uh, that was at her home, 
It wouldn't be unusual for Chuck to bring a lot of people, different people over there, would it? Not at all. Guys, girls? Correct. It was a studio? Correct. I mean, I mean, just if you know, it wouldn't be unusual for him, him to have sex with women at that house, would it? Correct. Did you know Carmen? Correct. Now, Carmen went at the house, was she? I don't think she ever came to the house. That was another apartment he had, right? Um, I don't know about I think she had an apartment. Where he stayed, right? With Carmen? Correct. And whoever else was there, right? Correct. Okay. Because Chuck was a ladies' man, right? This is debatable. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, he thought he was, didn't he? Uh, yeah. Correct. You, would you say to say he's a womanizer? I don't think he is. You didn't think he's a womanizer? Not at all. Manipulate women? Not at all. get what he want? I never seen him do it. You never seen him do it? Not at all. It's, they want to give it to him, then he, he receive it. Okay. Like, like, kind of like a pimp, huh? I wouldn't say that. A pimp is, I, you know the definition of a pimp. Yeah. Women selling her body, they giving him money. I don't think that what the case was. True. So, so but gifts. Women. I would say gifts. A lot of gifts from different women. Correct. A couple of baby moments. Correct. Right? Yeah. But it's not a womanizer, right? I didn't I never seen him be a womanizer. Super respectful to ladies. I always approach them with respect. As long as they're giving him what he wants, right? I mean that's debatable. Um, as far as Chuck, I know you said you never spoke with him uh, after a certain point, right? Correct. Uh, but any doubt in your mind that he knew that these people were looking for him, for this girl from Seattle? Um, was it, so can you repeat the question? I'll strike it, don't worry about it. Um, let me ask you, Well, I wanted to ask you about that. The uh, when you said uh, he had to pay for the trip, when Nina comes up and uh, gives him the key. Yes. And you refer to it. You and Dax were laughing like, "Go, go pay for the trip, right?" <laughs> right. Okay. So he was going back to the room with both of them, right? Yes. So, in your presence, did uh, Lisa or Nina ever appear jealous of each other? Not at all. Okay. They knew Chuck like women. Yes. Like to have sex with women? I don't know those details, but I know he liked women. Okay, was, was Chuck loyal to any woman, in your opinion? Hell no. Yeah. What? Loyal in, in regards to what? Like, Who? What? They, they, he was with them. I mean, if it was understood, it was understood. For the night? Loyal for the is, night? It's uh -huh. all on what they aspect of loyalty is. Now, was he faithful? No. Okay. But loyal? Yeah, because he was with them. Oh, my okay. God. Okay. That already shows me a character. So in your opinion, it wouldn't have been cheating. He wouldn't have been cheating on Lisa because they would have had an understanding. Correct. She oh. knew he uh, had other women. From my knowledge. Okay. Yeah. He even brought other women out to that house in Mesquite, right? Yes. Okay. Um, after texting Chuck, 50-50, sent him this picture of the missing girl from Seattle. Did you ever talk to him again? I didn't. Yeah. And all you know is he told you he dropped her off in DL. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. Nothing further. All right. May this witness be finally excused? Objection, sir. Any objections in the defense? No objection, Your Honor. All right, sir. You are here to leave and conduct your business. Please watch your steps. All right. Call your next witness. Your Honor, the state calls Seth Rosenberg. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
his hand so that your right hand is raised. Do you solemnly, excuse me, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you out? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You can have a seat as a witness stand. Please watch your step. <clears throat> You may proceed. Thank you. Uh, can you state your name and spell your name for the court clerk, please? Seth Rosenberg, S E T H R O S E N B E R G. And what is it that you do for a living? I work for the city of Dallas for the crime scene unit. How long have you been doing that? I've been working for crime scene for 13 years, I've been on the police department for 22 years. And uh, is there any special training um, that you have to go through to become a, a crime scene uh, technician with the Dallas Police Department? For to be a detective, you got to go through a four-week class to train how to take fingerprints, use your camera, use the chemicals that you use to lift prints or get possible evidence. Uh, you then are you make sure that you can use gloves and and you handle everything properly so you don't cross contaminate any evidence. And after you've done the four week class of training, you do 10 weeks of training with a field trainer to show you how to do the calls out in the field. And once you have accomplished that, then you uh, get to go out and answer calls on your own. And you said that you have been doing a uh, crime scene for 13 years. Is that yes, ma'am. Okay. Tell the jury kind of what some of your duties are as a, a detective that goes out to crime scenes. Well, uh, we wait for the calls to come in. When we get called, we go out to homicides, sexual assaults, robberies, assaults, any crime against a person that can physically harm them. Uh, when we get called out to these scenes, we kind of get the layout of what happened mm -hmm. from the officers at the location. We photograph what we see when we get there. Then we'll, if we have anything to collect, we'll put placards out. We will retake all these photos with placards that are put out to identify which items go with which number. We will collect them. If there's uh, any DNA to collect, we will collect that. Uh, we're wearing gloves through this whole process and the very last thing we would do is take fingerprints if we're looking for fingerprints. Now uh, I addressed you as detective but you are not the lead detective on this case, correct? Correct. And you're not the investigating detective on this case? Correct. Um, who is it, uh, Detective Rosenberg, that kind of decides what uh, items to collect um, places to swab for DNA and things like that at a crime scene? Uh, depends on which uh, unit, because I believe it was uh, missing persons that was I was first cal called out on. So the uh, detective in missing persons was in charge of this at first. Okay. And so you get some information um, about kind of, you know, the investigation and what's going on. And then when you go in, you take photographs of various things, looking for pieces of evidence, collect them, and then what happens to that evidence? When, when once I collect the evidence, I will send it off to either the property room to, uh, and that's just to store or Swiss, which is Southwest, uh, Southwest Forensics of Science, uh, to test for DNA. Or if you got fired cartridges, we send them to NIBIN to be tested uh, for ballistics. Did you have the uh, occasion to go out to an address of 3113 Tensington Drive in Mesquite, Texas on October 31st, 2020? Yes, ma'am. And what was that in response to? I'm missing persons. Okay. And um, did the detective on the case at that time they obtained a search warrant to search that residence. Yes, ma'am. And was I guess your job was to um, collect items in that home in response to that search warrant. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, when you entered that home, uh, first of all, how did all, how did you enter? The door had already been forced open, 
And, and who had forced that door open? I did not know who forced it open. Okay. Was there a, uh, I guess, a fugitive unit or a, a unit of accompanying officers that uh, came with you to kind of seal the perimeter of that house, make sure this process was done without any interference? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, you weren't there when that, that door was kicked open? No, ma'am. So you have no idea if it was one of those officers? <laughs> Correct. Um, besides those officers, uh, who all else? Who else was out there at the scene, if you recall? Uh, I know uh, Detective Dolby was out there for uh, missing persons, and then there's several fugitive officers out there, and a few sergeants, and that's about all I can remember. Okay. And the fugitive officers that we're talking about are those that were there to just kind of make sure that there wasn't any interference. Correct. Were you all aware at that time that the house was still occupied? No, ma'am, I had no idea. Okay. Is that the purpose of the fugitive unit? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, upon entering the house, uh, what did you notice about the house? There wasn't much furniture in the house. It looked like they were in the middle of moving. Uh, and in the one of the bedrooms, the master bedroom, the ceiling had caved in. And what time of day was it that you... Uh, this is during the day, since I work uh, days on the department. Do you recall how many bedrooms were in this home? I believe there was three. Three bedrooms? And uh, like a living room area? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, kitchen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, typical layout? Yes, ma'am. Now, the garage, was the garage, um, I guess... Was it accessible through an alleyway or through the front of the or from the front of the house? Through the alleyway. And the front door um, is that just as accessible from the sidewalk? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so um, if you're going to park in the driveway or in the garage, you have to drive down the alleyway and enter the the driveway and garage that way. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you take photographs of each of the rooms in the home? Yes, ma'am. And did you uh, do that? What was the purpose of that? Uh, when we get to the location and it is a uh, search warrant, we photograph the entire home to get the layout of the home and what we see when we get there. May I first witness, Your Honor? You may. Is it fair to say you take uh, several photos? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm handing you what's been marked states exhibit 92 through 178. Let me flip through those and uh, just look at each of those photographs. There's an active shooter. In uh, Cali, apparently, university.
Uh, Detective Rosenberger, each of those photographs appear after representation of the home uh, in the condition it was when you photographed Yes, ma'am. All right, Your Honor, uh, State Offer of States Exhibits 92 through 178 for all purposes. No objection, Judge. Thank you. All right. Excuse me. State's exhibits 92 through 178 are admitted for all purposes. Commissioner Publish, Your Honor. You may. Um, and Detective Rosenberg, I'm not going to spend a, a lot of time on each photograph, but I just want the jury to be able to get kind of a general um, idea of kind of the contents of the home. States 193, that's the front of the home. Yes, ma'am. States 94, the garage area. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you have a garage. placard there of uh, a four, and is that just in, indicative of something that you were going to collect? Yes, ma'am. Uh, at that time when you collect it, do you have any idea if it's evidence or not? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, States 95, then a picture of one of the kind of Maybe dining areas of the home? Yes, ma'am. Is that your equipment there? No, ma'am. That is uh, at the house. Okay. And does that appear to be a mattress up against the side? Yes, ma'am. Ironing board, First time iron. taking yes, inside the house. Uh, 96 is that placard again. 97 is an up close of that earring. Uh, 98, uh, can you recall what room of the house this is in? This is the guest bathroom. Okay. And it's kind of dark right there. We didn't talk about this, but... Um, what, what is one of the tools that you use in determining whether or not you need to swap your DNA specifically in an area? We have a chemical called Blue Star, where you have to have the room or area completely dark, and you spray this chemical on it, and if it hits blood, it uh, will illuminate blue to where you can identify, or not identify, but see where uh, the possible blood could be. Your, Your Honor, may I approach the witness? You may. Detective Handing also has been marked as State's Exhibit 179. Does that, uh, do you recognize the layout there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that an accurate representation of what it appears to be? Yes, ma'am. State offers uh, 179 for all purposes, tender defense. No objection, Your Honor. It's been previously to tender judge. All right. State's exhibit 179 is admitted for all purposes. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, 
And I want, this was in a guest bathroom, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let's uh, just take a look at States 179. This is kind of the layout of that Kensington, Kensington home. And can you point on that screen? Um, and I guess the Sorry. screen's not working. <laughs> um, the guest bathroom that we're talking about, is it, can you point up there on that TV? That one right there. Okay, and it's kind of connected to the bedroom right there. Or right outside that bedroom. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, in this instance, it's during the day, so are you able to at least uh, shut off that bedroom to get enough darkness to use? Uh, is the, it Luminol? It's Blue, Blue Star. Star. Blue Star. It is the bathroom, not the bedroom. And. Is that kind of what we see right there on the, uh, I guess, door frame? The door frame, yes, ma'am. Is that something that you would have swabbed in? Yes, ma'am. DNA? Okay. States 99, is that that same bathroom? Yes, ma'am. States 100, it's, well, it's terrible on this. Um, Your Honor, if we could get the lights on, I think that might be <laughs> clearer for the jury. Maybe. Um, you can see a little bit of it. So the picture itself and is kind here, of dark. And here. Is this the area that we're talking about? And right there. And where else? I'm sorry, I made the picture. Right there? Yeah. Your Honor, I may just uh, have better luck just showing the jury instead of uh, having the lights out. I thought that would help. Let's see. Uh, States 101, is this the same bathtub? Yes, ma'am, just a better photo. Okay. And it appears that Blue Star reacted there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, cool. States 102, same bathtub? Yes, ma'am. Okay. That luminol? Sometimes you gotta take a lot of photos to capture what you're trying to see with Blue Star. And and you're trying to make sure that the jury gets to see the same or, or investigators uh, get to take, see the same thing that you see in person. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's kind of unclear, but there looks to be a uh, reaction to Blue Star there. Do you recall what this is a picture of? I believe it's the door. Okay. And then it states 104. Yeah, it's right there uh, by the uh, door handle, right underneath it. Okay, States 105. Is that, I could not tell in States 105, is that a glare from the tile or is that uh, the Blue Star reaction? That is going to be Blue Star reaction. Okay, and do you recall what uh, area that reaction came no, from? No, ma'am, and that's right. why I say sometimes you got to take continuous photos to try to get what you're actually taking uh, photo States of. States 106. Is that that same tile floor, but in the light? Yes, ma'am. Okay. States 107, do you recall what bathroom that is? That's still the uh, guest bathroom. Okay. States 108, is that the blue star that reacted to the guest bathroom? Yes, ma'am. States 109. That's just a bad picture of the one from before. Okay. States 110. That's the other sink in the bathroom. And the same guest bathroom? Yes, ma'am. States 111, is this where they had to kind of kick in the door or break that door frame to get in? Yes, ma'am. States 112, we already uh, saw a picture similar. States 113, um, does that just appear to be another area of the kind of common area of the home? Yes, ma'am. And that is also uh, on the floor right there is from the door. Okay. Being forced open. States 114, uh, also a common area. Yes, ma'am. States 115, uh, there's some more things uh, left there in that common area. Yes, ma'am. 116, 117, states 118. I think that may be an identical photo. Yeah, I'm just doing a 360 around the rooms to show what the room's like. States 119. 
120, is that going out to the garage? Yes, ma'am. States 121, is that a photograph of the kitchen? Yes, ma'am. And, I mean, as you can tell, there's a lot of items left out on the countertops? Yes, ma'am. States 122, uh, same kitchen, the trash can's full. Uh, say it states 123, that's just a picture of the stove and uh, more items out. Yes, ma'am. Uh, states 124, um, is that just another shot into where that mattress was kind of leaned up against the wall? Yeah, it's shown from the kitchen going out to the front door. Okay. And does this uh, states 125 to appear to be the laundry room area? Yes, ma'am. Uh, it's clear there's no washer and dryer, but at, at some point there. Uh, appears there would have been a washer and dryer there. Yes, ma'am. Says 126, cabinets in the laundry room. 127, does that appear to be uh, kind of going into where the pantry is? Yes, ma'am. It's the back side of that laundry room. Okay. 128, picture of the pantry and left behind items. Yes, ma'am. Says 129, uh, additional picture of the pantry, just the top part. Yes, ma'am. So it's one thirty. That's kind of uh, some. It's a water heater. Water heater and, and things, uh, Kroger bags and things left out. Uh, states one thirty one. Uh, also the kitchen. So it says one thirty two. Now states one thirty three. That's the garage area. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and you can see some. You know, it uh, looks like a gas can maybe and some other items there in the corner. Yes, ma'am. Says 134, uh, various items on the shelves. States 135, that's also the garage area. Yes, ma'am. This is trash. Now we're moving uh, back into the house. Did they show the bedroom uh, yet? States 136. What does that say? Can you tell? Uh, it looks like math to me. But... Math. Okay, lots of debris and things on the floor, chips, uh, knockover stool, uh, futon in the corner. It states 137, uh, appears to be, you know, desk in that corner, a Rick and, Mor Rick and Morty poster. Are you familiar with Rick and Morty? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and Space Jam, Wonder Woman posters. Um, it states 138. States 139, does that appear to be, uh, I guess, some foam material kind of in that closet? Yes, ma'am. Uh, are you familiar with uh, that material being used uh, to create kind of a sound, uh, I don't know, barrier? Yes, yeah, it's kind of like the sound booth. Try to... Sound booth, thank you. <laughs> booth escaped me. Um, so it appears to be that if there was a studio in that home, that would yes, be Yes, ma'am. 141, the same? Yes, ma'am. 142, that appears to be like a utility closet. Yes, ma'am. Um, 143, maybe a hall closet with some things left. Correct. Uh, they it. They ran. 144, is that just kind of a picture of the carpet area of the bedroom? That is uh, the far bedroom in the corner of the house. Okay. And I'm looking at the... So it's 179, the layout. Is it this bedroom or this bedroom? It's that bedroom. I'm sorry, which one? The one you were pointing at, that one. This one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So these photographs, uh, uh, states 144 is that corner bedroom. States 145, is that that same bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Okay. There's supposedly blood under the carpet. And can you tell what that is on the carpet? No, ma'am. Say it's 146. It's just a 360 photo going through the whole bedroom. Okay. Say it's 147, same bedroom. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 148 is that starting to be enough close to that uh, closet where things were left. Yes, ma'am. Same with 149. Correct. Uh, states 150. Is that that same closet? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and there's some various candles. Uh, looks like Santa Huerta type of candles and things like that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. States 
Stage 151. Uh, is that that hall, that bathroom? That's you have a bathroom? guest bathroom, yes, ma'am. Okay. Stage 152, same bathroom? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 153, that looks like that's going out into the hallway. Correct. Uh, stage 154, do you recall what room that was in? Uh, I believe that's still the guest bathroom. Okay, like a linen closet? Yes, ma'am. Uh, state same with states 155. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and some various items, uh, shampoo, curl la la, things of that nature left in that bathroom. Yes, ma'am. Do you use curl la la? No, oh, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, states 156 is which bathtub is this? If you can recall. That I believe is a guest bathroom. And then we have stage 157, same guest bathroom. On stage no, 150. I'm thinking I'm that is the master bathroom. Okay. <clears throat> stage 156 is the master bathroom? I think so, yes, ma'am. Okay. Same with 157? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 158. Does that appear to be. Uh, what does that appear to be? Possible blood. It's some kind of stain on the bottom of the bathtub. Okay. Um, and this states 159. What uh, room is this? That is going to be the master bedroom. Okay. And if we go back to the layout of the house, that's this one right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, that uh, the last uh, where the toilet I think was, that the was the guest bathroom. bathroom. That was the guest yes. bathroom. Okay. Uh, the one with the black shower curtain? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Um, 160, further, I mean, just showing uh, other things left in that <clears throat> master bedroom? Yes, ma'am. A primary uh, bedroom, I guess, is uh, 161. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 162, what is all... This stuff right there. That is the insulation from the ceiling. If you can see on the top of the photo, the ceiling has fallen down uh -huh. in the master bedroom to where all the insulation's uh, fallen out of the ceiling. Okay. Do you have any idea how long that had been there? No, ma'am. Okay, that's just how it was when you got there. Yes, ma'am. Is this the uh, closet in the primary bathroom area? Yes, ma'am. And it's a, like a walk in closet? Yes, ma'am. And. Same in 164. Yes, ma'am. 165, the primary bathroom? Or can you tell from that picture? They're not in the order I took them, so sometimes it's hard to tell. I'm not quite sure. I, okay. I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be master, though. Okay. Um, space 166, that's a shower curtain in that. Yes, ma'am. Says 167. That's going to be the master bathroom. Says 168. It's going to be in the master bathroom. 169. That is in the master bathroom. 170. It's just the medicine stand. In the bathroom. In the bathroom. Uh, and it says 171, you have a placard there for uh, number one. Is that something you collected? Yes, ma'am. It should be a latex glove. And 172, 173 are both those gloves? Yes, ma'am. 174, that is the placard for uh, the second, I guess, item that you collected? Yes, ma'am. And... Can you recall what those items were? Should be an earring and a fingernail. Okay. And 175. Um, do you recall what closet uh, says 175 was? That is a guest bedroom uh, with that empty room that had nothing on the carpet. That's the closet there. Okay. And that's going to be a pair of panties. Okay, and that's something you collected? Yes, ma'am. And when we're talking, that's this bedroom? Yes, ma'am. 
The other bedroom is the one that had the um, math written on the walls. Yes, yes ma'am. 176. Um, do, you, do you recall which bathroom? That's going to be the guest bathroom. Okay. Versus this is the master bathroom? Uh, and stays 177? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And last is just the garage area of 178. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, um, it looks like you collected four different items. Uh, did you also uh, take some swabs uh, when you were out there? Yes, ma'am. What things did you take swabs of? It was on the guest bathroom. It was the uh, left sink, the bathtub, the interior door, and the bathtub floor. And once you take those swabs, you take those to Swift's? Yes, ma'am. Um, deposit those in, a, I guess, a safety lockbox? How does that process work? When we gather up the DNA, we uh, package it up at our office uh, in you know, headquarters at uh, 1400 Botham Green. When we package it up, we uh, do the report. We have a copy of the report and attach it to the uh, envelope. We then fill out a Swiss form and put it on the shelf and wait for someone to transport it over to Swiss to their secure lockbox. Now the other four items, uh, what do you do with those four items? I send all of it to Swiss. Okay. Now, you weren't aware whether people were presently living there or not, correct? Correct. But just based on appearances um, and your training and experience, I mean, you photographed thousands of homes? Yes, ma'am. Um, what was your impression? My impression is someone was leaving fast out of the house. Okay. Now, you had the opportunity to uh, go out on another um, scene that was associated with this incident. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And where was that? This is in Wilmer, Texas. Okay. And um, do you recall the location in Wilmer, Texas? 38 Post Oak. What were you called out there to do? There's an open field that had uh, evidence in the field that we were going out to try and locate. Okay. And when you went out there, was it just Dallas Police Department or were there some other agencies out there? There was a lot of agencies out there. Um, and this was in response to finding possible human remains, is that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you take some photographs out there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, before we get to those photographs, can you kind of describe to the jury, so you get out to the scene and there's several people out there, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, did you all eventually coordinate as to how you were going to search the scene and try to get as much evidence as possible? Yes, ma'am. Was it, what were the conditions out there? It was very wet in a dirt field where we had puddles of water everywhere. Okay. And uh, about how many people were out there? I'd say at least 40. 40? Yes, ma'am. And I guess what was the uh, process by which you all coordinated to search this area? Because of how wet it was, we basically got about arm's length from each other and just walked straight as far as we could go, come back. If we found anything, we got a flag. We stuck the flag by the item that we found so we wouldn't lose it. And then we'd go and start and walk again the same direction, go straight up, come back, and then we crossed it. We looped around and we went back the same, uh, the opposite direction, or perpendicular uh, to how we uh, searched it the first time to try to locate any item we could. Did you take some photographs out there as well? Yes, ma'am. 
Tech Rosenberg of Canning U.S. New Mark states exhibits 180 through 208. Can you uh, flip those through those photographs, please? I think it was just one shooter. Um, he's dead. I, from what I'm hearing, I don't think there's any dead victims. Just pe multiple people injured. One person in critical condition. I'm streaming on the second channel. I'm just listening to the scanner audio. And I think it's kind of done, but they're going to do a press conference soon. Thankfully. Uh, are those a fair and accurate representation of the photographs you took? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, state offer states 108 for two, uh, sorry, 180 through 208 for all purposes. Tendering to Defense Counsel. So they brought in a lot of pictures. Um, I've never seen the inside of the house, I don't believe. They cleared that shit out. Cleared it. Wendy's birthday. Wendy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, I think the situation is pretty much contained. I think they're just checking every floor. I think they're like going floor to floor and clearing things out. No objection, sir. Now a press conference. All right, state's exhibit 180 through 208 are admitted for all purposes. Commissioner Publisher, you may. Um, before we kind of go through these photographs, I want to uh, just kind of remind you and the jury of this area um, where you were searching. It's right there at, let me see if we'll go back and focus. Right there at Post Oak Road. Um, when you all got there, did you just kind of park right along here? Yes, ma'am. And that field was just open, correct? Yes, ma'am. And that wooded area, we also went through a lot of the wooded area. Okay. And so you were talking about lining You're saying up. another possible so suspect. You all line up and then like walk this way as far as you could? Or can you yeah. kind of show that for the jury um, on the screen up there? We lined up from here up to there at first and we all walk this way as far as we could then when we we're done there we go up this way then we walk all the way up through there they also had drones in the air looking from the sky when we got done walking that direction we turned then we walked this direction as far as we could into the wooded area and we just completed that area searching like that is it fair to say with 40 individuals on the ground and drones that you all did uh, the most thorough job you could? Yes, ma'am. Um, and being out there, uh, kind of taking over, you're a little bit of a country boy? Yes, ma'am. Um, what challenges could you see in finding all of the uh, remains and, and pieces of evidence that were out there? I know why we were out there. We were watching wildlife crossing the street when we were there. And however long it is, the longer someone is out there, the more animals come around and scavenge and eat. And so wherever someone is placed, they're gonna be kind of scattered everywhere. So you're not necessarily gonna to get to find all the bones or all the remains left of anybody out in the field. But you all searched and, and did the best you could and found as, as much as you could. Yes, ma'am. And this is actually the second, the, the initial remains were found a couple days before, um, on March 24th. Were you out there for that search? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. Um, you all went back out, out there a couple days later. And let's just kind of look through these pictures. Uh, this is States 180. And you can see kind of back there, I mean, clearly it's wet. Yes, um, ma'am. There's puddles and things like that. Um, what is this right there? That's kind of one of the flags that you're talking about? Yes, ma'am. So did you all just mark these things with these orange flags? Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, what is that pond right there? That is garbage bags right there. Okay. And were those collected? Yes, ma'am. States 181? Is that a close up of that garbage bag? Yes, ma'am. Now, you don't really know where this garbage bag uh, is from, but it could be important in the case. Correct. Um, and I believe it's probably not in a great order, but it states 182. This is kind of where you all were parked. And which which side of the road are we searching? We... If you can tell. Both sides of the street. Okay. So you, said you searched both sides. There, uh, we looked on uh, some areas on the other side as well. We didn't go as thorough on the opposite side. Okay. Street, at least when I went there, because we concentrated on that first field at, at the beginning where they found whatever they found two days before, because I don't even know what they found okay. at that time. Okay. So it's 183. Is that an area that you all searched? This is going to be that wooded area. That wooded area that uh, we searched first. Uh, and that uh, last picture is probably going to be the same side, just where the wooded area and the field meet. Okay. And from the street, once you walk through, I mean, it's hard to see back behind all this uh, growth right there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you have to actually walk back in there to see some of these things, like trash bags and things. Like yes, ma'am. States 184, is that uh, another picture of that kind of growth, yep. growth area? Yes, ma'am. How far do you have to walk back through there to, I guess, get past that overgrowth? You don't get past it. It's, it's continuation through back. As, once you get past that, then you get all the trees surrounding. Okay. The, so this part that kind of blocks the view, does is that remain throughout or does it kind yes, of um, open up to trees after that? It opens up to trees after this, where it's just hard walking through the trees. Okay. States 185. Is that a different trash bag? Yeah, uh, that, yes, ma'am. Was that also collected? Yes, ma'am. And was it a full trash bag or just a piece of a trash bag? That one is a full trash bag. States 186. Is that the same trash bag? Yes, ma'am. Say it's 187, you can kind of see uh, right in the center. Right there, a marker. Yes, ma'am. And it's hard to tell, but uh, if you recall, does this bag correlate to that marker? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So just looking at states 187. That marker right there, you can't see from that photograph, you can't even see what is being marked. Correct. You'd have to walk back there before you could actually see um, that there. from. And that first picture is kind of taken close to the street, is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So it's 189, that's an additional marker? Yes, ma'am. Um, States 190, is that a marker for... A piece of duct tape? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can see from there, um, the road's really not that far from this mark. Correct. Uh, this is that over area that we were talking about? Yes, ma'am. Uh, how long of a walk is that to get from the road to there? It's not very far. Okay. <clears throat> States 191. Is that another picture of that duct tape? Yes, ma'am. States 192, uh, is that also duct tape? Yes, ma'am. States 193, um, some additional trash bags. Yes, ma'am. Looks like uh, lots of pieces of duct tape yes, wrapped around. Do you recall um, in looking at Do you recall where um, that particular uh, group of things was located? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay. 
Do you know if it was in the wooded area or in that kind of open area? They're almost all right along the edge of the wooded area. The garbage bags really were not inside the wooded area. They're just on the outside of it. Okay. So it's 194. Uh, this, this kind of picture of where the open area and the woody, wooded area kind of come together? Yes, ma'am. And is that kind of the area where these trash bags were found? Yes, ma'am. Um, is that a marker right there? It is. States 195. Uh, we see a couple of markers there, and this is that kind of front puddle area um, where the kind of rain had, you know, kind of filled up those, uh, I don't know that they were holes, but, you know, that dirt area. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you recall what uh, pieces of evidence? That is something, like I said, if we found bone or anything, they would put a marker down, and we found a lot of animal bones, so they didn't get collected. Because okay. we, we actually have a medical examiner out there to identify the bones. Okay, whether it's medical what? or um, something else. Whether it was animal or human. Animal or human. I'm sorry, I said medical. Animal or human. Um, more of that kind of puddled area. Now you weren't out there for the search, first search to know where they located uh, some of the human remains. I was not. Okay. Uh, states 197. You can kind of see a trap right there. Uh, it looks like maybe an animal trap, small animal trap. Yes, ma'am. And then way back in there, you see um, a flag. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Is this kind of right when you start walking into the woods? Correct. States 198. Um, do we start kind of getting closer to that uh, flag that we saw before? Yes, ma'am. States 199. Nope. We're back in that corner is flag. And states 200. Can you tell in states 200 what? Um, Kind of what is right there? That should be the clear plastic bag. Okay. States 201. What does that appear to be? Those just pee. Oh, that's the uh, like hair scrunchy with hair in it. Okay. And is this kind of more located in the woods area? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then states 202. I think that's the same thing. Yes, ma'am. And then states 203, looks like to be hair. Could you tell if that was human hair or what that was? I couldn't tell you that. I just know there's a scrunchie in with the hair. Okay. Um, so like states 204 is a close-up of that plastic bag. Yes, ma'am. Um, states 205 <coughs> is a flag. And states 206, do you... Can you tell what piece of evidence they're kind of focused on or what line they are focused on? I think on? it's going to be a fingernail. Okay. This is the one. States 207. I'm sorry, states 206. Can you see? Yeah, it's that little piece. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And it, was that identified as a, maybe a piece of a fingernail? I, that's what I called it. That's what... Okay. I think they called it. Could you tell if it was like a, a real fingernail or if it was a fake nail? I think it was yeah, I think it's one of those fake nails. Okay. States two yeah, I think it's one of those fake nails. Okay. States two oh eight. I'm sorry, two oh seven. Uh, appears just to be maybe a piece of that trash bag. Yes, ma'am. And then I think last is states 208, and maybe this will clear up. Um, right there is that. Yeah, that's going to be the fingernail. Okay, and you said that it appeared to be mm -hmm. a, like a fake nail. Yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Pittman, I'm sorry, uh, if you could mark your spot, we have yes, been going for about an, almost an hour and 45 minutes, so it's time for our afternoon break.
We will be in recess for uh, 10 minutes. All right. So, with the active shooter situation, they're saying, okay, that the suspect is dead. Now, on the radio frequency, they were just saying something about possible second suspect, and there was somebody with a banana clip in a bag, and then I haven't heard anything else since that. And then the chat was saying that, like, I think they heard officer down, but I'm trying to confirm that as well. I'm checking Twitter to see. Can't move it. No. No. Oh, love me. Oh. All right. Let's see. Let's see. No, don't go to attack channel. Please, no. Las Vegas police spotted on rooftops. Shoot has been located and deceased. Officer down, not confirmed. Okay. So the officer down might be misinformation. They said it on the scanner radio, so they're trying to track down and confirm it. Now, I'm wondering how many people are injured. Las Vegas. I don't know. Me, you said, is it true that it's a a female shooter? I haven't heard about that. Can't go anywhere nowadays, man. Everything's nothing safe. Just gotta stay home, locked up in a box, or hooked up to a VR set. Okay. The university first tweeted at eleven fifty-three a.m. local time, I guess. That police were responding to shots fired. They evacuated the halls. Twenty minutes later, the university at the campus. Police were responding to additional reports of shots fired. Eh. I don't really have any information. Yeah, you're supposed to be on this channel. Multiple victims. So far, I really haven't heard of anybody dead besides the suspect. Amazon. What you get from Amazon? Second shooter in the barrack as an officer. that this is happening, but happiness that they've gotten here so fast. It seems like they were on campus right as it started because the police, like, we have a really good response, I feel like, ever since um, our last shooting that we had here in Vegas. So I'm actually very happy to see all of these police officers and all these officers moving on to campus and trying to make a difference. You know, we don't know exactly what's going on until after when they give debriefs on what they did and all that. But as of just a first look and glance, you know, it's nice just to know that we have these many officers here willing to protect.
Contact us. Have you talked to anybody else that saw anything else here on campus so, or heard um, anything? No, but I've talked to some friends that have friends that are that were in um, the building and they said that they were, they've just heard rounds going off, just rounds, rounds. And uh, someone said that he was on the third third um, floor with them at one time. So they were super nervous. Just seeing a bunch of text messages from friends that were in my class. So it's just super nervous, you know, hearing all these things. Like, you just don't know what to do. You just like, you're, you're calling your family. You're calling people. You're texting your friends. Like, hey, I, I love you guys. I don't know if I don't. Well, lately we've got lucky with these some of these shootings. I hope nobody dies besides the suspect. I hope nobody dies besides the suspect. Does it confirm barricade? All right. All right. Let me just go. Uh, uh, I wouldn't go to school. Hell no, I wouldn't be going to school, man. I'll call it. Look, they might have a press conference too coming up. They're getting set up for a press conference. All right. Well, Oh, really? The scanner said six deceased victims, possibly? Oh, no. Possibly? Man, it's really the end of times, man. They're saying multiple people killed, no specific number. Oh, boy. Wow. They're going to have this press conference soon, too, so maybe we can listen in. Um, what do you guys think of the trial so far? I I think that it's a good trial so far. It's in, I think it's pretty interesting, and uh, I think it's just kind of slept on and the story slept on. But and you got decent audio. We got pictures, video. And at least it's good, it's pretty paced, right? Yeah, the pace is fast. This one took a bit of a while, but they, they did admit a, little, a lot of evidence and pictures and stuff like that. And the defense is, uh, that guy's fiery. Both of them are little, little firecrackers. It's crazy to think that the family has to go through three trials, bro. And I wonder, I wonder, I gotta find, I wonder if Nina has the same, sorry, Lisa and Nina have the same attorney or is it different? <laughs> PDM counsel.
stomach hurts but i feel good i had some nachos got some more energy i'm ready to go miss mojo rising thank you for the 26 months excellent trial mel it's about time right on shelly shelly oh cool good good Mm -mm -mm. long day oh actually mm, i think we still have let me see spot. we got about an hour and a half for the trial i'm not as far as the shooting i'm not seeing nothing about officer down or, or some sort of like barricade from what i'm looking division two victims What does one black mean? Two black, one black? So they just mentioned different divisions. They're like, clear, clear, clear. And then they said division, whatever, two black. Division, whatever, one black. That means black victims? Nah. They get canceled, no? I, I even thought I heard them say orange. I heard orange too, right, AJ? I heard orange. Officer down was misinformation per scatter. Okay. I was thinking black meaning dead. That's what I was thinking, yeah. I'll, I'll. Oh, gotta stop talking. Mojo, thank you so much for the memberships. I don't know what that... Oh, you have 26 months. Holy crap. Long time. Riding out. It's been a long day. I was almost thinking if it's even worth covering trials. I know that sound, might sound crazy. I mean, I feel like this is like something that's like almost personal. But I was like, is it worth covering trials? If it's not like extreme, like something like, for example, Brian Koberger, we got to cover. Like, we got to do Brian Koberger, right? Or maybe even Tupac. This case feels like personal. Harmony Montgomery, hopefully, this trial, these trials won't interfere with Harmony Montgomery. That one feels kind of a little deep too, but like, because you're going to think like you're stuck all day for eight hours where I could be probably editing a video or something. I could probably drop two videos or something, edit and then do a live stream. I could edit and do stories and stuff like that. Yeah, Mulvey is putting out a five minute video. <laughs> it is kind of, some of them are like they have the, the a true experience. My favorite. Oh, pressure.
additional calls coming in that students hunker down, they're afraid, they're scared. Our officers are going unit by unit, building by building with the, uh, the, the university police and the rest of the police officers, firefighters, EMS, and making sure that we don't have any additional victims and or subjects. So we'll be back with you in the very near future to provide an update. Thank any you. Any info on the suspect? Sheriff? I have an update as well. I'm right, sorry. More that, on that website, that's going to be facofsouthernnevada.org. I believe I said .com. That is, uh, that is .org. Thank you, sir. Everybody will have future briefings at headquarters. Future briefings will be at headquarters. What did they say? Yeah, there was a shooting. Nothing else we could say. Oh, they're coming back. All right, well, that was lame. It's been a long day. I'm gonna go use the restroom before they come back. Hopefully, that'll. Oh, damn it. You may be seated. I can uh, You may resume. Thank you. Um, so, looking back at your report, um, the things that you collected and that were also photographed, those are the two garbage bags that were kind of held together by the duct tape, and those were collected near that animal track. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you collected a garbage bag that was in a ditch. Yes, ma'am. Was that closer to the road? Yes, ma'am. Um, a clear plastic bag that we saw a photograph of kind of in the wooded area. Yes, ma'am. And then two uh, small pieces of duct tape that were collected near uh, that kind of grouping of hair. Yes, ma'am. Um, head of hair with a scrunchie in the hair was collected in the woods. Yes, ma'am. And then finally you collected a fingernail uh, that was underneath the two garbage bags. Correct. And you submitted all those things to uh, either Swifts or the property. Owner. Swifts, ma'am. Swifts, okay. And at that point, it's up to uh, the detective to determine what kind of testing is done on those items. Correct. Now, you can you tell me when those items were left out there? No, ma'am. Uh, you're just collecting things that may be evidence. Correct. And... After that process, I mean, your job on, on that part of the case is done. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, Pestle, it was cross-examination. Um, Detective, I just want to, there was just a few questions I had for you. Um, one in particular, you said that it appeared that someone was leaving out of there pretty fast out of the house. Remember that, saying that? Yes, sir. Uh, you don't know that fact, do you? No, sir. Because, I mean, uh, it can take numerous days to move, can't it? Yes, sir. Uh, in fact, if, if, if you want to move some stuff out and then you tell a friend or a loved one to 
to pick and move the rest of the stuff out at a later date. That happens all the time, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, let me also ask you in reference to the blue star. <coughs> uh, it indicates uh, the possibility of the of blood, right? Yes, sir. I'm trying to simplify it, but that's pretty much what it does, right? Yes, sir. Like, when I approach this, yeah. like, like, for example, if uh, one of my nose bleeds or uh, 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 my mouth is bleeding, whatever, blood here, and I uh, touch it, and I come over here and I touch this wall, there's still going to be blood, right? Yes, sir. I mean, we may or may not be able to determine whose blood it is. It's just going to show the appearance of blood. Yes, sir. All right. Um, but let me also ask you in reference to, let's say, if I'm bleeding here and uh, someone tries to clean it up, like let's say some, some drops of blood, right? Yes, sir. And someone tries to clean it up and you, you're spreading it out, trying to wash it, right? Yes, sir. If you don't get all that blood up, it's going to appear that there's blood, correct? Blue star's going to pick yes, it up. Yes, sir. It will. It's going to, in fact, if I come on, I touch blood there and I do this, that blue star is going to show next, isn't it? Yes, sir. Because it's just showing the blood, right? Yes, sir. Not how much blood, right? Correct. I mean, and, and, and for the most part, the reason we use the blue star is because people think that they're, they're cleaning their blood up. It, it may appear like the blood is gone, right? Yes, sir. But that chemical reaction in the blue star is going to show if, I guess, blood has contacted an object. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, all the photos that, that she showed, because I don't want to go back through all this, it's late. Uh, but none of those are blood flowers, are they? I know, sir. probably refer to as blood flat. Spatter. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm from West Texas. <laughs> but blood splatter? Spatter. Spatter, right? Yes, sir. And blood, may I refer to this? Yes. Blood splatter, again, is, has a distinct look, right? Yes, sir. And you're trained as a, uh, I guess, a criminal response or what do they call you now? I'm a detective. Okay, you're a detective. Crime scene detective, yes, but sir. The crime scene, you know blood splatter when you see it, right? <coughs> yes, sir. Because uh, um, typically, like, say if I, if I stab you and I pull it out, that's where the blood splatter comes, correct? Yes, from the, the blood flinging off the knife. Flinging off the knife, right? Yes. Especially if I do it multiple times. It may do it, it may not, correct? Correct. But uh, again, blood splatter, it may go on the ceiling, it may go on the wall. It just depends on the direction of that knife, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. But you didn't see any blood splatter out of that residence, did you? Not in the bathroom, no, sir. Well, did, what, did you see it in, in, in the bedroom? No, sir. Did you see it in the kitchen? No, sir. Did you see it in the garage? No, sir. Did you see it anywhere in that house? No, sir. And as far as the objects that were, as uh, I think, we conducted a, uh, or you went out with a search warrant on the 31st. Um, portions of the house that, that, that appear to be be clean, correct? Yes, sir. All right, because when you're in that bathroom, you, you can't just tell it's blood, right? You got to put the booster on it. Correct. Looks like somebody tried to clean it, right? Correct. Oh, I was going to ask you about that, that ceiling. With all that um, um, insulation, yeah, insulation stuff. Uh, is that? I'm just. I mean, being a detective, would that be consistent with someone may have uh, broken in that house or fallen through the or ceiling? Fallen, that's what I'm saying. Falling through the ceiling because they were trying to break through the house. I don't know if there's a leak in the house from water either. Okay. All right. Because okay. that insulation looked wet. Okay. That's that's fair. Um. As far as you talked about going out to the location where the remains, some of the remains were, were, were found, um, because that was about six months later, uh, you got a lot of weather. Does weather affect um, the evidence that's out there? Uh, it depends on what kind of evidence it is. Okay. Um, 
as far as like let's say the trash bags you took pictures of, um, how long those trash bags were there? You have no idea, right? No, sir, I do not. Um, if those trash bags were disturbed or moved, whether it's by animals or by human hands, you have no idea, right? Correct. Uh, and to be true for the same thing with, with the bones, right? Correct. Because of the, the scavenger. Am I saying that right? Yes, sir. Animals. We don't know if the animals, you know, moved those bones, right? Correct. Uh, we do know that a lot of bones are missing, right? I don't know. You, you, I don't know. Okay. Uh, but in that area that you took the pictures of, it's wet, muddy, it's open, right? Yes, sir. Open to all the weather conditions, correct? Yes, sir. And in fact, during that time period, do you remember us having a severe weather storm? Just if you remember. I know uh, two days before when they did find something, it was dry as could be. We had bad storm in between the two days when I went out. But do you remember the ice storm? No. I guess as far as um, whose blood was in that tub or sink or on that door, that's not your job. No, sir. That's somebody else's job. Yes, sir. See if they can determine it. Yes, sir. Okay, but you do know that there was no blood splatter? Spatter. spatter. <laughs> no blood spatter, right? Correct. And, and, and blood spatter is something that we consistent with, um, well, I mean, stabbing, right? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, gunshot wound too, right? You yes, sir. From the what y'all call it, like when you shoot somebody in the head and the the impact, yes sir, creates a the blowback. A blowback, yes sir. Okay, all right. Did you didn't see any of that either? Did you? No sir. Um, and uh, as far as like blood drippings in the hallway or uh, things of that nature, uh, would Blue Star typically pick that up? Yes sir. Okay. You didn't, you didn't see any of that, did you? Like I said, it was daylight, okay. and I couldn't get the house dark enough to, okay. to do and I It needs to be nighttime to work in the house, really. Yes, sir. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Detective. Anything further? No, Your Honor. May this witness be fined excused. No objection, Your Honor. No objection. All right. Thank you, Detective. Thank Before you, Detective. Please go about your business. Please watch your stuff. All right. Call well, your next witness. Scott, State calls Julia Whalen. Swear if you would please stop and raise your right hand. Excuse <clears throat> me. If you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You may be seated. Please watch your step. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, Ron. Uh, can you tell the uh, court uh, your name and spell your name for the court reporter, please? Julia Wayland. J U L I A W A Y L A N D. And can you uh, just briefly tell the members of the jury what it is you do for a living, what your duties are, and uh, the training that you've received to, to conduct that? I'm currently a crime scene analyst with the Dallas Police Department. I've been with the department for 11 and a half years. I started as a technician in property crimes and promoted up to an analyst after three years. And uh, what are some of the duties as a crime scene analyst? As a technician, we respond to property crimes. As an analyst, we respond to persons crimes. So we get requested out by either detectives or officers if they believe that we need to come and document a scene, process a scene, preserve evidence of a scene, and the condition of a scene. And were you called out on uh, December 23rd, 2020 to process the crime scene? Yes. And my understanding is you work nights, is that correct? Correct. And Detective Rosenberg, he works days? 
Correct. Um, do you recall about what time uh, you were called out to that scene? I responded about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. And this was in December, correct? Yes, ma'am. So it was getting dark early? Yes. And do you recall the location? It was in Mesquite, I believe. May I reference my notes? Yes. I responded to 3113 Kensington. And... Uh, is that a uh, location in Dallas County? I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but it was in Mesquite, Texas, correct? Correct. Now, who all was out there at that location? There were some SIU detectives and two officers from Mesquite. Okay. And SIU, that's different than youth crimes, is that correct? Correct. It's for special investigative unit. Um, Detective Dalby wasn't out there that time that you processed this house, correct? No. Okay. May I approach? You may. Uh, one of your duties is to um, photograph the home and the condition that it is when you get there. Is that correct? Correct. And I'm showing what's been marked states 209 through um, 276. You and I went through these uh, pictures actually today prior to your testimony. Is that correct? Yes. Can you flip through those real quickly and just make sure that we didn't, nothing is missing from there. Are those uh, all the photographs you took? Or not all the photographs, are those fair and accurate uh, representations of some of the photographs that you took? Yes, ma'am. And we pared these down from the, the uh, final set that you took, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Your Honor, State Honor stays 209 to 276 for all purposes. So there is victims to the shooting. They just didn't say how many. No objection, Your Honor. All right, State Exhibits 209 through 276 are admitted for all purposes. Okay, we are going to go through these very quickly. 
um, until we get to kind of some of the things that I really want to focus on. This is uh, just your placard. Um, space 210, the front of the home. You all took this picture just to, uh, in Space 212, just to show that the door had been fixed since the last processing, correct? I took it to show that there was no damage to the door. Okay. Were you aware that uh, they had processed this uh, home before? I knew that they had processed it, but it, other than they processed it during the day for Blue Star. Okay. And, and then it, Space 213, some of these we've already seen uh, pictures of, but in these pictures, uh, the home appears to be clean. Is that correct? Yes. All uh, items have been moved out, it appears? Yes. States 215, states 216, that's the entryway. States 217 appears to be a dining area going into the kitchen. 218 is that kitchen. 219, uh, different shot of the kitchen. 220 is leading into, I guess, this uh, garage area. That's to the laundry room? To the laundry room. Okay. And to 221 is 221. That's the laundry room. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, another photograph of the kitchen. Kitchen into kind of a common dining, maybe breakfast nook area. Uh, 224 is that a photograph leading out into the garage? Yes, ma'am. That's the garage area. Another photograph of the garage area. And then 227, that's the uh, garage door area. Does this appear to be like a two-car garage? Yes, ma'am. And 228, uh, it appears to be a little bit darker. Are you attempting to use uh, Blue Star at this time and try to get a, a picture of Blue Star? Probably. Probably. Do you see any in that particular photograph? Not in that one, no. Okay. 229, that's inside. Um, Kind of a common area? That's the living area with the dining area to the left and the front door and the kitchen to the right. Okay. And is that also kind of a living area? Yes, ma'am. Um, is this uh, the door leading out to the backyard? Yes. Backyard area? Yes. And we have a nice pool back there. And it states 233. States 234 is just going back into the home from the backyard? Correct. Uh, States 235, is that that living area? Yes, from standing kind of by the I presumed master bedroom and that uh, door to the backyard, looking okay. back towards the front. States 236, these are doors leading into? The presumed master bedroom. Okay. And States 237, is that uh, just another photograph of that area? To show the relationship of those doors, and I'm in the living room kind of leading back to the hallway to get to the bedrooms. Okay. Uh, stays 238, that's just the fireplace. Stays 239 is kind of leading, is this kind of the hallway leading back into the bedroom areas? Correct. Stays 240, another photograph of that, a little closer up. Yes, ma'am. States 241, is this one of the doors leading into the bedroom? Yes, that's to the south bedroom. The south bedroom, okay. And that's the one, uh, the south bedroom, is that the one with the two windows right there? That's States, one of them. Okay, states 242. States 243 is the closet of that room. States 244 appears to be that same bedroom. Did it appear this home had been cleaned pretty thoroughly? It appeared to be. Okay, states 245, uh, if it focuses, is that that same bedroom? Yes. States 246, is that kind of leading out from that bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And most of these photographs are just, uh, I'm just kind of going through quickly um, because it just is what it is. States 247, is this going into a different bedroom? That's to the southeast bedroom. South, southeast bedroom, mm -hmm. okay. Are, is there any painting or anything on the walls there? No. States 248, uh, southeast bedroom? Yes, ma'am. 
Stays 249, is that that same bedroom? Yes, ma'am. Stays 250, is that leading into one of the bedrooms? That's leading into the master bedroom. Okay, and then to the right, is that kind of the guest bathroom? Yes. Stays 251, I think that just appears to be the same photograph taken kind of from this door. Um, Stays 252, is that a hallway where you can kind of see the linen closet there? Yes, that's le that's looking back towards the south to show the south bedroom, the closet, and then the southeast bedroom from the entry to the master bedroom. Okay, that's from the entry to the master. Stays 253. I'm in the master bedroom looking back to that to show the little entryway of the door. Okay, stays 254. Is that the entry into the master bedroom? Yes. Say it's 255. Is this also the master bedroom? Yes. Or is this a different bedroom? Same bedroom. Okay. Say it's 256. It's the master bedroom. Say it's 257. Master bedroom. Do these doors lead out to the pool area? Those lead to that living room area right before the doors to the backyard. Okay. And you've opened that there, so that answered my question. States 258 is the master bedroom <coughs> leading out. States 259, that's the master bedroom. Yes, ma'am. States 260, also master bedroom? Yes. States 261, does that appear to be the master bedroom going into the master bath? Yes. States 260. Sorry. That's that other corner of the master bedroom between the entryway and the bathroom. Okay. Says 263. That's part of the master bathroom. Says 254. 264, I apologize. That's the lavatory in, in the master bathroom? Mm-hmm. Say it's 260. Yeah, you have to answer out, out loud yes or no. I'm sorry, yes. Okay. Says 265, is that also the master bathroom? Yes. Okay, and that's the uh, stays 266. Uh, that's the door leading into the master bedroom closet. Yes. Now, stays 267, we see a couple of cards there um, which appears to have something that reacted to Blue Star. Can you tell the jury what that is? That's my um, quality control test that I do before I actually start spraying the Blue Star onto items to show that it's working the way it's supposed to. Okay. And uh, states 268, is this a picture of the corner of the garage area? Yes, ma'am. And you put a number one placard there. Uh, what was the purpose of that? To show the area that I swab based okay. on the luminescence from Blue Star. Okay. And is this a photograph of that same kind of area that you... Um, <coughs> boy, that's bad. Mm -hmm. I'll show the, the jury here. Is this a photograph of that same area that you swabbed? Yes. Okay, and if you see right there, that little tiny spot, is that the spot that reacted to Blue Star? Yes. Now, That was the first uh, spot that you uh, swabbed and first area that reacted to Blue Star, is that correct? Correct. Uh, this is States uh, 271 and that's your second placard. Where is that uh, Blue Star area? That is in the master bedroom by the bathroom door. Okay. And did you take swabs in that area as well? No. Okay. And uh, why did you not take swabs in that area? Because I cut the carpet out. Oh, that makes sense. When you cut the carpet out, then what did you do with it? With all the collections I took, I collected them, I packaged them, and I left them on my evidence shelf, and then the detective that was involved collected it and took it over to Swift's. Okay. So you cut that carpet out. Um, this is States 272. There's a number three placard there, um, and I'll, since that's so hard to see, um, do you recall what bedroom that was in? That was also in the master bedroom, kind of in that entryway door going towards the hallway. It's on the, if you're looking at the doorway, it's on the right-hand side. Okay. 
and that uh, blue star shows that there may be a possibility of the presence of blood there. Correct. Did you cut that piece of carpet out or did you swap that? I cut it out. States 273, it's just a picture showing the areas that were cut out. Correct. States 274, is that in one of the secondary bedrooms? That's in the southeast bedroom. The southeast bedroom. And uh, does that show uh, the presence of presumably blood from the blue star? It shows a positive reaction. A positive reaction, okay. 275, um, that has a uh, number four placard. Is that the fourth area of carpet that you cut out based on the um, response to the blue star? Correct. Okay, and that's located under, kind of under that window area um, in that bedroom, correct? Yes, ma'am. Does that appear to be uh, quite a a bit of substance that is reacting or can you tell I can't tell I'm sorry okay and based on that you cut out that whole basically wall of carpet there um, in states 267 is that correct correct and you packaged all of that um, put it in the evidence room uh, for the detective to then determine what to do with that next, whether it's squiz tested or, or whatever. Correct. Um, based on the blue star, can you tell whose blood that is? No. Can you tell um, when it got there? Nope. Um, your job just is to go in and, and spray, uh, not to simplify it, but spray the various areas and see if there is this reaction to this chemical. Correct, to locate and preserve the evidence if I find any. And, and locate and preserve that. In, in, in this uh, situation, you didn't just cut out the carpet, you cut out the carpet pad 200. Correct. Your Honor, pass the witness. Um, is that the, I guess, 4 by 10 uh, piece of carpet you, you cut out? I'm not sure of the size of it. Okay. Um, as far as, um, I guess, even when you go back, what date did you go back for? I'm sorry? What date did you go and do your... Uh, I began on December 23rd. Okay. Um, you didn't uh, see any uh, blood splatter spatter on the wall, correct? No. Anything consistent with what you would think would blood splatter on the uh, on the floors? There was some discoloration on the carpet in the southeast bedroom. Well, someone could have. Uh, was cleaning, was, again, you don't know whether it's blood spot or not, is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Um, that's all I have to do. I need redirect. No, you're right. May this witness be finally excused. Uh, I wonder if they'll fit another. Thank you. Investigator uh, <clears throat> Worthen, you're free to leave and go about your business. Thank you. Please watch your step. Call your next witness. State calls uh, Amanda Webb. Amanda Webb. Stop and raise your right hand. 
Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, or nothing but the truth that will be found? I do. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, can you uh, state your name and spell your name for the court report, please? My name is Amanda Webb, A-M-A-N-D-A, -A -A, last name W-E-B-B. -B. And Ms. Webb, what is it that you do for a living? I am a forensic biologist, um, specifically a DNA analyst at the Southwestern Institute of Forensic Sciences, also known as SWIFTS or the Dallas County Crime Lab. Can you tell the jury uh, some about your education and training uh, that you had to complete before you can uh, have this position? I have a Bachelor of Science degree in Microbiology from Texas A&M University. I have a Master of Forensic Science degree in Forensic Molecular Biology from George Washington University. I worked for approximately a year and a half at the Armed Forces DNA Identification Lab in their mitochondrial research section. And I have been at SWIFTS in the biology unit since 2008. Um, upon being hired at SWIFTS, we go through a comprehensive training program there. And I'm qualified both in serology testing and in DNA testing. Um, in DNA testing, we are proficiency tested twice a year. And I am licensed by the Texas Forensic Science Commission to perform DNA analysis. Um, have you testified as an expert in this field before? Yes. Uh, how many times? Uh, many. Okay. And have you been considered an expert in the field of forensic biology? Yes. Now, kind of tell the jury how uh, how does Swiss work when it comes to DNA testing? Um, who all can submit evidence to be tested? We receive evidence from investigating agencies. Um, we can receive requests for testing from uh, attorney's offices or through a court order. And um, we are a fee-for-service laboratory, so we do charge all the agencies for any testing that we perform. Um, and evidence is submitted, and it can it comes along with a request for what type of biology testing they would like done. And you said attorney's offices, that includes defense attorney's offices. If they want to pay uh, SWIFTS to test or retest certain items, that's available as well, correct? Yes. And can you tell the jury a little bit about, uh, first of all, kind of what serology is and what that means? Serology is the testing for the presence of biological fluids, such as blood, for example. Um, when evidence comes into the lab and DNA is ultimately requested, um, that process begins in the serology unit. So serologists will test items for blood if requested, and they will collect samples from items that are then sent forward on for DNA testing. Was, were several items that were collected in this case from um, the 3113 Kensington address, were those submitted to the lab um, to be uh, analyzed by the serology department? Um, what, as far as the address goes, um, I'll have to refer to my notes to see okay. where we uh, did, did Detective Christine Ramirez uh, submit uh, several items to be tested to you um, under this case? Yes. Okay, and you don't know where those items came from, but um, it may have been from different locations. Yes. Okay. And the first uh, step of that is, uh, as you said, for some of those items to, to be tested uh, by serology. Yes. Um, and that's for the presence of blood, is that correct? That is one type of test that they perform. Okay. And then the uh, second type of test testing done on uh, these items was the DNA testing. Yes. Now, can you tell the jury, um, most people kind of know, but what is DNA? DNA is a substance in our cells. It's basically like our genetic blueprint. We get half of our DNA from our moms and half of our DNA from our dads. So 99.9% .9 of our DNA is all the same. That's why we all have two eyes, two ears, a nose, and a mouth. Um, but 0.1% of our DNA is different, and it's this percent of DNA that we look at in forensic testing. 
Um, this portion does not change over our lifetime. And it is unique to all individuals, with the exception of identical twins who would have the same DNA profile. And you mentioned before that several items were submitted to you uh, under this case uh, to be tested. And you actually completed several, several reports, is that correct? Yes. Um, when you are testing DNA, do you need to have, um, I guess, a sample swab from a, a known contributor um, before you are able to make comparisons uh, to the DNA that is possibly uh, taken from a swab, you know, a carpet or something of that nature. If we are asked to compare DNA profiles from evidence samples to known individuals, then yes, we will um, receive a either a buckle swab standard or a blood sample from that person. And from that sample, we develop a DNA profile for comparison. And... Your Honor, may I approach? You may. I mentioned before, uh, you completed several reports in this case, um, handing you what's been marked states uh, 277 to 283. Do you look at those reports and compare it to what you have? I guess today ended off kind of a little slow. I mean, it's cool to see all the pictures and stuff, but. DNA analyst. Oh, uh, that's a good question, Mr. J. Can DNA change if you have blood transfusion? I would think. It says no, receiving a donation does not alter the patient's DNA. Interestingly though, in most people it is possible to detect a very small amount of the donor's DNA in the recipient's blood for a few days after the transfusion. Ah. Wow. You know Jehovah's Witness didn't believe in blood transfusions. Yeah, what was she looking for? Or she has to look at everything or is she looking for specific things? Dointology. Doin. Technology. Yes, those are all copies of the DNA reports that I issued in this case. Okay, she's been thorough. Okay, okay. Uh, Your Honor, the state offer states 277 through 283 for all purposes. Really? Archangel Michael's Jesus. Mm -hmm. This thing? Trial where a gentleman died because Jehovah's Witness wife would not okay blood transfusion. Damn. I will not. No, you will die. 
All right, states exhibits 277 through 283 are admitted for all purposes. Um, before we start talking about the reports, can you just tell uh, the jury where various sources of DNA may come from? So DNA is found in the cells of our body, such as our skin cells. Um, it is found in saliva, sweat, blood, um, bodily secretions that we might have. And uh, how does, I guess, how uh, does time affect whether or not DNA may be present on a particular surface? And um, it really depends. Um, if DNA is deposited on a surface, and then that sample is kept in you know, temperature controlled environment, um, humidity controlled environment, and there is nothing there to you know, physically remove that DNA, um, then it can stay there indefinitely. Um, if factors such as you know, washing hands, you know, cleaning, those types of things can you know, remove DNA from an item as well. And how would, uh, I guess, that DNA uh, be affected by, say, being out in the elements? Um, out in the elements, it has the potential to degrade DNA um, if that's in extreme heat or extreme humidity, um, if there's a rain um, that can potentially wash anything away. All of those factors could um, you know, contribute to what happens to that DNA. Uh, you mentioned washing hands. How would uh, using maybe cleaning supplies and things of that nature affect um, the ability uh, to, I guess, recover DNA from certain services? Um, using cleaning supplies, um, that has the potential to um, uh, prevent us from getting a DNA profile. It will affect that DNA. All right, Ms. Webb, um, I want to start with uh, States 25. Uh, this was the initial DNA report uh, that you completed on this case, and it's uh, dated January 25th, 2021. Uh, do you recall com completing this uh, report and this analysis? Yes. And uh, you received this list of items from Dallas Police Department, a glove, a press-on nail, a piece of plastic, underwear, earrings, swabs, uh, the ledge of the floor, I'm sorry, the ledge of the bathtub, the floor of the bathtub, purse, face mask, deodorant, lighter, and hairbrush. Is that correct? Yes. Now. We're going to kind of move through this report um, fairly quickly. Um, at that time, you only had. Uh, hey, can I just take a screenshot of that real quick? Sorry. Okay. We're going to kind of move through this report. Um, yes, for for this report, um, we. We did not have a known standard that I discussed before, um, a buccal swab or a blood sample from an individual. And um, we were given some items from the investigating agency um, that we were um, that we were told were known to belong to uh, Maricela Botello Valdez. And we used a profile developed from one of those personal items, um, specifically a sample from a face mask to use to compare to all of the evidence profiles in this report. Okay, and if you recall, uh, can recall, was that like a cheetah print face mask, or do you know? I received a sample collected from that face mask. Um, I could refer to the serology notes to determine the type of face mask if you would like. Um, that's okay this time, we can we can get back to that. Ms. Pittman, I'm sorry, what number exhibit is that? This is States 277. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, the second report, um, and like you said, this was just uh, based on the only known comparison of Maricela Botello. And, and I'm sorry, I want to go back to that because we didn't even talk about results. At that time, um, we have results of excluded 77 and 100. Can you explain to the jury kind of what that uh, type of result means? Yes, yeah, so um, first let me explain real quick what we do when we do this comparison. Um, so when we receive um, our DNA profiles, um, we look at those DNA profiles to determine if that DNA profile is from a single person, if it's a single source, or if it is a mixture of DNA from two or more contributors. Um, if anybody is included, if any known standards that we're comparing to that sample is included, 
then we always give a statistic. And that statistic will um, tell you how rare it is that somebody might be included in that sample. Um, it will give weight to them being included in that evidence sample. Um, so somebody can be either included or we can exclude them from that DNA profile. So they could not have contributed that DNA. So in this case, um, when it says excluded, then that DNA profile um, is excluded from being a contributor, correct? Yes. Now this uh, 77 and 100, um, can you kind of help the jury understand what that result means? Yes. What that statistic is saying is that um, she is included as a possible contributor to that sample. Now, if, if you were to randomly select an unrelated individual and compare them to that DNA profile, you would expect 77 out of 100 people to be included as a possible contributor to that sample in the same way um, that individual is included as a possible contributor. So 77 and 100 means if you were to randomly select an individual, 77 out of 100 people would also be included in that same way. Okay. So as far as um, in, I guess, determining whether or not DNA or a DNA profile uh, matches uh, Maricel Vitello, that 77 and 100 uh, is, is not a very good statistic. Correct. Now, when we talk about female one over here, um, were you able to um, get a DNA profile from some of these swabs and samples that you got from, say, the glove, the nail, and things like that, uh, and develop a profile for a, a female? Yes, we developed a DNA profile from the sample from the underwear that was a DNA profile of a single source, a single contributor, and it was a female that did not match the DNA profile of Maricela Patello Valdez. And so for comparison purposes, we named that unknown DNA profile as female one. And without a comparison uh, swab or um, sample from a known individual, you, you just can't name this person? That is correct. Okay. Uh, let's move on to States 278, and that is a report um, dated January 29th, 2021. In this report, um, it is listing uh, newly analyzed uh -huh. evidence, and that is a, a 4.2.1, a piece of carpet, 4.3.1, a carpet pad piece, 4.4.1, a piece of carpet, uh, 5.1, a piece of carpet, and 5.2, a carpet pad piece. Um, did you receive a, a cutting of a um, piece of carpet, a carpet pad, uh, from the Dallas Police Department? Yes. And how do you determine uh, what part of that carpet uh, you... I guess, um, take a sample from in order to analyze for DNA? So that item would go to the serologist, and the serologist had a request to screen that item for the presence of blood. And once they screen that item and they receive their test results, then they will choose samples to take from that item <coughs> if they were positive for the presence of blood and send them on to DNA. Now, the process in serology for testing for blood, um, there's two tests that they can perform. Um, the first test is a presumptive test for blood. And what that means is that it will test positive in the presence of blood, but it is not specific to human blood, and it is not specific only to blood in general. There are other things that can potentially give you a positive result with that presumptive test. Um, if they get a positive result with that presumptive <coughs> test, and there is a large enough sample they will do a second test, which is called a confirmatory test for blood. And that test is um, confirmatory <coughs> for the presence of human blood. Okay. And was that done on uh, these uh, items that we just listed, the uh, serology? Those items were tested for blood in serology. Okay, and were they confirmed to have the presence <coughs> of human blood?
Thank you, BL. I got your message. I'm fixing it. Items 5.1 and 5.2, they had samples that tested positive with that confirmatory test for human blood. And samples collected from 4.2.1, 4.3.1, and 4.4.1. Um, they tested positive with that presumptive test for blood. For item 4.2.1, they, there was enough sample to move forward and perform that confirmatory test. However, that confirmatory test was a negative result for the presence of human blood. It was not detected. Um, the other two items, 4.3.1 and 4.4.1, there was not enough sample to move forward and perform that confirmatory test. So how much, what kind of, how much evidence do they got? DNA evidence. Now, once that testing was complete, it moved on to the DNA analysis. And again, you only had Maricela Botello as a contributor. Is that correct? That was the only known profile that we had for comparison at that time. Um, we had also compared to those samples that DNA profile of that unknown female, which we have named female one, that was compared to these samples as well. And you stated before that the 5.1 and 5.2 were both confirmed uh, to have the presence of human blood, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so if we look at the results here, um, when you uh, tested or analyzed the, the DNA from 5.1.1, and that's a stain from the piece of carpet, uh, we have T1 and T2, and uh, the stain from the carpet pad piece, T1 and T2, um, what were the uh, statistic, what is the stati statistic likelihood that uh, Maricela Vitello uh, would be a contributor to that um, DNA? For samples 5.1.1 and 5.2.1, um, the DNA profiles obtained from those two samples were from a single female that matched the DNA profile of Maricela Vitello Valdez. And that statistic is less than one in 10 trillion. And what this means is that if you were to randomly select an individual and compare them to this DNA profile, you would have to have more than 10 trillion people before you'd expect another person to match that DNA profile in the same way. Yeah. Um, to put that number into a little bit of perspective, um, we have about 8 billion people on the earth right now. So you would have to have more than a thousand of the Earth's populations before you would expect another person to match that DNA profile in the same way. Um, for sample 5.1.2, um, the DNA profile obtained from that sample was a mixture of two contributors. Um, we were able to separate out that mixture into a major contributor, so a DNA profile that contributed more DNA and a minor contributor that contributed less DNA to that sample. And that DNA profile of the major contributor matched the DNA profile of Maricelo Vitello Valdez with that same statistic that I just discussed, that less than one in 10 trillion. When you talk about major and minor contributors, um, are you able to determine if the minor contributor, if that DNA source is from, say, human blood or touch DNA or some other bodily fluid um, in your analysis? Um, we are not able to determine by the DNA profiles what type of um, cells that came from. Um, we are only able to perform that test on that stain itself. Um, and then once we obtain the DNA profiles, um, we are not able to tell what if that DNA profile came from. Blood, skin cells, a different bodily fluid, for example. Okay. Now, I want to move on to the next report. And this is kind of uh, the report where you finally have some other uh, DNA uh, known DNA comparisons uh, or samples so that you can make comparisons to uh, other individuals to determine if they may be a contributing source. Is that correct? Yes. In this report, we have three additional known standards for comparison. Okay. And
<clears throat> On states 279, uh, this, this report was dated June 8, 221. Um, who were the other known comparisons or standards, known standards uh, with which you were able to compare um, the DNA that you had from these other swaps? We were given a buckle swab standard from Lisa Dykes, um, AKA Lisa Beltran and our documentation. Um, a buckle swab standard from Charles Beltran and a buckle swab standard from uh, Nina Murano, um, AKA Nina Beltran. Okay, say AKA Nina Beltran and you said from your documentation, um, where did you receive that documentation as far as their, their last name Beltran? A Dallas Police Department submittal information to us. Uh, looking on the, the first page, um, we have several items um, of newly analyzed evidence. And we have a, a towel, a gray towel, a white towel, a blue towel. You mentioned the buckle swab standard from Lisa Dykes, AKA Lisa Beltran. Uh, glove number three, glove number four, glove number five, duct tape. Number six, duct tape number eight, duct tape number nine, duct tape number ten. You have a buckle swab standard from Charles Beltran, a pistol, a necklace, a buckle swab standard from uh, Nina Morano, aka Nina Beltran, a fingernail, piece of duct tape, pieces of duct tape, plastic wrap with duct tape, plastic bag with duct tape, plastic bag with duct, duct tape, and a garbage bag on that page. <clears throat> and then, did you also compare um, the new known standards of Lisa Dykes, um, Charles Beltran, and Nina Morano to these previously analyzed pieces of evidence? Yes, we did. Okay. Now, <coughs> were you aware of where all these items that were tested, where they came from? Um, there's information in the submittals um, that discuss the location of these items. Um, what's listed on the report in parentheses, um, those are things that were written on the packaging of the items that we received. And that would be the AKA Lisa Beltran, Nina Beltran. You said in parentheses, I'm not sure. Oh, I apologize. Um, thank you for correcting me um, in the quotation marks. Okay. So like in, in this uh, instance, the swabs, it says ledger bathtub, floor bathtub. Um, glove has quotation marks number one, and if there was uh, a photograph that had like a number one evidence plaque, that that'd be where that came from. Is that fair to say? It's those numbers are um, were written by the police department to relate to their numbers. Okay. Now, some of the things that I'm flipping through, these are just, um, Kind of information, and we talked about just a, a minute ago. You talked about a single source, a simple mixture, major minor mixture, and a mixture subtraction. Uh, can you tell the jury kind of what a single source uh, profile is? Yeah, so a single source DNA profile is a DNA profile that is from a single person. Um, DNA profiles that we observe can be from one person or we can observe the presence of two or more, two, three, four contributors in a sample. Um, if it is a mixed DNA profile so from two or more people, there are different ways that that mixture can be interpreted that are listed here. So if it is a simple mixture, then we are not able to separate that sample out into major or minor and we are just looking at a mixed DNA profile and that is how we are interpreting that DNA profile. Um, in some instances we are able to determine that one person contributed more DNA than another person in that sample and in that case we will interpret that as a major and a minor which is listed there as well. Um, that last one, mix mixture subtraction, that type of 
sample is if you have a DNA profile from, for example, a person's body. We consider that an intimate DNA sample to where you would expect their DNA profile to be on a sample collected from their own body, for example. And so we will take that DNA profile of a known person and subtract it out Everyone and then listen. have a DNA profile of a second contributor that can be used for comparison. So all of those are different ways that we are able to look at these DNA profiles. Let's move on to uh, basically the results of your DNA comparison. And you had already mentioned before uh, the results from the carpet pad and a piece of carpet for Maricela Vitello uh, down here. In the carpet. Um, but let's just kind of start at the top. Um, with the stain from the glove, there doesn't seem to be any uh, statistics that are very strong in that case matching the um, DNA to any of the known samples. If that DNA profile was a mixture of two people that we were not able to separate out into a major and a minor. Um, the only person included in that sample was Lisa, Lisa Dykes. Um, but that sample statistic is 1 in 39. So if you were to randomly select an individual and compare them to that mixture, one out of every 39 people um, would be included as a possible contributor in that same way. Um, and everybody else is excluded. And the stained swabs from the ledge of the bathtub and the floor of the bathtub, um, and let's just start with the stained swabs at the ledge of the bathtub, uh, each of these individuals is excluded, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and the stained swabs for the floor of the bathtub, we have uh, just three individuals included, and that is Maricela Vitello with the statistic of one and two, female one, and Charles Beltran is a one and two. That's correct. Okay. Um, I kind of skipped over this, a sample from piece of plastic number two, and again, you don't know where, what exactly or where that piece of plastic came from, but the only contributor there is, is Charles Beltran with that uh, one in 10 trillion number, is that correct? Yes, the DNA profile obtained from that sample was a mixture of two contributors that we were able to separate out into a major and a minor contributor. Um, the DNA profile of the major contributor uh, matched the DNA profile of Charles Beltran. Um, that statistic is the less than one in 10 trillion st statistic that I explained earlier. And everyone else compared here is excluded as being a possible contributor to that sample. Uh, going back down here to the stain 4.3.12, the stain from the carpet pad piece, um, the only included person is, is Lisa Dykes, and that's in a, a one in five um, statistic. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and then the stain from the piece of carpet, T1 and T2, Maricela is the only contributor with that, that 1 in 10 trillion statistic, and everyone else is excluded. Yes, she is the only one included in the samples. Um, the same applies for 5.2.1. Um, Maricela is the only person that is included in the 1 in 10 trillion number, and everyone else um, is excluded, is that correct? Yes. Now there was a uh, pistol that was uh, submitted to you uh, that Mr. Beltran is the uh, one in 10 million, I'm sorry, 10 trillion uh, statistic as being a possible contributor to that DNA. Is that correct? Oh, it's pretty nasty. Can and a chicken? Um, yes, Watch referring to sample 10.1.3. Um, that DNA profile is a mixture of three contributors, and we were able to separate out a major contributor to that sample. And the DNA profile of Charles Beltran matched the DNA profile of that major contributor with that less than one in 10 trillion statistic. Um, the female one profile was included as a possible contributor to that minor contribution, and that statistic one in two and then everybody else is excluded. 14.1.1.1, uh, the sample fingernail. Maricela is included as a one in 90 um, as a possible contributor, and then everyone else is excluded. Yes. Okay. And as far as uh, 
The other items uh, listed here, uh, the duct tape, um, plastic bag with duct tape, garbage bag, things of that nature. Were you able to obtain any um, usable DNA profile for which to compare to your known uh, standards? From all of the samples that were collected from the duct tape, um, the there were only two samples that we were able to obtain a DNA profile from to use for comparison. And from all the other samples, we were not able to obtain a DNA profile. And were you able on any of the duct tape uh, samples? And, and I skipped over 14.3.12 and 14.5.15. Were there any statistics that were, um, I guess, uh, useful for law enforcement purposes uh, to determine who may have been a contributor to that? The only um, only samples that we included somebody, we had a statistic of one in two and 53 in 100. So one out of every two people and 53 out of 100. Okay. That was states 279. Um, states 280, you received some uh, hair samples and a cigarette butt. Um, and this is uh, dated October 5th, 2022. Um, question. Were you able to determine, I guess, where these uh, items came from based on your Almost there. information that you have? Something went there. It's a peaceful religion of love that all criminals worship. Criminals and murderers. For good luck not to get caught. Mostly peaceful religion. And um, the the hair samples were listed as being collected from a vehicle, um, from the trunk the interior occupant compartment and from a trunk area. Okay, does it uh, state what vehicle those were collected from? Audi. 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 Hello. And um, that is listed from the agency as an Audi A6. Okay. And in looking at that, uh, it appears on page four or five of that report, you were able to uh, get a DNA sample from a hair root in 6.4.1.121. Um, two individuals, Charles Beltran and Nina Morano were excluded and then three individuals have this number of 79 and 100. That's correct. Okay. And then uh, as far as the cigarette butt is concerned, uh, Charles Beltran, uh, his DNA, uh, when compared, uh, analyzed was the statistic of one in 10 trillion. Yes, the DNA profile obtained from that sample was a mixture of two contributors that we separated out into a major and a minor contributor. And the DNA profile of Charles Beltran matched that DNA profile of the major contributor with that less than one in 10 trillion statistic. Moving on to states uh, 281, and we'll look at 281 and 283 um, kind of together. This was April 14th in 2023. And State 281 is an identical report to State 283 with the addition in 283 of uh, the discussion of um, the previously analyzed evidence of the face mask what, uh, by which you were able to t obtain Maricela Vitello's uh, DNA. Is that correct? That's correct. Was my ass showing? Okay. And in this oh, my butt's too, was too high? Um, State 283. <laughs> You received a bone uh, sometime Maybe it was too high. You're in probably right. 2023, 
Um, and were requested to. Oh yeah, it was high. <coughs> I had to straighten it up. To uh, a known sample to determine whether or not that was Miss Patello's. Uh, I'll try again tomorrow. I'll do that yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> and in that sixteen point one. But down head up. Sample from the bone. Uh, the statistic is All right, one tomorrow we'll try again. point two million. Um, that possibility of. Yeah, I rewatched myself. Contributor, right. contributor to that DNA. Is that correct? Yes, that statistic yeah. is um, the same as we discussed before. I'm comparing the sample from the bone to the sample that we received from a tooth um, of Maricelo Vitello Valdez. So the DNA profile we obtained from the sample from that bone uh, matched the <laughs> DNA profile obtained from the tooth with that statistic of 1 in 11.2 million. So if you were to randomly select an unrelated individual, compare them to that sample. Um, one out of every 11.2 million people would match that profile in the same way. Okay. And the uh, tooth, uh, the sample from the tooth and the sample from the initial face mask, you compared those two items as well and it, it appeared to be from the same source, is that correct? The DNA profile obtained from that face mask that we previously used for comparison as her DNA profile matched the DNA profile obtained from the tooth of her. And then the last report that uh, we're going to talk to is state uh, talk about is states 282, um, and this report was on June 13th, 2013. Is that correct? Uh, June 13th, 2023. Yes. I'm sorry, 2023. Uh, it's getting late today. Um, you received uh, three pieces of uh, evidence. Um, and those are the three pieces of newly analyzed evidence. Uh, do you recall where those pieces of evidence came from? Um, those items were packaged in a outer packaging, um, the same outer packaging as that bone that we tested in that previous report, item 16. And you did not receive those items until um, sometime in 2023, after February, is that correct? Those items were received into the laboratory on February 16th of 2023. And you don't have any idea if those items were collected after uh, the initial collection of <laughs> items that you tested previously? Um, I don't know when they were originally collected. The results um, of those items the sample from underwear T1 and T2, uh, the four known samples that you have were all excluded, is that correct? Yes. And then female one was excluded. Yes. Um, what does this male one mean? The DNA profile we obtained from one of those samples was a single source DNA profile from a single male. And that DNA profile did not match any of the known standards that we had. And so we gave that DNA profile the name of male one for comparison purposes. Okay. And um, we can see, see the statistics here on the sample of underwear T1 and T2 and the sample uh, from the bra T1 and T2. Uh, we have the one in 10 trillion statistic uh, for T1. Um, the sample from underwear T2 is one in 22.2 million. And then the sample from bra T1 is one in 10 trillion. And then the last statistic is the second sample from T2 is one in 14. Yes. That's correct. Uh, do you have any way of, of identifying who, uh, at this time, who this male person is? No. And again, you're, you're not sure, you don't know, you don't have the factual knowledge of when the underwear bra and twist ties, uh, twist tie was collected or where it was collected from. No. So at this point, that's kind of an unknown. Um, yes, that would be in the agency's um, documentation. All right, pass the witness. There's no time. I don't have time. Are oh, they gonna do it? Just a knock out for the day? You have a pull-up bar 
Oh, you know what? I need that. But I'm afraid of like if I don't set it up right and it breaks or something. I'm s i am I suck at pull ups. I'm horrible at pull ups. I can do like three. <laughs> Maybe three. But I know if I practice it every day, I'd probably be able to build it up. I have a bench press in the house. Um, yeah, right. we'll, we'll, we'll pass her at this time. All right, you know her subject to recall. Yes, ma'am. All right, Miss. Yeah, leave for Go tomorrow. This is not. The defense is going to reserve the right to cross examine you, so we need you on call to be available. Uh, <laughs> the Folks, I honestly barely did not listen to anything when she was talking. It's just a little confusing or just kind of, I don't know, you're hearing the DNA stuff. I just need to hear concrete. It doesn't match or not. Like, but I know they got to talk about like, well, one out of 10, one out of 100, one out of a trillion. Uh, it's not at this time, Your Honor. They're all uh, just got from Florida. All right. I feel really good after those push ups. I don't know what it is. I feel great now. Even though I did it wrong. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please remember your instructions. Uh, regarding um, not watching the news or reading the newspaper uh, or doing any independent research at all. Uh, in addition, I'm going to ask that you be back in the jury room at 9.15 tomorrow morning. Maybe we can get a little bit of an earlier start. So you are ordered to be here no later than 9.15 tomorrow morning. Thank you so much. All right. All right. So I can my channel doesn't show up when I look up Marcella Botella. <laughs> the hell? Am I censored like that? <laughs> Marcella Botella. My channel doesn't even pop up. What is YouTube doing to me? Maybe I won't show up on my own thing. I should show up, right? Let me go in cocktail. All right, so y'all could be here about 9.05. 9.05? Oh, I show up on my incognito. Yeah, it's you guys like the new thumbnail? And I hear nothing. Close up with Lisa. Oh, I should take a screenshot. Let's get her smiling. Hold on. There you go, a little grin. Close up with Lisa. Uh, get her looking at the camera. Did she look back? I don't know if I'll be here about 9.05. I don't know if I'll be here Ian. Got a close up of her. Oh, this whole time I was in 360? Oh, hell nah. <laughs> wow. Eight hours later? Yeah, bro. I, I don't know what's going on. The channel? Well, there's certain things going on. I, I mean, I'm covering a topic that's not popular, right? There's only. Brandy's covering it, and then there's another, uh... One out of every two people. Brand oh, my God, I can't believe this entire time. Was I doing low quality the whole time? I mean, you can't, almost can't even tell the difference, but... What time did it say tomorrow? 9.05? Or it's 10.30? No, I, I don't know what they're talking about. Or it's about 9.05 p.m., but... You can see me when you search? I think it'll, you can see me because you're subscribed to me. But I typed it in incognito and it popped up. No, I, I had that video that we're watching apparently in 360, I think. I don't know. I think it was 360. Yeah, true. 
purple coconut. Coconut. Passion. What did you want to say? Passion coconut? Purple passion? That sounds like purple passion. She's eating something. Let's see. Some shot too. Can't get a front shot, but Oh, there we go. She looked back. I mean, that might make a good thumbnail at some point. Well, so far the what's 360? The it's the quality of the video. So there's 360, 7, oh, 144, 240, 360, 480, 720, 1080, and then 2K, 4K, I think, and then 8K. Sure, I'm done for the day. That push-up shit. <laughs> Uh, I think I did a few this morning, but. Well, I appreciate you guys joining me um, today. I'm assuming tomorrow they're coming like at. I'm going to set it for 1030, but uh, if they come earlier, I'll jump on earlier. Um, tonight at 8 p.m., I have this video dropping, okay? If you were here during the lunchtime, then you saw it. If you still want to come and just hang out and listen, that, that's great. If not, I understand because you already heard it. But I feel like for the people that are watching or interested in this trial, this is a really good watch. I put in a lot of work on this case back in the day. Where's the video at? Don't I have a schedule? Disappeared. Premiere, 8 o'clock, December 6th. Oh, that's so weird. It show there. Oh, it's in the video area. Okay. Like YouTube's only gotten more confusing for people to find things. So anyway, eight o'clock, I'll transfer people over here. We're going to do this. This is a video from, I don't remember. I think last year or the year, probably the year before, I think 2021. This is where I spoke with Lisa, one of Lisa's best friends, ex-best friend now. It's about an hour conversation. She called in. She agreed to come on. And she gives a lot of the information about Lisa. And it's crazy. It's crazy. She references multiple times the black magic, Santa Muerte, which, so let's, let me tell you, the whole Santa Muerte thing, it wasn't just from one person, okay? It wasn't just from all these witnesses you saw today. Like I said, there was a real estate person, a realtor that went into Nina's house. And it's actually, I, I, I couldn't, I have the picture somewhere. I just, it's somewhere archived. But then she also told me she saw a shrine in, 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 in Nina's place. Now, Lisa, there's some claims that they had something there. I got to hit up uh, Charles's friend because I thought Charles's friend said they had a, a shrine too. I got to ask him. I don't know if he did it. I, I don't remember what he said. So that's going to drop tonight, 8 p.m. It's about an hour long. Then what I'm going to do, okay, then what I'm going to do is tonight, my goal is to work on a cease and desist, which shouldn't take long. It's like three pages long. I want to work on a cease and desist tonight that I received from these alleged killers. <laughs> uh, they, 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 said a, they sent me a letter saying it was their attorney, an attorney that's actually in the trial right now. But I really believe it wasn't the attorney. I believe it was these two ladies that sent it to me because they're one's a lawyer, one's a paralegal. And I think they wanted to scare me. And they got really upset because of the deep dives that I was doing, like the Bill, Nina's ex-husband deep dive. They really didn't like that. Uh, I don't think they saw this because this was after the fact. But this will give you a lot of insight and information with regards to Lisa. Now, the Nina thing... I already have a deep dive when the trial actually starts. Maybe I'll just promote the link. I don't, I don't know if I need to delete and repost it. Maybe I'll just promote the link. I put a lot of work into that editing that video and talking to multiple people it was a freaking mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. Because if you haven't watched the, um, Nina story, Nina was with bill. Nina didn't have nothing. Bill brought her out and got her all this stuff. And uh, while they were married, B 
Bill's son gets approached by Nina multiple times and they hook up. Kind of. He sent me the email exchanges and I was very reluctant. I was like, nah, bro, nah, I don't believe it. Nah, I don't believe it. He's like, you don't believe it? Nah, I don't believe it. He sent me a naked picture of Nina. I'm like, bro, no, why you sent me that? Oh. Don't send me that. So that's, that's in the, uh, the Bill video. You changed over to something yesterday and I could never find it. So give us a link. What, uh, are you talking about the timeline video? Everything's in the playlist. If you go to the description of this video or my front page of YouTube, there is, I feel really good after those push-ups. I don't know what the hell happened. Did I, did I work up some endorphins or something? If you go to the description, there's something called recap video. Everything you need to know, you can click that link or you can click the playlist link. It's under the description on my front page. And you know, menstrual blood, there was another case that I covered. The witch doctor, Shannon Ryan, where I got his ex to come on from Holland. And she was telling me that she came down here to Florida to meet this guy. They were hanging out at a hotel, or whatever. And he's a witch doctor. And so he, he had said that like he, he had to drink her period blood. To do some sort of like binding ritual. I was like, hell nah, bruh. But and and I was like, so what did you do? Like, what did you have to do? She she didn't want to tell me what she had to do, the binding ritual. So I, I could only imagine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right man so again thank you guys so much for coming through i appreciate it had a good day tomorrow's friday oh no wait it's tomorrow friday tomorrow's thursday oh shit tomorrow's thursday got a bit to go well, it's Thursday, so uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm dropping this video tonight. Make sure you subscribe to the second channel. All right, subscribe to the second channel for chases, standoffs, all kinds of crazy ish. All right, it could mail CC. Type in it could mail CC in the Google search. Maybe it'll pop up if you're lucky. It should. All right, and we'll be back later tonight. Love you. Adios. Vayas con Dios. Adiós. Chachos. Bloop, 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 bloop. Gotta go shave. My hair, I just got a haircut the other day. It's already. <laughs> Lord almighty. <laughs>